Why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck fucking oh! oh! Welcome to the Pat McAfee Show, Monday, May 15th. I am AJ Hawk, continuing to sit in here for Pat as he takes care of his beautiful baby girl back home with Sam. Sports! We're happening all weekend, right, boys? There oh, really yeah. were a lot of sports. I know Jason Day, boom, he pops off and wins the, uh, the Byron, Byron Nelson wow. yesterday. His first time, his first win in five years. So congrats to, to uh, Jason Day. And I believe the first tournament he ever won, 2010 Byron Nelson. How about it? Is yeah. that right? Full circle. Maybe. Full circle. Sure. He beat Vertigo. Full circle. That's Tone Diggs right here. Diggs, I appreciate you, buddy. I Toxic did. Table right here. Obviously, Ty Schmidt, Boston Connor. Everyone behind the glass. Zito, Evie. I, I sh- every time I talk about naming everybody, and I forget a few of you, but I see you back there, Nick, Dirty. Bruce. What? Who'd I miss? Tom? Bill. Bill. Bill back in Mitt, the coding Mitt. cave. Mitt. Mitt taking care of some business outside, I think. Mm-hmm. Right? He, he, yeah, sure. he just did. I think he's back in here. But Mitt's the enforcer around here, guys. Mitt takes care he of whatever uh, whatever needs taken care of. What about you guys? How was your uh, your Mother's Day uh, weekend? What did you guys do? Oh, it was wonderful. I did absolutely nothing. Uh, it's like every mother's dream is to do absolutely nothing yeah, on Mother's Day. Yeah, exactly. And uh, obviously the Celtics, 3.30, middle of the day. Uh-huh. Had Jason to watch Tatum, it. Tatum, huh? Jason How Tatum. about it? What? Who? What? Did, uh, was it Marcus Smart who said it was like a movie watching him play? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, Fifty-one I mean, points, most ever in a game seven, which yes. was just set, you know, three weeks ago. Right. Steph Curry against the Kings. He he went for fifty. Tatum went for fifty-one. I saw some Celtics fans like, "Hey, there's three minutes left. We're up by thirty points. Why the hell is this guy still in the game?" <laughs> but actually, he he was specifically going for it because he uh, knew as soon as he hit his last three. Held up the 50 number. But, no, it was just an unbelievable performance. We get to bury Philadelphia once again. We own them. And now we have, you know, the final four teams. It really starts to heat up. I'm pretty jacked up. I'll be honest. Well, you should be. I mean, I guess we have four four teams left here when you look at the NBA situation going on. But what is the what is, ESPN ABC carries every game, right? Yeah. So. What, what matchup do you think they're looking for in the finals? What do you think? Oh, yeah. what do you, I'm just wondering what the general public would want to I see. Mean, Joker's Denver. two-time MVP. People uh-huh. love seeing him. Obviously, the Heat. Jimmy Butler's an awesome story. What Absolutely. they've been able to do. It's always They want Lakers-Celtics every year. So bad. Yeah. Battle for 18. Both have 17 championships. So if you know they're playing each other, it would be for the solo lead of most championships LeBron. of any team. LeBron well, just any time you get LeBron and Austin Reeves. Killing yeah, it still. of course. The young killing pups it. in Boston. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the new guards, pups. some people are saying, because mm-hmm. Tatum, you know, he hasn't taken that final step because they went to the finals last year. His first ever appearance, they lose six or four two in six games, and now they're hoping you know Tatum, maybe them versus LeBron. Maybe it goes seven games, and now they're starting the games a little earlier. Pretty nice. A little earlier? What do you mean? There's that's like a new thing. Eight thirty. Yeah, they're instead doing of what nine oh five or something. Nine yeah, nine thirty. Ten. Yeah. So that's now, smart, man. Yeah. Now the finals. Well, it sucks for. You know, Lakers fans or people who are staying up a little later, but uh, yeah. everyone, you know, in L.A. when they're playing, uh, it's 5.30 there. So I do wonder. Tough to get there, I guess. Yeah, probably. But, hey, they're fine. You're in the finals. You can figure it out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's like the Heat game. Don't, the Heat has like, look like there's 4,000 people in the stands until Second 10 minutes court. in, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do wonder if, like, Jack, if, like, the Lakers make it, if Jack will be able to call off of work and get there on time. You think he, him and uh, Kiefer Sutherland's dad, didn't he sit by him? Donald. Donald. Don. Yeah. Those guys are two legends. Yeah. yeah, they are. But let's not put Jack and Donald Sutherland. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not knocking right. Donald Sutherland at all. But uh, you are. Why, no, I mean, no, you're no. knocking. I'm saying. Jack I'm not knocking yeah. Jack. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I bet. Bit. I bet a lot of the younger generation doesn't know Jack Nicholson is. Well, they probably should. not. They know him. They know probably. Oh, that's the face of that guy they show the Lakers game sometimes, mm-hmm. right? They've, they yeah. hear They've seen Jack. Departed. Oh yes, Departed. What's the last movie Jack Nicholson's been in though? I Departed. Think, uh, the I'm bucket list. Sure he like. A, yeah, could have been Excuse the bucket me? list. Yeah. I think he. Oh, yeah, was like 99. Tired. I think he's officially done. He needs to come make some cameos in some certain certain shows. Like what? I don't know. If there was a documentary, or if there was a like docu- 911 series, Lone Star, no, yeah, that'd be cool. Maybe that, but who would play Dan Snyder? I think Jack Nicholson Ooh. would play Dan Snyder in a docu series. What do you think? Be sweet, actually. Dan Snyder, obviously, on the tip oh. of my brain because they have the the sale of their team is it's not completed, right? But they have agreed to terms or agreed to something 
with Josh Harris's ownership group, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's basically a done deal now, and I can't believe that we're actually at the day where the cockroach who is Dan Snyder is out of the NFL because there was a while where I thought there's no way they're getting he, rid of this guy, and he's getting out and selling for reportedly over six billion dollars. Gonna say it's unbelievable how like uh, the guy can be just like reviled and hated by everyone, oh, so and this is like a punishment. It's like, <laughs> hey, you're losing. Your NFL team, but we will give you six billion dollars so that you can kind of just go away forever. Does he get to keep the varsity uh, commander's jacket? I mean, I oh, would yeah. imagine he, he probably have to turn that. He in? probably borrowed it from the pro shop and he probably gave it back because he's like, "Hey, this is still good. You can sell it. It's all good. Don't worry about it. Like you don't even have to wash it." That probably would make a lot of sense. I do believe they made the players buy them, so they didn't even get them for free. So I it's actually funny you say that. The commanders actually sent Pat one. Did it was, they? It was one oh, yeah. out of 500. One of those boxes. Oh, Remember sweet. Those cool yeah, because this, this is what Carson Wentz was wearing in this yeah. promo shot when yep. he signed with the team. Remember, I think you loved that picture. Oh, yeah. Well, Carson Wentz, actually, he did have one of those on. He also had that uh, orange and mustard, mustard suit. yellow suit, Good if you it. recall. The Hall yeah. of Fame jacket, I believe he was wearing. It might have been. Basically. Oh, exactly yeah, it was. The Hall of Fame jacket. Where does Dan Snyder go from here? This So Josh Harris comes in, which... Awesome. This is long overdue for Washington, sure. for this franchise to sell. It seemed like we talk about all the poop pipes, pipes bursting. Of course. You talk to guys that have played there over the years, just issue after issue mm -hmm. from the top down. Now they seem to be going in the right direction. But where does Dan Snyder go? You think he just rides off into the sunset? Yes. Island. Is he going to try to go like buy another professional team somewhere? I don't Ooh. know. Not in the NFL. You know, we know he's not getting into the NFL. Like but, A.B.'s league? I don't know. Maybe something. maybe a soccer team. Yeah. A B's league. Maybe a, I'm sure he probably has a couple pickleball teams. Everyone owns one of those. But don't now. like whatever league you if it's a serious league, whatever league you go into, the owners have to vote you in Proof, or allow yeah. you approve. A B got into his league, so I'd imagine Dan Snyder could get into that one. Okay, that's what I said. A serious a serious league. I don't know if any serious leagues Soccer gonna... you don't think soccer would let him in? I think the Premier League would. They I mean Ryan those... Gosling's in there. Okay. No, Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds. Reynolds, yeah. Uh, and he's not what, in the Premier not League the Premier just League. yet. But he will be, right? But they're on their way. Absolutely. I think they're two leagues below it. But well, Ryan Reynolds is, a, is, for all we know, a good guy. Has some good, uh, like, mana. equity with people, yeah. with, with the community. Yeah, good mana. Yeah, he's he will. Good yeah. mana. And you saying Dan Snyder has no good mana? I don't think Dan Snyder has much good mana. If you're asking where he's going, I assume he's going to check out that stuff that's going on in San Francisco. If, if I had any guess What's whatsoever. That? Uh, you know, there's just things going on over there. But also, you know, who knows? He, he's He'll disappear. Maybe he comes back in a year or two and he says, you know what? I want an NBA team now. But I do think he needs to, you know, step aside, let someone else fuck up, and let someone else kind of be the villain in the sports owning world. And then, all right, Dan, we'll welcome you I back. You can have the, you know, Arizona or Phoenix Suns. or oh, I mean, not he's not, not selling yeah. it. But in, in an example, yes. you, you can have the Washington Wizards. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. What are you saying, Diggs? I just don't see him ever owning a team again. I don't either. I think if he wanted to buy a soccer team like tomorrow, they'd, they'd oh, be okay. Oh, no with it. question. He could get a soccer team. What does an MLS soccer team do? I'm not for? talking MLS. No. I mean, even like oh, Premier yeah. League. So I, I just I looked up Real Madrid's $5.1 billion oh. and Barcelona's $5 billion. Barcelona. Oh, could you imagine Dan They actually have trouble. They, they had some money issues, actually. Uh, Barcelona? In La Liga, yeah. yeah. Because well, of the, what was that? Because of COVID. Uh, I forgot. And so they may actually, you know, if he really wanted to. And if we know anything about Dan Snyder or what they've said is true, he'll love the nude beaches down there. <laughs> yeah. He'll you love it. Usually those, uh, Allegedly. Like, from what I hear, these nude beaches are usually not populated with the type of people you no. think that would populate them. What do you mean? I, I Like, I just feel like some people that feel very comfortable being super naked on a beach. Aren't good looking. Maybe not have, like, sometimes they don't have great hygiene oh. or might, like, just, you know. Saying a lot may, of, may not take care of themselves as well as you may think. They okay. do. A lot of grub worms and big bushes walking around <laughs> on these beaches. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Just be a, be alert if you if you find yourself in one of those places. What do you think Dan's gonna do? I don't know what Dan's gonna do, but I, it made me think. Who's the who is the next? We on, he was the most like the biggest villain when it comes to sports ownership, right? Yeah, one yeah. of. I mean, there's been some, one of who yeah. at, now that Dan Snyder's getting out of the game. Who is next in line? Not yeah. like a villain, but like maybe that. People don't have as a positive outlook. So from you're asking who, who, which of the NFL owners owners are upset that Dan's gone because yeah. he had such a bright light on him. Now it's going to be they're going to be looking yep. for the next one. Just the NFL or all? Oh, all, I think all sports. sports. I would sports. take football, basketball, baseball. Uh, baseball is a little tougher. It'd be, well, the A's maybe. I guess you could oh, argue their yep. ownership group is just like the cheapest. Scumbag. So they wanted to. Time. Did they? Did they? Were they saboteurs to their own team just to get to Vegas? Yeah, I think this has been a long con for like several years now. Like where they just refuse to spend money. They get good guys in like or good young prospects in trades 
always get rid of them before. This is major league. They're, it's yes. the, the it, part it of is, major league. It right? is literally major league. Like their payroll, I can't I can't remember what it is, but it is like so low it's laughable. And then you see the like there are there are more people going to like double A baseball games than there are going to Definitely A's the bananas, no. right? What are the what's Savannah this? bananas? Savannah yeah. bananas. I got a question about them. Their clips pop up all the time to me. Yeah. So that's minor league. What is it? Single A, double A? I don't think it, they're is associated anything? with like no. minor league. You know, but they're playing. It's all real. It's yeah, real it's games a, against real opponents. Yeah, college, it's like a, college summer ball. Is it? Yeah, it's like gimmick baseball. I think but it's like a globe drive. Yeah, but is the whole ball. league in on it? Uh, they're the always playing they play, that one. They team. always participate with the, the other team, at Party Boys or something. Mm-hmm. Is that the uh, pink and black team that wears cutoffs? Yeah, I think so. Yes. But they're all, they have these whole. What does the whole game look like? Because I see a clip of a Good dude. Question. He all of a sudden he's throwing a he. He has choreographed dance with everybody in the infield and outfield. Oh, yeah. and he, the guy's on 15 foot stilts and he fires a strike. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, then is that a real strike? Do get Does the game keep going? He takes the stilts off next huh. pitch. Oh, How's yeah, that game work? keeps going. I, I know they actually similar to what you're saying. I saw them use like a 10 foot bat yeah. on one yep. of the at bats. Like, I, I think it, it's just understood. Like, hey, this isn't a baseball game. This is an entertainment game, and we happen to be. But they're still a competing, right? Like, I, I I saw him say, yeah. The stuff we have is planned out, like when we do all these little things. Yeah. But then, like, then we just play it after that. Yeah, yeah. Then they just keep it going. I, 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 I need to go to a game. They get packed. I mean, I, there's been a few that I've seen on Twitter, similar to what you're saying, and it's completely full. Like, I think this is kind of a draw for a lot of baseball fans. I mean, yeah. Not in like a serious, like, hey, I want to go watch a Take great baseball game. Take your kids and go game. do something you haven't exactly. done before. Yeah, like my mm-hmm. kids would lose their mind. I don't think they've ever seen anything that they did, but it, it gets me intrigued. I'm like, man, what oh, are they yeah. doing? Because the guys look like they're, they're good players as well. Well, and they've also brought in, like, I saw one game Johnny Damon yep. was playing. Like, oh, they, really? Yeah, they brought in pros awesome. to play against them. So, I, yeah, I think so it's a college they're summer pl- league. They're playing, they're playing, uh, uh, here in Indy, against, like the the, Cape, against the party, Cape League or whatever, and of June. Wait, do they travel around yeah. playing that team? Mm-hmm. It's not like the Globe Trotters. I know that they say it's not, but it basically it, the it Coastal basically Plain League's West Division. Okay, so they if they won three Cup championships, are those real? I mean, the Petit Cup is no fucking joke. <laughs> yeah. So those uh, are tits. I, yeah, I, I would not. I would not say that this isn't a real league because if they're if they're rolling out the Petit Cup for every winner, then yeah, we can say this is very serious baseball. Well, the jury's still out. We'll, we'll have to. Maybe we'll talk to one of those guys from the squad at some point. Uh, yeah, I believe there was a story. Um, Joe Pagliano, he shared okay. it about the <laughs> owner of the team. He bought it for like pennies or something, very, very, very cheap. And then he was like, "I have this vision of a you know a funny yeah. kind of baseball league where people can do all this gimmick, you know, the stilts, the the massive bat, the dance moves, whether it's at the you know at, in the batter's box or the catcher. Have you seen the one of the catcher and the ump? Oh yeah, dancing like they, together. I see. Mm-hmm. They they there was one where the, the the production value is awesome. They had this one dude running in from like outside of the behind the home run fence. They chased him singing like arms wide open or like a Celine Dion song and the whole stadium got into it. And this dude was like sprinting all the way to his at bat from 700 yards away. Like pretty cool. And someone running with like a steady cam on him the whole time. I couldn't Maybe believe Dan Snyder buys them. That'd be sweet. Do you, what do you think? He didn't really seem like the fun, you know, jocularity <laughs> type of owner. Though. What do you yeah. think the commander's uh, facility is like today? You mean like inside what they feel like? Like, hey, we're pumped. Do you think a lot of the like front office employees are throwing a party today? Maybe. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, I bet there's music bumping. What is, in remember, that Jason place. Wright has said from when he got there, they've had to like find a kind of figure out craft. Like, hey, who should be here? Who shouldn't? Who do we need to bring yeah. in? Who can we kick out? And he said, that finally, it's kind of get. It's, he feels like he's going in the right direction, but it took a while. Yeah, is is that a worry though for Jason Wright? Because he has finally saved them. He's brought them out of the darkness, the dump oh, that it is. was, and now. Like he was a emergency control guy who uh-huh. worked for a company that would go save companies. He, he kind of did his job, right? Like once, yeah. once Batman defeats the Joker, now what? Batman, what does he do? And then that's kind of what Jason writes in now. Now he, now they build the brand new yeah. stadium and brand. He continues new to make money for the team, you know, probably acquiring real estate, doing all the things, trying to build it up to where when it, someone comes to a game here. We keep them around, and we get to collect that money. It doesn't go to outside people. I mean, you hope it's not going to happen because we've had him on, and he's a great guy, but isn't there also a chance that, like, Josh Harris comes in and, like, I mean, he's obviously done a good job, so maybe he stays, but, like, he just cleans house, and, like, all these guys that uh, he's hired, like, they're just going to replace him. I mean, like... Wouldn't you do that if you bought... If, you say, you became ownership of something? I guess you got to sit there and see, hey, it'd be tough to figure out who who who's right for this team, who's not. But you do want to bring it. You're definitely going to have at least a handful of people you want to bring in that are your people. That's why I don't know if it's, like, super celebratory. Like, I'm sure on the day-to-day people are like, oh, I can be much more, like, you know, it's not like you have to 
look over your shoulder every second and be on pins and needles if, like, you thought Dan Snyder was a huge asshole or whatever. But I'm sure, you know, anytime, like, a team gets sold, I, there's got to be some sense of, like, oh, shit, like, am I going to have a job next week? Yeah. I don't know if I will. Got to prove yourself to the next owner, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They probably do what? The not exit interviews, but they probably interview everybody and – They'll, they'll snip a couple There's people so off. many but, people, though. How many people you got to talk to? Well, and Jason Wright said that that's kind of what they've already done. Yeah. You know, like, because they went through the interviews yeah. with everybody there, and they were trying to, you know, build the new commander culture. And they did kind of trim the fat of the people who are old regime, kind of maybe not perfect fits for Washington. So maybe he does bring yeah. in five or six guys. So we're talking kill list? No. I mean, well, if I know President Wright. Yeah, what? During this whole process, he went to bat for everyone who – for sure. Who, who's kind of like who they like? Hey, we we. Who's finally, a soldier for the cause? Someone yeah, that's we, on the right track. We finally got knows a good the vision here. Yeah, yeah, yeah succession. So. Yeah. I mean, it's probably exactly to Zito's point about the kill list. That's probably exactly what they've already What's done. That a spoiler? No, I know, no, Con no, Man. You've already seen the like, latest episode of Succession, and you say it is good. Yeah, a lot happens. I think we move the plot forward uh, in a much needed way, just because. It, we're already at the eighth episode. There's only two episodes left after this. It's like, hey, where are we going here? They've already appointed, you know, the co-CEOs. What's Shiv going to do? What's going to happen with Tom? Like, all that type of stuff. And you do get a few answers. And uh, I personally love the episode. Big uh, Tom and Greg episode. Oh, then, I, yeah, then I'm yeah, going to be yeah. a fan of that mm -hmm. episode. Yeah. Starts with them. Hope you like sushi. Yep. It's an election night. How tall is old buddy Greg in real life? Big son of a big. Nine. Five. Yeah. Is he, does he, oh, on his knees. The yeah. dude is an absolute star, but has he has he done anything else yet? And does he have anything like in the pipeline? He, we know yeah, about? he was in Sky High <laughs> on Disney Channel. Uh, oh, he's a Disney kid? Yeah, he was a uh, neon superhero in that. Uh, <laughs> and I, I believe he's been in some other things. He took WOM scams, Tom. He uh, <laughs> actually was in a show called The Last Kingdom for about 10 minutes, and then they shoved a nail down his throat and killed him. But uh, they, they've been oh, in other no. things. Perks of, be, perks of being a wallflower for... You check out the Her IMDb right now. Classic. It, it this is cousin he, Greg, right? Greg no, Hirsch. Yeah, Tony. I don't believe he was in Perks of Being a Wallflower. A different guy who looks just like. Look, him. he's in The no, Simpsons. Right here. He was in an episode of The Simpsons. Bird Girl playing Greg Hink. Hirsch. He does a lot of voiceover work, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Why not? Easy to do. Avenues. I mean, we all know these shows. I mean, if you want to, you want to make it. You get into voice. I would. Can you imagine how awesome it would be? People, they they send out like. Uh, your auditions, and you just record it on your computer, your phone, and send it in. And then Dude, Bradley get Cooper the makes bank off of Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah, he really? Does. He's, yeah. the, he's, he's the, the raccoon. raccoon guy. So does Vin, probably. And Vin just says two, one word, actually. Yeah, he has one sentence the whole entire show, and he has to say it in, like, ten different languages. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah. The one dude... Uh, the one actor was married to Amy Poehler. He makes a ton of money on voice. Will John Arnett. Cena? Will Arnett has a voice really a unique, voice. cool voice. Yeah. Ty was with me. Yeah, John uh, Cena does, too. How many commercials does that Cena guy do? Cena and Poehler were together for a little bit, I think. Yeah, they a little were. bit of time. Cena and were they really? Yeah. yeah and, during Parks and Rec, I think. I'm not sure if that's true or not, Diggs, but it might it, be for It was you, during maybe. Trainwreck, Tony. It, it's a show. <laughs> completely irrelevant. I remember that show. I remember, no, that's not Amy Poehler, by the way. That's Amy Schumer you're thinking. No, no, he's thinking Schumer. Oh, I'm oh, thinking yeah, this Amy is so. <laughs> this is crazy Amy how many Poehler different Amys right. we're thinking Juggling of. Juggling right a lot of balls right Yeah, yeah Amy Poehler, she was sat Saturday Night Live. Amy Schumer, stand-up comedian, fornicates was with LeBron John Cena's character in that movie. Bingo, yeah. Was LeBron in that movie? Yes, LeBron he was. was in that movie. Oh, was great in that movie. Yeah, Bill Hader, they were best friends. Is he going to win another championship? Is he? I don't know. I'm guessing Pac-Man. He'll, he'll be here tomorrow. I'm guessing he is, feels pretty good about the Lakers' chances. The Nuggets are, yeah. the, the, Nuggets are the favorite in that series. But can't a, AD should be able to stop Joker, right? Mm. I don't know. Not stop him, but, you know, uh, there's a do lot something. Of, Hold I, mean, him I, know, hey, I know Pac-Man thinks he can, so that's that's all that matters. He'll be Joker doesn't mess around, though. I know Joker, like, no, he may no. not, like... His brothers might be there, too. Yeah, like, Joker... And you know his brothers are fucking dogs. Oh, I mean, yeah. This, I love the whole situation that goes on with him and just how he... Like I said, how he meanders around, he he just rumbles around the court, lumbers around, and just is so weirdly like, Correct. I don't know, weirdly athletic, and has like he's like doing, he's like a dancer in there. How he spins and moves, he always finds a little gap, and he has, makes it look easy when everything he's doing is almost impossible. Yeah, he also just makes like the most ridiculous passes. Yeah. Not yeah. not even just for like a center, like just for is he a, seven foot. Yeah, I think he's seven one. He's lanky. It's not as fair, hell. and he brings the ball up like a point guard. Yeah, he, he's unbelievable. There really hasn't been was, a player his size that does what he does. I mean, he gets triple doubles every other night. It's yeah. ridiculous. It's impressive. Diggs? Sometimes he goes through his, through his legs, too, when he's dribbling. You mean he, the ball? Or yeah. people run through his legs? He's so tall. No, no, Both. No, the ball. Yeah, he does do that. 
You're right. It's not common for a big man. No, I mean, the fact that everything he does is not. He, I don't even look at him as a big man because he's so because he's everywhere. He just has the ball here. Give me the ball up top, everyone. He's a basketball. I'll player. figure this out. And also, I said last week, like, hey, you just stop Jokic, and that's it. The Suns mm-hmm. game that they won by thirty points or twenty five points, whatever the hell it is. Like, they really do have a pretty deep team, even on the bench. They got guys coming off. Mm-hmm. So the Nug- the Nuggets Lakers is going to be Celtics Heat. You know, that'll be a nice series. Nuggets Lakers is going to be wild. Yeah, you think Celtics can beat the Heat? Ah, uh, yeah, I think they should. That's the thing with the Celtics now. It's kind of like whoever beats uh, this or whoever wins the Sixers Celtics series should be the you know front runners in the rest of the uh, you know tournament. And obviously, the Celtics are plus a hundred to win the NBA oh. championship, so they they should be able to get it done. But I don't know why they're having the Heat be that big of underdogs because they've already kind of dismantled both teams in the first and second round. But I think both of these series will go seven games, at least Whoa. six games. I, I think it's going to be an unbelievable Final Four of the NBA playoffs. That's the dream for the networks. Oh, they yeah, both to go seven games. This guy, who was a part of a, a big network, also we want to thank him for the time he spent with us yeah. uh, last week, mm-hmm. too. I believe Monday, Tuesday, uh, he was here. Without further ado, this guy, what is it? What is uh, the, he hosts the, the, insiders. the Insiders. The Insiders, what's the other one, too, that we talk about? Uh, the other show that he's doing. Mm. Uh, uh, the, 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 the weekly wrap-up. Wrap Bobby Flay. Oh, the, the weekly, weekly wrap-up. Wrap 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 and, and then the, the cooking show he has as yeah, well. Came on here, hosted. Can uh-huh. do pretty much everything. There's not a job he can't do. Also owns a horse that ran the Kentucky Derby. Mm-hmm. Please welcome Ian Rappaport. Yeah, yeah, Rappi! Rappi! Whoa, wow. What's going on? Ian, what's up? Did you have uh, anyone reach out to you uh, that saw your pictures of you rowing when you were just super jacked back in the day? You mean like any like women interested in Whoa. the old body as opposed to the new body? Well, anyone, no. anyone, no. I think, you know, anyone's no. probably, man, we see, we see you Ian. we know. No, I mean, yeah, there were some people who were kind of like, um, you know, how do I get to have the body that you had back in the day? I mean, I get, you know, and, yeah. and I honestly, that doesn't happen a lot. Um, but notice a noticeable amount of people, over the last couple of days, um, you know, obviously I've lost a lot of it, so there's really not much to say, but that was a, I did, I'd say this, I did have a rowing podcast reach out to me and want to have yes. me on, which I'll wow. probably do. So let's go. Do you still remember? You still remember the old lingo and everything? Like how do you, or do you have to brush um, up? Yeah, I will probably have to brush up a little bit. I mean, it was such a part of my life, like four years, two practices a day, but uh, it has been, you know, it has been a minute. So, yeah. It has. Ian, uh, big news I'm sure that you've been talking about and reporting on for months and months. So, the Washington Commanders have agreed what in principle on terms of a sale. What does that mean? When when can this thing be finalized? And is there any question that this is gonna, isn't going going to go through when the owners vote on it? Okay. So, second part first. Uh, it does not seem to be a question that this is going to go through. It's now a matter right. of when and not if. So, look, I mean, it's amazing to, when these things happen, and this has been – not months, but really years since Commanders fans have waited for Dan Snyder to be out, waited for a new owner, hoped for a new owner. Is it actually going to happen? You know, it's been headed in this direction for a while, but the Friday afternoon news that we got was no Friday news dump. I mean, that was, I think, the moment that Commanders fans have been waiting for since before they were the Commanders, since they were that other team with that other name that wasn't, you know, wasn't mm. good. Um, this is... No, that was a good name. That was great. That was a yeah, good the name. best name. You really think so? Yeah. I mean, Washington Wild Hogs will have that something to say about it. You think yeah. they change it, Ian? You think the, the new owner is going to change it eventually? Uh, I asked that to people connected to the new owner, and basically the response was that's not something that's on the table. Like, that's not something that we have discussed. Um, and I, you know, to me, it's like all names are kind of – whatever you know it's like mm-hmm. if you use it enough they start to sound like what the name should be so i imagine eventually commanders will feel normal just like eventually the washington football team felt normal uh, but by the way it is not agreement in principle it is a signed contract oh okay so it's, it's more than that it's basically what this is is dan snyder and josh harris and his partners have a firm exclusive deal to sell the commanders to josh harris and his people which include Niche rails. It includes, you know, smaller limited partners like Magic Johnson. It's actually like a pretty, you know, sort of robust group. But the next step is they present it to the NFL Finance Committee. The Finance Committee okay's, and there's a lot here, and it's the biggest deal they've ever done, team transaction wise. How, how so, much? 
$6.05 billion. It's a lot. It's okay. It's a lot. It's a lot of money. Um, child and, and, you know, it's amazing. You talk about, like, investments. Yeah. Like, the numbers are only going up. Do you know how it works, so, Ian? I know when people, like, a lot of times succession, different things, certain sure. things are stock options. How does this money work? Do you have any idea how the, how the cash flows or what it works, how it is? Um, I am not smart enough to answer that like a real finance okay, person, yeah. although I am watching succession. Bam. Um, so I'm learning about their deal. We'll see which <laughs> way that goes. Is obviously, I'm not going to spoil it for anyone, but last week's episode was, anyway, it was a lot. Oh, yeah. um, no spoilers. No spoilers. Uh, I feel like we've reached the point now where you basically can't talk about any show on the internet ever because someone's going to be like, dude, like I'm saving that to binge. Like, you yeah. You certainly can't do it the day after the episode premieres, <laughs> no. but no, at least a 24 hour window. But I would argue for more because what we like to do is save the shows until we have all of them and then nice. watch all. Of them. Oh, yeah. sure. That's the best way to do it. No question. Yeah. Um, but no. So I, I imagine there is a, uh, you know, it's it's all sort of fully guaranteed. So there is a significant, I believe, a, a upfront portion, a cash portion. I just don't know enough to say how much that is, but it's not like. You know, there really isn't a question of like, is the money going to be there? I mean, these are very rich people. These are, you know, people in Josh Harris who have owned a couple teams. They own the Sixers, own the Devils. I mean, this basically is at the point now where it's happening. I just thought initially that it was going to happen next week at the May meeting, but that sounds a little too ambitious. So it probably seems like what will happen this time is what happened when the Broncos were sold, which is they'll schedule like a special league meeting maybe sometime around training camp or something like that, have the owners vote and finalize all of this. Tone Diggs has a follow-up. Yeah, Ian, we were just talking about it. Um, do you know, like, when owners, when they are buying NFL teams, like, do they normally come in and clean house? Like, does like does the team president, like, does that do they normally get let go? Like, how does that work when new owners buy? Or do they normally just keep on and, and then the owner is replaced? Uh, so I would say from what I would expect of the commanders, and this is sort of what's happened in a lot of different places, you don't come in and clean house. You come in and evaluate for like a year. So I would say for the commanders, what's probably going to happen is Josh Harrison's people will come in. They will spend a year, a season and a little bit and, you know, a season and an off season, whatever it is, kind of just looking around and saying like, where do we stand? And I think from the football side, that's pretty clear. You know, if the football team is really good, if Sam Howell is what the commanders think, um, if Eric Bieniemy comes in and, and, you know, really, really helps as an offensive coordinator, I mean, if, if they're in a good place, then I would imagine they'll keep being in a good place. Um, if not, then, you know, you might see a new owner come in and make some changes. I would say a lot of times management-wise is probably, you know, I don't know if it's going to be immediate, but he's run teams before. We just talked about it, you know, Sixers and Devils. Certainly has a way he likes to do things. A lot of times, the people who are in management under the old owner, in this case, Dan Snyder, either see the writing on the wall or are eventually replaced. Um, you know, I, I believe that everyone has a shot to keep doing what they're doing. But sure, there's going to be some some turnover in management, no doubt about it. Boston Connor? Yeah, Rabshi, we saw today Matt Ryan joining CBS Sports but as an analyst, but he's not retiring. Uh, are there people in the NFL talking about how the Colts might curse quarterbacks? Because Carl Wentz, also not on a team. Matt Ryan, not on a team. Are they, are they done? Is, is there any shot that they get picked up, whether that be before the season when training camp starts or maybe wait until maybe someone gets hurt and then they have to bring them into play? I mean, I'll – Philip Rivers retired right after the Colts, mm -hmm. too, which, you know, went went to coach high school football, which is kind of cool. Uh, sure. But, yeah. you know, there's Kinda. there's a long lineage of quarterbacks that they <laughs> signed, and it just did not go great, which obviously is why they went and got Anthony Richardson, who you hope does go great. Well, um, he helped clean up. Be, he helped clean up at that NFL rookie yep, yep, event. That's right. Great guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of like these stories because, like, <laughs> I would imagine that he did not think one bit that anyone was watching. Right. Like there's no way he was like, oh, maybe one day someone will write a blog about this. Like, I'm sure that's just kind of what he does. And I liked it. You know, like that's, you know, you got to go complete passes and get first downs and do all the things. But like that was at least a good sign that the starter they are going to spend so much money on and a lot of draft capital is a good human. He's a good guy. That's Hell a good yeah. Sign. Good positive story um, for once coming from the media. Right. About players. Yeah. Is that absolutely. what you're saying, Ian? Yeah. There's not a lot of that. Oh, it's I easy. Mean, we know car crashes pay the bills. We know that. Well, yeah. I mean, it's like we had that over the weekend. We had the Jalen Hurts 
like leading the Eagles to the Super Bowl and then quietly getting his master's yeah. degree. Like I, I had like heard some rumblings about it, but I was kind of like, nah, that doesn't doesn't seem right. But I was, I thought that was kind of cool too, you know? Oh yeah, With Todd Bowles yeah. got his degree. Yeah, yeah. Bowles finally did as well. Yep. Justin Fields. Did Stetson Bennett get his or not? Uh, I don't know. He was in college for a long time. Sounds yeah, like he was doing I, a little too much raising hell down there. Not that was his studying. major. You think, Ty? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what I've heard. Ty's got something for you. Uh, there was a little that. Well, I want to ask the. I want to answer the Colts thing too. Yes. Um. So for Matt Ryan and for I, I imagine for Matt Ryan, you know, he says he's not retiring. I believe if he was, he might have to give back some of the yeah. guaranteed money. So he's gonna definitely not retire until the end of time. Um, but taking a full-time job at CBS as an analyst, you know, you can always get back in the field if someone needs you. But my guess is Matt Ryan has probably played his last football. Carson Wentz is a much more interesting story to me. He's not that old. Nope. He really is not. Um, and, you know, it's not like he just fell off the face of the earth. He just wasn't at a point where he could be the starter. I think the questions are more like, is he just based on the way he's wired? Like, and he is sort of hardwired, you know, he's intense. He's driven. He wants it very bad. Could he be a backup? I think that's more the question. And, you know, are, there really aren't a lot of teams right now looking for backups, if anyone. So I think what Wentz is going to do is just sit there, wait. And if there's a training camp injury, he's there to come in and lend some depth. But, you know, it's just there's not a lot of precedent for a quarterback this young who could be a very serviceable backup to still be out there. Ty Smith. Rap sheet, I think it was about an hour ago, uh, Quinn and Williams updated yeah. his Twitter profile, and ju- it now it just says defensive tackle for dot, dot, dot. Took the Jets out of there. We know he wants a new contract, and those negotiations have kind of been stalling or going back and forth. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, but he seems pretty pissed off right now. Do you have any update on that? Uh, is this something that's going to get done? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm reading the tea leaves. I imagine, you know, if you look at his Twitter, bo- his Twitter account, uh, and it's interesting because, you know, I used to sort of like shrug this stuff off, but this is, I think we've learned like kind of real, like this oh, yeah. is a lot of times this how. This is real, yeah. This is how they communicate. Yeah. It's how young people communicate a little bit more right. than, than we're used to. Right. And some of us old people too. But uh, yeah, I mean, I this is, it's not nothing. I do not think it's nothing. Now, I mean, could a deal get done? The market is pretty well defined. I mean, he is a very, very, very good football player. Um, and his stats compare more than favorably to, to Jeff Simmons. So you would think he'd end up as the highest paid, not named Aaron Donald. I mean, he is a you know great draft pick by the Jets, really good person, and a great football player. I imagine it's going to get done eventually. But you know, from his perspective, I kind of understand too because you know it's you've seen all the guys get done. You've seen Jeff Simmons get done a really nice deal. Dexter Lawrence, um, nose tackle, gets really really good money. And Quinn and Williams is sitting here like, okay, like let's, you know, the market's well defined. Can we go? I don't blame him at all if he's a little frustrated. Now there is time to get a deal. Like you know, I don't. How much time? I don't have? know. Like when? When would be the deadline where they, you know, they've gone too far and they're not going to get it done? I mean, usually these big money deals, we always see a couple right before training camp. Yeah. I think what happened in this case was all the defensive tackles deal, all the defensive tackle deals got done already. Yep. So. Yeah. Usually it's like, well, you got to wait for this guy. You gotta, so, like, if let's say the quarterbacks that we talked about, you know, like Justin Herbert and the Chargers will probably eventually do a deal. And then we sort of have talked about maybe Joe Burrow's waiting for him and then maybe Mahomes after that. Like, there's a pretty decent chronology of when things might happen. Well, the defensive tackles are done. It's just Quinn and Williams. So, like, you could understand if he's like, okay, like, let's, let's go. Uh, so, I, it's, I do not think it's nothing. Connor has something. Yeah, a rap sheet. Uh, another kind of big move with another frustrated player over the weekend. The Darius Smith getting traded from the Vikings to the Browns. When did this kind of happen? How did it happen? And also, the Vikings weren't planning on letting him go, right? But did something happen where he got you know fed up to the point where the Vikings were like, "All right, we can't even we can't do this with this guy." Okay, so two parts to this one, and th- this actually was going on. I thought this was going to happen like the Wednesday of draft. Like I was, you know, I was sort of talking to the people involved and kind of ready for it. And then it just didn't quite get there because, you know, you're talking about draft choices. So you wanted to know, like, if it's going to be for a 2023 draft pick, like you want it in place before the draft, obviously. So it didn't get done. 
um, kind of kept tabs on it. And then it ended up happening Friday afternoon at a Friday night at like seven 30. Um, and you know, basically what happened here was he signed a three-year deal with the Vikings. He outplayed that deal, um, wanted a new deal. And if you're the Vikings and you have a free agent, you just signed, you have a lot of guys who do a lot of money, um, including Daniel Hunter, um, and including Justin Jefferson. And maybe you don't want to say, well, we'll just rip up your deal with two years left. You know, you don't want to set that precedent and trade is probably the best option. So, you know, they got some value back with a, a future pick swap. And, you know, I think what the, you know, Cleveland Browns did was again for maybe the third year in a row or maybe more, they added a really, really good pass rusher after the draft. Usually it's clowny. This time it wasn't clowny. I mean, that is a like, that is a big time guy to add yeah. in May when usually your roster is kind of set. Absolutely, Ian. What do you think about Sauce Gardner saying that OBJ was was literally like trying to pick out his, uh, picking out his number almost uh, with the Jets before he signed with the Ravens? Was it that close? I I kind of thought he was going to the Jets too, honestly. Oh, oh. Um, wow! It was, you know, so, and, did something happen at the end, like at the last minute? Did Baltimore step in with more cash or what? Yeah. Yeah, Baltimore. And, like, so with the Jets, I think what they were kind of offering was more of a, a deal where he would prove it a little more. You know, hadn't played in a year, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I think they were looking at a deal more similar to the Michael Thomas deal where it was, like, up to 15, but maybe not all the way 15. It would just depend on how well he played. And that was kind of where his market was for a very, very long time. Baltimore stepped in and offered a lot of money. Like, a re- like that was a really, really good contract that Baltimore gave him. And I think at some point, you know, once he had not guarantees, but once he had indications from Lamar that like, all right, Lamar is going to be there, he couldn't turn down that money. And I think from the Jets standpoint, like they could have matched, but they were like, we are maxed out, probably should take that offer. So that's that is what happened. Baltimore stepped in with a really, really good offer and he had to take it. Yeah, Rapshi, you mentioned uh, a little bit before about the Herbert to Burrow to Mahomes. Are you expecting that to happen like soon, or is that something that might happen next year? Because I thought the Chiefs were planning on redoing Mahomes' deal kind of soon. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's going to be next year. I mean, look, if negotiations break down, you know, at some point a quarterback should get paid what he should get paid, and if it's not this year, he should hold out for what it's going to be. Um, I don't get the sense that anything is imminent, but what you're probably looking at is, you know, if maybe June for one of these deals before minicamp, possibly, um, Mm -hmm. or, you know, probably more likely right around the time of training camp. And I think like if you're Joe Burrow and let's say, let's just compare. Okay. Joe Burrow is represented by Brian Arolt, uh, who's a William Morris agent. He did Joey Bosa's deal. Joey Bosa's deal was literally right up to the day that the Chargers reported to training camp. Like, I think he signed as players were, like, checking in. As we were like, is Bosa going to show up? Is he going to show up? Okay, boom, he has a deal. Took that one really to the last minute. Maybe Joe Burrow's deal has a similar time frame, um, just based on same, you know, team that is, you know, challenging to negotiate with and same agent. What does that look like, you think? Do you have any clue? what the structure may look like when they do get Joe Burrow done? For Burrow, the structure is going to be a lot of it. You know, because Lamar is 52, right? Yeah, Lamar is 52 a year based on new money. So you'd imagine that Burrow is going to be either around there or a little bit more. But the the Bengals haven't really done guarantees that go into year two. So do they change the precedent for the quarterback? Hmm. If you're going to change the – like the the Steelers did it with T.J. Watt. Right, what? you're going to change the precedent. Do it with literally the best player your franchise has had in like yeah. forever. Right, it would actually make sense. Oh. Um, or do you just offer him so much first year money that he has the security he wants and it's fine? Like either way, you know, I would imagine it's somewhere in the you know fifties, low mid fifties. Um, oh. But the structure and how much is guaranteed in the second year is going to be interesting. Ian, are you following this John Morant situation going on in the NBA? I'm just curious how something like this would play out in the NFL if, if this was the case like with a player. What do you think is going on? I am extremely interested in it. Um, it's, I mean, I hate to say this because like the playoffs have been really awesome mm-hmm. um, and I think are probably going to get better. And that seems to be the biggest story. 
Um, yeah. It is. It feels right? Like, yeah. Nice yeah. up. It definitely is now. It's now. Now it's back here. And here mm-hmm. we go again, I guess. And and he's suspended. Like, how long is the suspension going to last? Do we know? Suspended from what? Like, that's, yeah. you know, I, I understand why teams sort of felt the need to be like, we're suspending him, but sort of like, he's probably on vacation. So, like, suspended from his downtime. Like, okay. Um, the NFL has not had a lot of these recently, um, but I would imagine. You know, it's going to be something what the, what leagues do not like just generally what commissioners do not like is when they personally when the commissioner personally personally says something to a player like, hey, like I imagine it was from Adam Silver to be to John Morant, like this needs to stop. And then for him to ignore it is like spitting in the face of the commissioner. So I would imagine whatever comes down, it's going to be stiff. It's going to be really significant. And I just don't understand why, like at what point is having a gun for a social media video worth it where you're going to get suspended and hurt your team and cost you money and all like for what? So like, yeah, for the NFL, I would imagine it would be probably really harsh. Well, what happened to that guy who was on the Raiders? Cause didn't that just happen where he was either oh, yeah. on IG live or something and somebody DM'd him you know, about, I honestly don't know, but I just remember there was a guy for the Raiders that got suspended. I don't know if it was indefinitely, but I think they cut him actually. Yeah, was did it he get Damon cut? Damon Arnett or whatever. Yeah, Arnett. Yeah. There it is. He, they cut him, and he has not played since. Ooh. Or wait, no, he played for the, he was on the Chiefs practice squad. Then he got arrested, and then he was released. So like that, that is a pretty good example of a high profile player who you know probably was not good enough to get but drafted. But Ja didn't get he, he Ja didn't get arrested and what he's doing technically wasn't illegal, right? If his gun was registered to him and he, he had like you can carry in Tennessee, right? Mm-hmm. I'm It's like I, it's like I don't NBA know, but I would imagine. team rules. This is more NBA right, team right. rules, right? Where of course right. they can say you can't bring a gun into the facility, but can they say you're not allowed to own guns? Can they tell players that? I mean, they they I don't know if they could say you're not allowed to own guns, but what I think they can do is like your public persona is real. Like for lack of a better way of saying it, like there are kids watching, you know? And I think that's the problem when you're a really high profile athlete is like the rules are not the same. And this is just me, but like the rules are not the same for everyone because you know, if there's more than just like sort of the laws, there's like, you have to abide by what you and the league sort of decide is acceptable and a lot of times the commissioner gets to decide that. So, like, he's not going to be very happy seeing that. And I would expect it to be pretty harsh. Could that be something that is in a contract to where – can you put that in writing? Like, hey, you're not going to show any weapons on any social media oh, platform or pictures. Sure. Can that be yeah. something they do? Is that possible? Um, I mean, John would have to sign off I mean, on it. He, he would have to sign off on it. And then at this point it's like, you know, I guess he would, but he probably wouldn't be very happy about it considering he keeps – sort of flaunting it like you know i don't know how specific the language can get but there are morals clauses in contracts the same way you're not allowed to go like skydiving or whatever like there are different um you know there are different things you can put in a contract to make sure that the behavior holds up to what the league demands i guess for lack of a better way of saying it i get you know michael silver at all uh adam Adam silver michael's not michael yeah i knew i knew (laughs) what i said What's Michael Silver do? That's, he's somebody. Yeah, he's a columnist for the uh, in San Francisco. There we go. That's right. Um, he's in San Francisco. But so you Adam know. Silver, of course. Uh, I do not know. <laughs> I do not know Adam Silver. I know a bunch of people close to him, and I know some people in baseball and similar places. But him, I do not know. Despite he and, he and I uh, being from somewhat similar places, it's, what, then it, it seems like he has the respect of the players in the league, doesn't he? He seems to have a good relationship, like with the MVPA or whatever. Oh yeah. I think so. I mean, it seems so. And just based on like, you know, their interactions with him, it seems like they're all on the same page. They're just, I just, there isn't a lot of precedent. The really, like I was thinking about this today, like just kind of looking back, like what could they do? Um, Like when have we seen players just say like, I don't care what the commissioner says. I'm just going to do whatever I want. Not a lot of that. Well, he already did his like apology thing yeah. on ESPN too. So like now, mm-hmm. no matter yeah, what but he then, does, people won't believe it. Right, but then he had his whole family. I don't know how close you guys were following, but again, like this know. is really interesting to me. His whole family was there, and they're all wearing shirts that said something like it was like vindicated or like freed. Or do you remember this? I don't. His whole family this. was courtside in like these ridiculous T-shirts about how he was wronged and he was finally back. And I was like, that's a good indication that at least the people around him don't take this seriously at all. 
That is news to me. I didn't, do you guys see those shirts or anything? Mm, I do so not when he came that. back mm. from his original suspension is what yes, you're saying. That's they were all happened. courtside wearing oh. these T-shirts hmm. that basically painted him as, like, the victim. Hmm. Huh. Wow. I mean, they're gonna, hey, Ian, I'll tell you what. We're going to get a lot of comments on this one, but I don't really care. Hey, that's all right. You be you, Ian. Don't worry about that. You, you keep being you. What, last thing for me here before we let you roll. What uh, What's your horse up to? Do you know where what state he's in? Or he or she? Do we know what's going on? It's alive, correct? Yeah. No, multiple states. No, very interesting situation with Uh-oh. Jace's road. So, uh, no, he's good. He's oh, good. 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 Um, but, you know, didn't fire at the Derby like we all thought. And the jockey kind of sensed that something was not right. Oh, no. So he pulled back. It turns out he's dealing with some knee bruising, so they shut him down for 60 days. Shut. He will be back. Jerks. He will be how back. How do you shut him down? We mean like you make him sit down and take a knee or how, just not run? Just not run. Oh. Yeah, they're going to let him fully heal. You're going to let him live. That's good. So, mm-hmm. For now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he'll, okay. he'll race again. Good. But it was actually like, you know, Jockey took care of him, though, you know? Good like, guy. Didn't, didn't feel right. It was like, this is not – it just – Something's not right, wow. and so pulled back and didn't push him, even though it was the Derby. And uh, so sixty days on the shelf, and uh, you know, hopefully, better things ahead. How do you guys find your your the jockey to ride your horse? Because I know those jockeys ride horses all day long. They ride all the like a bunch of those races. How do you get to pick your jockey there? Uh, the trainer picks. Oh. So basically, like um, he sort of you know, there's characteristics of what a jockey does best, characteristics of a horse, and you kind of mix and match. Um, and the same trainer, Brad Cox, and the same jockey, Florent Giroux, won a couple races at Derby Saturday, so we were very optimistic. But alas, health wise, it uh, just did not did not happen. But hey, we'll be we'll be at the Preakness as well. We have no horse running, as far as I know. Um, but we will be there regardless. All right, well, Ian, thank you so much, man. We appreciate your time. Good luck to Jace's Road and recovery back from the knee bruising. I'm glad that the horse is still alive mm-hmm. and doing well. Like you said, fingers crossed. We'll be out there running again. But, Ian, thanks, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rappaport. Yay! He was good. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. What absolutely. do you think? What's your one big takeaway from that? Oh, one man? big takeaway from one, that? One big. I, I tell you what I'm intrigued by is how intrigued he is by the John Morant yeah, situation. Bingo. Mm-hmm. Really? Ian seems really into it. I did. I had no idea the whole family wearing vindicated shirts. Is that real? I don't remember that either. Neither, neither do I. But you got a redemption, not redemption. vindicated, just redemption. Like, That's hey, a little I, bit different. You made me miss four or five. Redemption's how many different. games did he miss? Yeah, I think he missed eight games. I mean, but yeah. yeah so it just looks, yeah, that's a lot different than vindicated, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Much okay, different. good. Okay, I'm glad we cleared that up here. It Thank you for pulling this picture up. though, because like in, in the NFL, whenever a guy gets arrested for something like gun-related, it's always like they pulled him over and they have a gun in their mm-hmm. car. Like yep. You don't ever see guys in the NFL like on their IGs like right. swinging. You know what I mean? It's always like, uh, oh, this guy got pulled over. He had a loaded gun in his car or just a gun that, like you know, whatever the case may be. Like it, it's, it's never like this. Like I, I can't remember – Another athlete who's really had a situation like this. I, uh, yeah, it made me think the NFL does a good job of educating you about guns. I mean, they definitely scare you to death to try to say, don't ever even have a gun in your vehicle if you're in a, like the facility's parking lot. Yeah. But I do remember some, I think I was in, when I was in Cincinnati early on in the offseason, you do a lot of those, the head coach will like present things of like, this is just like kind of off the field things, how to handle the media, how to do mm-hmm. this, how to deal with stress, whatever. And he popped up a picture of a couple guys in the team with some sweet guns. They were out <laughs> shooting somewhere. They were, I don't know where they were shooting. It was all legal. Everything was cool. But they had some sweet guns. They were posing with them. And they had posted these pictures. And he was like, guys, do we really think this is the best idea? Do we really think this is the message we want to send or whatever? And the guy, everyone kind of laughed like, yeah, of course we can't be posting pictures like this, holding these sweet giant guns and everything, even though they were just honestly target shooting, going out there, yeah. mm-hmm. shooting cans or wherever they were, targets. Yeah, and this doesn't, like, for the John Morant, the comparison with the Damon Arnett situation in, you know, Vegas, that is one thing, but it's not even close to the player John Morant is. Like, there isn't yeah. a comparison. But he said Damon Arnett was arrested. What happened with him? Well, he was he, he was threatening to, like, kill some guy yeah. who was talking shit to him on oh, IG. Like, yeah, that's, so that's was, different. Yeah, exactly, and he had... Uh, you know, Ja, obviously, like, I, I don't know, but, like, he had, like, an automatic, like, it, l- it looked like he had, like, one of those, like, grenade launchers. Pretty with, like, serious. Yeah. yeah like piece was, put together. It, exactly. So, but, yeah, I do remember, because his was, yeah, he, he was, like, some guy was talking shit about his play or something like that. And I don't remember if it was IG Live or if he sent a message directly to him, but he was, like, threatening to kill him. Ooh. Yeah. See, Ja hasn't been arrested, right? He had no, no trouble no. with the law. Because you're allowed to, I mean. Was, when was the first gun flashed? In what video? Was that the one at the, the club? 
Uh, no, the club was a. I don't. Did think he have a gun at the club? It was I don't a car know. too. Yeah, I don't think the club, the club. Because yeah, that would be illegal deal. if you pulled a gun at the club. They probably say you can't do. Can't night, at least though? pull it, right? Should probably clarify. I think it was after the club is okay. when the gun situation so came. So everything up. he is getting in trouble for, everything he's been suspended for, and people are up in arms. He's flashed a gun in a couple in two Instagram live videos. Mm -hmm. I believe just so. flash it. Didn't point at anybody. Didn't threaten people. I'm not trying to like defend him. I'm just trying to figure out. How the they're going to go about doing whatever th they're going to do with them. I think if it was a first time offense, then they'd probably just do like, but like they, they we were just talking about this like two months ago. And, yeah, and then he had the big That's like the apology come on. Yeah. I understand my actions have repercussions and a lot of people Obviously, look up to me and all this kind of stuff. Now, you know, and, you can't believe no, that it, now. It, yeah. It, exactly. Like, and the, the timing of it. Like, I even think if this happened next year during the season like it would be a big deal still and people would talk about it because he is one of the best players in the NBA but for this to happen like right after the season ended when we just got done and he kind of like went through all the trying to like repair his public image it's kind of like oh it's bullshit and this guy just isn't gonna learn he's just such a good player that's yeah. the thing yeah, people like, you're gonna get like yeah like Pat says all the time like be who you can afford to be he's pushing the line now like even though he's oh, yeah. unbelievable like transcendent type player that makes people come to the arena to watch and tune in, but he's just got to figure this out. Yeah, and earlier I think you said you saw he, he's lost $40 million or Is that or right? Did they, they estimate that? Well, I assume with the contract he has, he's definitely lost millions in the – you know, those eight games he missed because he makes 100. I mean, I think he signed 150. Oh, yeah, he definitely lost a mill or a couple. Yeah, and then he was P Powerade's first yeah. uh, cover athlete in the last, like, 15 years or something and they actually i think they ran the ads or the ads started like the day after this happened too oh. the day or the first offense not this one they just started rolling them out and now nike with everything going on because his shoes yeah, some man, people, like yeah and some people are comparing his shoes to the Kyrie irving situation and like they want some people don't want his shoes on the shelves anymore that's crazy. Kyrie's are gone. Those are very Kyrie's popular are shoes. The Jaws, the, I don't have them, but they looked sweet. They mm -hmm. looked like they were very good basketball shoes. Now Nike has to make a decision here, don't they? Oh, yeah. I, I assume a lot of people are going to be pushing that uh, narrative to pressure Nike. Can you separate the person from the shoe? Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of times I don't even know whose shoes they are. I'm like, oh, who's these? And they're different players. Oh, no, those are KDs. Like, they're, you never yeah, really I'm not know. a shoe guy. I mean, it's the personally, logo. artist from the art situation? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't know. I'm. The, I, I mean, guess just, I'm. I'm curious about this whole. Just thing based on like guys you played with who were younger, do you think is that the only way some of these guys? It's like when you start fucking with their money, then they realize like, <laughs> oh, okay, like this. This actually is serious, yeah, and I like think I so. need to start listening. Is that like the only but, way to kind of straighten them out? But when you get paid as much as Ja does, you got to really start messing with his money for him to notice it. True. And be like, okay, because he how old is Ja? Twenty four. Uh, so think, young, making so many. Like he one hundred percent can count on making over a billion dollars. With his contracts and oh, endorsements, yeah. everything over the course of his career, if he is smart. Well, and I forget if he is. Uh, yeah, there it is. Oh, he just lost oh, because the an, oh. yeah the All NBA. So that's not even counting any of his sponsorships. No, lost out on thirty nine million over not making the All NBA team because they're they're like max deals depend yeah. on it. They're like yeah. super max. You have to be an All NBA player to get. Who votes on the All NBA team? Too? It is it is a bunch of uh, sports writers. It's crazy they put that in their contract. That's how their CBA crazy. did it. Well, I mean, Jason Tatum he made first team All NBA, so his next super max deal is. Five years, three hundred sixteen million dollars, because he made that All NBA team. Jalen Brown's the same way, but you also have to be with the same team. Okay. So like Jason Tatum, that deal is so big because he has the All NBA escalator, and then I believe it's like a same team escalator. Yeah, oh yeah. If you stay in Jalen Brown, had the same thing. He was second team All NBA. Now he's eligible for like a five year, two hundred ninety or something million dollar max contract. Ooh, does the NBA have any rules? I believe the NFL put them in right where if you have any like indiscretions or suspensions, you you are ineligible for postseason awards. Yeah, like you so can't go to the Pro Bowl or be Rookie of the Year if you got. Suspended three games. That starts next year. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, and it's a sixty-five. So Josh just didn't make the team. He, he wasn't, wasn't because of any. Of the, he wasn't first, second, or third. No, uh, no. Was he hurt most of the year? Part of the year? Hey, he was hurt for some of the year, but I think honestly, the suspension had more to do with yeah anything, especially if you're talking games. about the people who are voting. On yeah. I'd say too. first, second, or third team, Josh. I would imagine would be first, second, or third team. Well, it's not the same thing, but it's like look at when you know uh, Aaron won that. Second MVP, and we had and like Hub Arkish came out and basically said like, "Hey, this guy's an asshole. That's not that's why I'm not voting for You're him. Right. Like, yeah, his numbers are incredible, mm -hmm. but he's an asshole, and I don't want to. I'm not going to make him my MVP. Yeah, and there, <laughs> like the league was pretty damn good this year. So I, I yeah, think even right. when you look at the third team All NBA, whatever the hell it is, because the second All NBA team, I mean, they're stacked too. So I, I'm not sure he definitely should have been at least third though.
Yeah, his man. I don't know what they do. Like, like Ian, that was a good response though. He's suspended now. Ian's like, from what? What are you talking about? The season just ended. What are they? They don't have. It's not like there's OTAs and stuff in basketball. No, no. They, but I, I don't I, get it. I assume it. Maybe they did that because of you know wording in the contract, right? Because they can probably oh they can come after something. I'm sure they can come yeah. after money, right? It's not only suspended once, but you had uh, they have conduct detrimental to the team. Yes. They have all mm-hmm. kind of language now. But now do they make him go sign? I want to know if after he was suspended the first eight games, did they try to like add some kind of addendum to his contract to where hey you can't do this? Like we can't have you have any situation like this pop up where you're on camera anywhere with guns or weapons. I mean, could they get him to do that to sign that? It feels like necessary. Yeah. Players have too much power. Players have a lot of power. They, they do, NBA, though, especially the players at his status. But it does feel necessary now. It's like, all right, if yeah. Kyler Murray can't watch film, let's put it in his contract. If John Morant right. can't stop pulling out guns on IG Live, well, let's just put it in his contract. But John Morant understands if he's not on that team, they. It's a completely different world for oh, that, yeah. whole, that whole franchise. So oh, he yeah. he understands the power that he has because he is so good too. Well, especially because what they were before him, yeah. they were do- like, the Grizzlies were dog shit for it. a long time, mm-hmm. and now with John Moran, it feels like every year they have a chance. I mean, they were the two seed in the West. It's not like their team was the seven seed. He's got figured out, man. NBA needs that guy. They need him for the next oh, fifteen yeah. years. So entertaining. Well, his thing oh, about uh, silver too, like and you mentioned it. You know, the players have so much power in the NBA, so it's a little bit different, but. It will be interesting to see if, you know, like, I don't know if he's going to take it as like a personal slap in the face. Oh, yeah, I can see that. But if he does, like, that obviously changes things quite a bit. What do you think that conversation's like with Adam Silver now? Because, yeah, I would imagine a commissioner could be like, man, like, I thought we had a great, like, communication. I bet they did sit down and talk after the first thing. We got suspended. Definitely. Okay, cool. Hopefully they ended on good terms. This is great. I hope to not see you again. Only on good terms there, Ja. And then this happens. If it was like your parent or your teacher, they'd be like, "Okay, I'm kind of like, mm-hmm. I'm kind of hurt that you did this." Well, that's the thing too is like he he recognizes his value. It's like you look at other like LeBron and like Curry, like those guys are towards the tail end. Like mm-hmm. they need he's going to be one of the main oh. faces of the NBA. Yeah. Like as it goes into this kind of next generation, like Ooh. they do need him around. Well, and yeah. you got to kind of assume too, like he they could set an example. Like this might this we're entering the territory where it's like, all right, You're he right. screwed up the first time. He got the eight games. For sure, but if you do the whole apology thing, if you talk to the commissioner and have that conversation, and then still do it again, like I don't, I could see them doing fifty games. I really could, mm-hmm. just because. Okay, yeah. if we do this to John now, everyone in the NBA knows how important he is. He's already done it once. This is the second time over a three month period, whatever the hell it's been. Like, let's just set him as an example. So all these guys who are coming into the NBA, all the younger players who are also looking to be, you know, the future after the Currys and LeBrons are yeah. all done. Like, we need to show them what we're going to do if this happens consistently. And that's why, like, half the season. 50 games, something along those lines. Because then you really are, because Ty asked, how much money do you really have to, you know, take? Once, how That's a lot. How much do you affect, yeah, till yeah. they really, it settles in? And that would be a lot. And that'd yep. be tough to sit out for over half the season, too. Yes. Oh, and yeah. watch your squad play. Yeah, watch your squad maybe stink, too. Yeah. Because then, then all of a sudden, maybe not now, they were looking at Ja like, what the fuck? But there was that Steven Adams meeting yep. yeah. right the night, <laughs> the day of the yep. club uh, with all the money on the floor. That happened the same day. So that's one thing. But then, like, next year, if they end up being one of the worst teams in the NBA through the first half of the season because he's suspended, you assume the dudes on the team, too, would probably be like, hey, man, you kind of fucked us. Yeah. What's the coach's name again? Uh, he's no, ooh, he's I can young, picture him. I just can't think yeah, of his name. Yeah, he's, he's a guy. younger guy. How does he handle this? I don't know. As a coach. Well, well, it's also like it's a tough situation because it's almost a a double-edged sword. It's like you suspend him, but is he in a situation where it's like, hey, we can't have this guy just not here for 50 games like he's exactly. young like what what is he going to be going and doing in memphis or wherever he goes that's to? that's another like, question we yeah. need to have this yeah. guy in the fucking building so that we have eyes on him at all times and and make sure that this doesn't end up tragically and you know he throws away his entire career because he just can't stay out of trouble it's like being um when you were growing up did you have if say someone got in a fight they get like a three-day suspension mm-hmm. yes but then if it wasn't as bad sometimes you get an in-school in suspension. School. oh yeah, oh, yeah. They, they need a job like an in-school suspension where hey you're here practicing with us doing everything even traveling to away game i don't know if you want to take them or, yeah maybe take yeah. them with you like you're playing but you just aren't street clothes every day like you're hurt maybe they try that yeah i mean also uh, and granted who knows what the situation is around him but like if he's hanging out with people who are putting him on ig live while he's holding yeah. a gun do you do is there any thought of that at all just because like maybe it's just not i mean maybe he's not hanging around the right people if they're still doing it of maybe course. it's just him too of course you know? that's all like 
But at the, I just you got to think how young these dudes are, how much money had been thrown at them. Yeah, of course, I'm not defending doing this. But no, no, no. Also, yeah. at the same time, is it? Let's say two years from now, Jar, one of his teammates, is like like a Carson Wentz picture where he shot 85 birds and he hung them up and he's holding a shotgun. Is that allowed? I think that's different because it's mm. like you're hunting. But it when is. But just, I'm saying some people might try to make say, hey, what's, yeah, what's the difference? Obviously, not in a car driving, but. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of what other people might try to like. Yeah, I mean, and now that he has these down. two prior now, situations, yeah, he has you a know, situation. obviously he's, much he knows. different. He's different. But, but I like, think hunting in general, people kind of just put that in a separate, you know, separate basket. You're right. But it's not. You're right. Like it's not a. It's not like a prior though, because it's not illegal what he's doing. Yeah, that's why. It's, uh, that's, that's why I have all these why. questions because I'm like, what do you? Yes, of course, the NBA can do whatever they want. The owner can. But just like Roger Goodell can say that's whatever, I can suspend you. I don't care if there's nothing, no one else found anything wrong with it. I can suspend you because I say that. The NBA can do that, but the NBA just has too The players have so much power, I feel like they're going to fight whatever happens. They're, yeah, but are the players going to put into, like, the next CBA, like, hey, if guys want to, you know, wheel an Uzi in their car, like, that's <laughs> yeah. fair game. No, you can't yeah. do anything about it. You're right. I mean, it's, yeah, this is a, it's a rough situation. The NBA needs a job. Right. Yeah. Well, it's just tough because he's the only one. We need like, Ja. We there, need Ja. There are a lot. Of, we de we definitely <laughs> need Ja. No one, you know, plays the way he does. But there are there's so many good young guys now. Like yeah. Ja's 23, 24. Tatum's 25. Like you don't see him doing that. Giannis, he's in his 20s. You don't see him doing that. You know. Yeah. And Zion, he might be wielding a couple of McFlurries, but you don't see him <laughs> wielding whoa, guns whoa. in his dude. I'm just Ore saying. Oreo McFlurry. Whoa. Yeah. Really good. M and M. Hopefully, oh, yep. come both on. of them double. They, double they went one. Up. They went one too, right? Yeah. Yeah, they went one too. Who? Zion. Zion oh, they off. did. That's their same year, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They play on the same AAU team. Good luck beating that team growing up. Growing up. Yeah, I believe there was another NBA guy on that team. I forgot. Really? Who Where did Ja grow up? Good question. South Carolina. South Carolina. Yeah. And did uh, Zion grow up in North Carolina? I thought he was South Carolina. He as is well. also. Didn't he South move Carolina. and go to a like one of those Different big time school. high schools? I think when he was young. Like when he got to high school, he might have went to one of those academies or whatever. Pro I mean, probably. I Little Bronny's sure. going to USC, right? Yep. Lebron, yeah. LeBron's son? Yes. And also, there are highlights. Yeah. Uh, LeBron tweeted out highlights of his other kid playing, and it sure seems like his other kid Ooh. is the one. Bryce. Yeah. yeah. I still, heard he's shut up. I heard he's a giant. So he's still he going is. to do six, six, seven. He's still going is to do he really? Yeah, he's huge. How old is he now? He's not even. He visited he's like a freshman? Uh, yeah, freshman or sophomore. I think he is a freshman now. Next year will be a sophomore year because he was on the Sierra Canyon uh, varsity team oh. with Bronny this year. I, I heard Bryce grew like 10 inches. I heard he just He's all of a sudden became yeah. a monster. Yeah. Buttery jump shot. Oh, yeah. no. Dunks with ease. Yeah, arms in all passing lanes. He's a, he's a stud. And he's a uh, he's a Kareem Rex goggles Bex? guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rex Bex. Yeah. yeah. Good. We don't need we don't need the old contacts. Where are the Rex specs? Chris Sabo, old Reds player mm -hmm. back in the day, used Legend. to play in Rex specs. You know you know Chris Sabo? Oh yeah. So this is uh this is Bryce. Yeah. This yeah. is yeah. This is. Bryce. See, you thought I was joking, but LeBron's high school Fuck. coach is the coach of Kane's men's basketball and and. I remember him as a little kid. I feel like the last time so, I saw him. Yeah, that's Bryce. And now he's mm -hmm. an absolute dog on the court. Man. Yeah, I mean this dunk is just so. I mean, just after Casual. I, I don't yeah. know how old LeBron's daughter is. I bet she can play as well, though. Yeah, absolutely. AJ, you never dunked, huh? I never dunked in could a game. Could you dunk? Not a, I could two foot dunk. Yeah, I couldn't. I can. I'm not a one foot jumper. I'm a two footer. Like take one step, drop step, boom. Oh, so you could you, you could easily. I'm dunk a two. Foot. I mean, not it's not easy. I had to I had to put some power through the ground to get up there, but mm -hmm. I, I could jump and hang on the rim. Now I couldn't. I doubt I could get over. Yeah, there but if dunk. you landed, would your knees then explode, <laughs> causing you to walk around on stubs <laughs> as thighs like Oscar Pistorius? Maybe. Like honestly, this uh, crash pad. I need you as I'm when I jump. I need all you to push that crash pad underneath me, so then I can so when I fall, fall back. Yeah. Well, yeah. E well, either I get sl either I get swatted by the rim and I'm falling back on my head, or I just don't want to land on my knees and. You know, shatter everything. Shatter both of them. Yeah, we'll work on that in the break. Okay. Yeah, okay, perfect. Who do we have coming up at 205, Con Man? Uh, 205, Shams Cherania. Oh, he can answer a lot is of our Is that how you say <laughs> No. <laughs> no, no Shams Cherania. Now you're going to mess. Now I'm going to be thinking that. You said Shams Cherania? Cherania. Cher. That it's is like, not the right That's yeah. not the right uh, last name, but Shams will be with us at 205. Uh, Ian, we appreciate him, obviously. He mm -hmm. gave us some good stuff. I'm, his horse is alive for now. Yeah. For now. For now. Shut How do you down. know it has bone bruising? Do they like MRI that thing? No, no, no. Uh, These jockeys are simpatico with the horses. Yeah. They know. They're like Avatar. They plug in. Exactly. Right? Yep. Exactly. Yeah. I'm glad we figured that out today, guys. Yeah. Jockeys. Stick around. 205. We have Shams. We're gonna take a quick five, everybody, and we'll be a little bit. We'll be back in a little bit. <laughs> quick five. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Hey, that ain't gonna help, Miz. 
That ain't gonna help. That's gonna do nothing. He was a three-sport athlete at Plum High School, where his volleyball team was in the mix for a Section 3 title. Yeah! Okay, here we go. American Century Championship coverage rolls on here from the back deck of Edgewood Tahoe. How about Pat McAfee just stopping by, man? Don't break the table, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I just break shit. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> somebody oh, yeah. came sprinting behind the barrier and tried to spear him. He I fucking dare somebody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I dare the next two. Ass kicking. What? what? Saudi Arabia. What? Riyadh. What? Taking a jet plane. What? All the way there. What? All the way back. What? All the way back. What? WWE champion. What? Thank you, Jim. Yeah! Yeah! Hell yeah! 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 Why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing?
Here we go, hour two of the Pat McAfee Show. I'm AJ Hawk sitting in for Pat as he takes care of his beautiful little baby girl with his wife Sam at home. Spores! A little bit of a delay there, a little bit early for me, boys, but you know, hour two, we're trying to figure things out. Ian was good. We appreciate him coming on here. Shams Sharania will be on at 205. Hell Correct comment. Yeah. That's how you say his last name, isn't it? That is exactly how you say his last name. And speaking of rap sheet, we should, you know, make sure we clarify that it was redemption on those t-shirts. Redemption on the yeah. shirts, right? Not uh-huh. vindication. No. A little bit different. L- very different. I'd very, say. very different, I would say. Yeah. So I'm I glad we so. cleared that up right after right. Ian came on. I'm sure he appreciates that as well. I want to pivot to something we actually asked Ian about. Ooh. Okay. Tone. I know you love this story, Anthony Richardson. Yeah. So this story, the team had a function. The yep. Indianapolis Colts, obviously, he was the first-round pick for the Indianapolis Colts quarterback. They mm-hmm. want him to come in, and he's going to be the, the guy to run this franchise. Hell, yeah. And what this tweet says, basically, Tony, you want to read it, or you just want to summarize this for people? Well. He's being a good guy. First off, I want to make sure from the source is it, if it is correct or not. But um, From Dove? Dove? Yeah. Dove? Yep. Dove? Yep. Dove? Yep. Dove? 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 Yeah, sure. Dove? Basically, yeah, you you said it. He, st- he stayed around. He, he cleaned up the mess because he didn't want to have everyone else else deal with it. I just want to know is that a is that a normal thing in the in the locker room? Well, see, I actually didn't. This happen at the draft. I think this happened at the draft with Malik I, Willis. You're talking, aren't you? No, I, no. This I believe it says oh. left by the draftees on this. Yeah, I think it was and a, Troy Vincent talked to him. Yeah, but it says NFL rookie event. So I wonder if it's just all the guys who were drafted. Because if it was Troy Vincent, don't you guys have that rookie symposium thing? Is that right after the draft? No, the symposium's later, actually, in the summer, I believe. Oh, so maybe this was a draft event. But, I mean, that that middle paragraph's unbelievable. Richardson explained that it was unfair to expect the staff to clean up the mess left by the I draft. I mean, this is, a real, this is a real thing, but it usually happens from vets, where, like, a vet, but, hey, man, like, you took it, after practice, everyone comes in, you're talking, you have like 20 minutes or so. Mm-hmm. As you're getting your stuff off, people are going to lift, people are going to lunch, you're going to meetings, and you're like, oh, okay, man, you cut your tape off, your, your shoes and your ankles, your cleats, and every once in a while, someone will just like put it on the ground or leave it on the ground okay. when there's a trash can two feet away. Yeah. And I, it's the most infuriating thing ever. I'm like, what are you doing? Like this, all these people here, like we're all on the team together. They're they're not like they don't specifically work to pick up your dumb trash because you couldn't throw it two feet into the trash can. Mm-hmm. But it's usually vets that will kind of find a guy and maybe scare a guy early, and then they get that, and then they can pass it on as they grow. Like, hey, we're not going to this place isn't going to be garbage because of us. Well, and that's like own team. It's common Cause, sense because this isn't this isn't just like a Colts rookie event, right? Yeah, this is just, this is for everybody. You're right. Yeah, it's. It's great, like, and especially the fact that I would assume he didn't he didn't do it knowing that people were going to talk about. It. He didn't do it to try to get on camera or whatever or to set it. Like he did it because he's a good dude, yeah. And he doesn't want to he doesn't want to ruin the the day of these other people because you have these stupid entitled athletes leaving their trash everywhere. AJ, Absolutely. some other tweets are calling this a rookie orientation. Is that like a specific with the Col- thing? The, the Colts could have had a rookie orientation kind of thing where they I know they. We had rookie orientation stuff where they would almost like a few vets would come in. It was usually on the weekend of rookie minicamp, I think, and vets would come in and maybe do a little presentation to the players or like go over things, how to handle giving money to your family, all of that stuff. So it could have been. So that makes more sense then. Yeah. If it was if it was a. But Troy team. Vincent was there. Troy Vincent's Apparently. like uh, Demora Smith's right hand man, right? Or is he? No, my bad. He's the NFL. Right hand Goodell. Man. He was. He was with the PA. Now he's been with the NFL for a while. My bad on that. Okay. Well, where did this come from? Like, is there a sort? How did this get out? Yeah, how did this get? That's what I mean. Because is the Dove just hear this, or where did is this from? Like Honestly, a, Troy, well, it'd be smart for Troy Vincent to, to put it out to tell Dove. Yeah, oh yeah, true. it's great, good pub. If it if truly happened, like it obviously it did, then yeah, for Troy Vincent, he he's a fan, he's he needs the NFL to do well. It's just another feel good story for the NFL and a young superstar. Dove is seemingly everywhere, so he could have been in the garbage can <laughs> that <laughs> that so, Andy Richardson threw all this stuff. So we're being told Ooh. that this was a pre-draft event, not necessarily something fully affiliated with the Colts. Oh, so like it a was function. The NFL, yes. I love how we're really okay. digging. We're the really league, digging yeah. down on what event, what the event yes. was. Well, we yeah. Who was sure. there? So it wasn't just Colts players, we're saying. Right, exactly. There's a Ooh. bunch of players. So, so a lot it's of different like, players. hey, he's the leader of all these guys. These guys are all Alpha Zoo, all Bryce Young, all these people are here. And say. this is the guy saying, 
Hey, no, this isn't right. Yeah, good guy. Feels like there Uh-oh. were thirty assholes drafted. Did the Colts one win the draft? Guy. Sorry, Con, for cutting you off. Yeah, they You're did right. win the draft. Did the Colts win the draft now because of this? Yeah, yeah. and I, I maybe I've just been oblivious to it. But him being twenty years old is absurd. Oh my god, crazy! That's nuts yeah. to me. I mean, that is absurd. And to have yeah, that think, kind of high character and integrity at twenty? Are you kidding me? How excited are people in Indianapolis right now? Oh, oh, they're very excited. jumping over the moon. Yeah, or Jim Irsay. Jim Irsay? You better find that guy. When, when he saw this, you know what Jim Irsay did? What? He fucking went out and bought a guitar from Led Zeppelin. He was like, you know what? What am I even doing? Why do I even have? I got a good guy at quarterback. You think I need this $2 million? No, give me that fucking guitar. I want it now. Mm-hmm. Are, are you? Is it illegal to flick your cigarette butts out the window? No. I assume it is illegal. No. That's not that's littering. Big I don't time. know. That's I don't actually know. a great that's question. Absolutely littering. I don't think cigarette can we, butts. So, can we look it up back there, Evie, when you get a chance? I don't think chance? cigarette butts are littering. What? What? But what? <laughs> what makes you say that? I'm just asking the question. Even because I was thinking like, this weekend. No, I was yeah. thinking, what if all of a sudden yeah, I was just thinking of someone littering after this situation? I'm thinking, is is AJ it, used to do that to all the rookies when they came? He'd throw all his butts down and say, "I picked that up, Rook." Yeah. Yeah. You put them, don't you get done with them? You put them out on their like, shoulder or their mm-hmm. neck. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. that's did. what you guys did. Ohio that's State. what those old school guys did before I got there. They said, Oh, is that right? That guy, whoever we were talking about last week, who was the middle linebacker with that cool fucking. You're talking to Andy Katzmore? You'll call him is. that guy. He's well, sorry. I don't know guy. Litter is any rubbish, no matter how small, thrown in an open or public place. He played drafted by the Patriots, too, Con Man. Yeah, I love that guy. One of my favorite Patriots ever. I know. It includes dropped cigarette butts on the ground. Wow. So he has don't, to. Don't, you couldn't have been serious saying you didn't think it was litter because it was a cigarette butt. No, I was. Well, those blow away in the and wind. Who, that's why I like your brain. <laughs> who are the yeah. who and who are the river keepers to tell me otherwise? Okay? Is that, what river keepers? Is that are what they website? Are was? they? <laughs> what? Is, do they have authority? <laughs> the river, yeah. What are do the, the river, river keepers? keepers yeah. Have any authority? Cigarette butt matter? litter. The facts by the river keepers. Yeah, riverkeepers.org. It's an organization. Gentlemen. I get that, but also so is PETA. Okay. PETA. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, they okay. haven't found my respect that I will call them. Oh, river keepers thing. probably yeah are trying to keep the rivers clean, which I respect. I'd hope so. Yeah, yes. you do respect. The only thing that should be in rivers is water and dead bodies. <laughs> yeah, welcome yep. to Pittsburgh. What about fish? A few rocks in the bottom. Well, yeah, too. those are obviously, obviously fish are going to be in rivers. Fish. Well, you never know. It sounds like you want to get rid of them. <laughs> no, I would never want to get rid of the fish. I love fish. Is that the aquarium yesterday? Okay. Oh no. Nice. Are you really? Boom. Yeah. You take your daughter? Yeah. And do they have sharks there? They do have sharks. The Indianapolis Aquarium is it a good one? I have never been. The Aquarium at the Indianapolis Zoo is pretty good. Oh, okay. So, so right. you saw the orangutan guy that was miserable. Yeah, they were still oh, miserable. Man. Still very, very miserable. Were the rhinos out yet? Yeah, because they look sweet. Okay, well, last time what? I saw the rhinos, they looked like two boulders. They had they had no water. What it was mean? despicable. I thought they were dead. They they did. They I think they're still in their same spot because <laughs> two of them did look like that, but there was one fucking big one roaming around. The The planes were actually really cool. Planes is a great section over there. It yeah. is. Did you race the cheetah? No. Wait, <laughs> smoke. what? You, you can race, race the, the cheetah? Oh, yeah. Smoke like, Stewart says, you want to race the cheetah? Mm-hmm. They got like a little <laughs> yep. strip of like, you know, it's maybe like a 50-yard dash, okay. Okay. and you you run, and then boom, it lets you know how fast the cheetah's going next to you. Yeah. Is the cheetah actually running next to no. you? No. No, 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 no. That'd be no, no, sweet. No. Yeah, no, the cheetahs are it just It could, though, if it out. wanted to. It could if it wanted to. There's space there Remember, for in a big glass window for it to run. Didn't Ocho fucking race the cheetah? A horse, I thought. There oh, this is. is it? There it yeah. is. Boom. Yeah. Heck of a cheetah. setup. Oh, with the elephant in the background? Jeez, yeah. 21 seconds. I this took a picture kid. with a cheetah uh, uh, probably 10 years shit. ago at the zoo. Like, right here, right here with the guy. Dogs, Full are, dogs are saving sweet. cheetahs. Are they? Yeah. yeah. That was at least what the sign said. Yeah, che- cheetahs have, uh, some some zoos have cheetahs with dogs hanging out. Oh, yeah, they're raising. There's little snow, snow leopards they were raising at the Columbus Zoo with uh, mm-hmm. with puppies. These big old, you know, those like, um, those dogs that protect the pack. This doesn't seem like a safe area for that. Uh, I mean, I see it's a baby. That elephant could very easily, you know, get over that three-foot security <laughs> fence that all these people are Oh, yeah. On. And stomp yeah. Oh, this yeah. little, what do you think this kid ran? Probably four three forty. This kid, I, I mean, yeah, that's 21 seconds. He has good arm there. drive. Good arm drive. Is he at 21 seconds? With good arm drive. This kid is moving. No, like that's molasses. the best. That was the best today. <laughs> oh, okay. So did you do this thing? Did you race? No, no, no. I did not. I could have. When you go back, will you? And just I will. Take video time. of it, please. Next for time, us? I will. I wasn't in the correct uh, attire. Oh, okay. Was Anthony Richardson there? Uh, no. But if he yeah. was, he the would be shoveling poop. Yeah. And all the <laughs> he's cleaning up all the elephant <laughs> dung. Yep. I'm really excited for Anthony Richardson. It's okay, but does this Dove climb and report though? Is this trashing the rest of the players there that were at this event? They didn't name the other players. All of the draftees. But is that what you're doing? Say these guys are just throwing their trash and expecting everyone to basically pick it up? anyone else who got drafted this year. It is, is honestly, it is a. a it's such a stupid move. It's just a what a turd if you're gonna make people clean up your trash. Well, like, especially, especially an event like that. Well, if it's like, yeah, I mean, if we're talking like they like ate a meal and these guys were like 
just like throwing it on the ground yeah. or like intentionally See, missing the Well, garbage. I heard a bunch like, of them were putting ketchup packets on the ground and fucking stomping on them. So the whole. <laughs> that's bad. Don't do that. <laughs> that's classic cafeteria. Yeah. You know? Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, good. I think that they, we're in good hands with Anthony Richardson. Is he going to start day one? Never yes. back? Yeah. Even 100%. though Gardner Minshew's here. Even though Gardner Minshew's here, yeah, he's the guy. I mean, they took him at four overall. How, how long do you want him to sit behind someone? You now you can't. Throw him into the fire. Yeah. It's not like they have expectations to go win the Super Bowl this oh. year either. So. And they've already, you know what they've done, which I appreciate? Other teams go the opposite way. And I've heard Michael and Barty talk about this to where now we want to pump people up and put these unrealistic expectations yeah. on players. Like I remember, I was hearing Lombo on his podcast say something like, "If a guy played last year, we're gonna or like a guy like Justin Fields, they're gonna say, oh, he is light years ahead of where he was last oh, year.' Yeah. They always want to say this, and then Lombo's like, "Come on, you're 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 gonna ruin it for this kid, and you're, you're telling your fan base all of this stuff and these expectations. Like they need to be realistic, and when you do that, you screw these players over sometimes." Well, yeah. and on TV right now with Justin Fields, they're saying like, "Oh, he's gonna be an MVP candidate this upcoming yeah, like, year," which like he could be. Yeah. I mean, like that he's he's an incredible athlete, but yeah, if he that would be a hell of a jump. It would very be. educated. It would be. Yeah, it would be, but it's. It, I don't think the team's doing him any favors when the team comes out and does that. That's no. why I think it's cool that didn't isn't Chris Bauer already said like we're gonna have some we're gonna stumble a little bit. It might he not said look they pretty early him because right because of where his ceiling is. Yeah, so good. Let people know like you're gonna we're gonna see some flashes of brilliance. You're gonna love what you see at times, and there might be a few plays that you do not love, and mm -hmm. you want him to have those back. But guess what? That's just all part of the process. Well, it's the same deal. Like. It when you have a guy like him, like he, you don't need him to be an incredibly efficient passer out of the gate. Like no. he he could he could win them a couple games by rushing for like 150 yards or yeah. yeah you just you don't get that with Gardner Minshew. And it's the best setup out of all the rookie quarterbacks. Like really, re like with people with around Colts. him. You mean? Yes. Or yes, with the offensive line. Jonathan Taylor. If obviously. they play how they play, yeah. Jonathan Taylor, Michael Pittman Jr. They drafted. Josh Downs and all signs right. seem to be pointing that he's unbelievable. They got Alec Pierce was good. Yeah, second round pick last year. Like they do have weapons, and then defensively, we'll, we'll see what happens. But they really just lost Gilmore, right? With Shaq Leonard healthy, hopefully feeling Shaq good Leonard's, again. Yep, he'll be roaming the Forest Buckner, all Zyra pro Franklin. Like they do have. Jeez, they do have athletes everywhere. They have studs yes. all every level you think of. Yeah, every level. And I'm not saying it's the same situation uh, whatsoever. But remember when the 49ers, you know, Jimmy G got hurt, and then they drafted Nick Bosa third overall, mm. and then they went to the Super Bowl. And I'm not saying that at all <laughs> that that is something that can happen. But it's a similar like. This team is pretty damn good where they are now. So Steichen does come in, and the offense that they ran with Jalen Hurts is hopefully perfect for Richardson, and they just pick up where they left off kind of before all this team had all the worries and they have this you know future quarterback in the NFL, then there is a chance that they could make a playoff run. I mean, in that division, anything Oh, yeah, possible. for sure. Yeah. Okay, Diggs. What about your Steelers, though? I heard him say you uh, you got a little upset when they mentioned when Ian mentioned T.J. Watt being the greatest Steeler of all time. I, I rethought about it, and then I think he was he was saying that about Joe Burrow, but using T.J. Watt is I could yeah, I was I don't know. There's a lot of great Steelers. T.J. Watt's one of the greatest of all time. Yes. So you're that's all you yeah one yeah. of is what you need. To yeah. Say. yeah. Sack record. With Pittsburgh, it's hard to you can't like crown one person, can you? No, because there's been multiple defensive player of the years uh, on that. Who's side. your favorite? Super Bowl Troy? favorite Steeler of all time? Oh come on, Tony. You, you know. know, Bubby. No. Seven. Seven. Boom. Maybe. No one's done more Football. for the organization. I mean, Football. You know, <laughs> without a quarterback, you don't fucking win championships. I know. I've watched Ben play in college. Not college, bro. I've seen him. Up close and personal, do it for a long time. He, I think he could come back and but, give a team a good year. But no, but like honestly, I saw like a power rankings of the AFC yesterday, and they had them like they had the Steelers like ninth, and I, and I went through all the teams, and I was like, you know what? It's probably uh, accurate, like because you want to you want to see what happens w with Kenny in year two, and they have a really good roster, but like there's just so many fucking good teams in the in the AFC. It's absurd. It's absurd. Yeah, let's like, pop this up, Bevy, if we can. The over over uh, under win totals here. It really is ridiculous. Like, I'm okay Eight with and a half of the Steelers. Right I, th I think that's probably right because I feel like almost, uh, I guess last year we didn't really know what we had going in with the Steelers. Right now, I don't know what we have. They went 9-8 and eight last year, right? They're gonna be, uh, they should be better, though, obviously. Like, do I, I, th I think they would, I, I think they're better than the Jags, but the Jags have 9.5 because their division is yep. easier there. Yep. Like, yeah, and just look at, look at the teams from 9.5 up. Like they're what are they nine or ten AFC teams? Like the Browns made a great move this weekend. Mm -hmm. Like the yeah. the Browns. I looked at their roster this morning. The Browns have the Browns have a good roster again. Now are they going to be the Browns again? Probably because that's just something always happens with that organization. <laughs> so that they so they won't put on paper they're good. Like 
yeah, the whole the AFC is just a it's wild. Yeah, it's stacked, and that's why for you know, and I'm kind of in the same boat as Tony, just because like young quarterback, who knows yeah. what the team is going to be with the rookies that we drafted. Like there, there's so much unknown, you know. And then obviously every single year, we know one of these teams who's in the upper half of this is going to underperform. Like we oh. just know that's yep. going to happen. It just remember last year, last someone year? from that first row right there is going to underperform. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly, and, and by a lot too. Yeah, yeah and multiple. You know, on the other side of the board too, at hmm. nine and a half and eight and a half. Like that's why it's. This is probably, I think, the most interesting NFL season for the AFC they've had in a long, long time. But then there's another chance that we talk about all these teams, and then it's Bengals Chiefs again. Yeah. Like that, that's very, a, that's very real possibility. Very real possibility. You know, so. I, I'm I cannot wait for this NFL season. I cannot I, get yeah, here for that. The quarterback switch up, like the change up at quarterback. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers is gone. He's in New York. Jordan yep. Love's in Green Bay. Um, well, now Anthony Richardson will most likely start in Indianapolis. Yep. Mm-hmm. Houston. Uh, Derek Bay, Carr Baker is in New Orleans. Oh, Derek Carr yeah. is in New Orleans. Baker's he's going to start in Tampa, isn't Jimmy he? G. Jimmy G. Jimmy in G. in Vegas. Vegas. Man, there's a lot of a lot of things changing for us. We don't know what. The Rams were Super Bowl champions uh, just two years ago. Two years, years ago. Jeez, you're right. They're six and a half, and then. On the opposite side, too. Like who's starting for the Niners? The 11 and a half mm. games. We don't even know if Purdy's going to be ready. And then we got Matt Mayoko saying that Sam Darnold is, right. the, is the greatest ball thrower that the Niners have ever well had. Well said. Well pronounced. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Is that uh, how you say it? Yeah. Yes. Mayoko. Mayoko. And also, like, okay, the Browns. Deshaun Watson, he played, what, five games last year? Oh, But it, this is basically yeah, his first that, real yeah. time. Yeah. This is our first look at what they look like with the Sharp. Did start I think a little better too at the end. Yeah, and they yeah. they did kind of start to figure it out. And what happens with them? He's like, gonna have to play good. Yeah, if they the come out of the gates and they're just unbelievable, because they also no one's like, talking about. You know, the Browns just uh, Darius Smith gets just got traded there. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like the Browns are really under the radar right now. Oh. Aren't they? Big time, do, but do they ever get brought up on any of these morning shows that we see? Are they ever talking about the no. Browns? No, and no. I think partially that is because of Deshaun Watson. Like everyone has kind of just right. written him off. They're done with him. They don't want to see them do well outside of Cleveland, outside of Browns fans. But like you said, like he needs to play well. Like does he? He has two hundred thirty million dollars guaranteed. Right. Like he he doesn't need to play well. No, no. Until now he wants he to. Yeah. He wants to obviously, <laughs> right. but. Like that, that, that is kind of just a, a weird situation. Yeah, Tony and I were talking about it before uh, the show today. Like the AFC East, one of the best divisions. The AFC North is unbelievable too. And like the, the AFC and the West. Like it really is. There's three divisions this year where you can basically say, yeah, there are three, possibly four teams that can win each of those divisions. Yeah, that doesn't always happen that way. No, sometimes never. you can usually you can usually at least have a pretty good feeling going in. Yeah, teams that. Kind of bills, same thing. There were teams that undersold what everyone thought they were underperformed, what everyone thought that they were going to do, and then there were some teams that just come out of nowhere. Like Dolph- the Dolphins could win that division. Easily. Exactly, yeah. Dolphins yeah. could. Uh, everyone's saying Jets, Bills, but the Dolphins could easily win that division. And the Dolphins, shit, they lost to the Bills in the playoffs, thirty-four to thirty-one with Skylar Thompson. Like, True. Like they, True. they are very, very good. One two is. Helping. And what if Max' career gets vi- reinvigorated yeah. by Bill O'Brien being there, and they yeah. win, you know, eleven or twelve games? Like that's not out of the realm of possibility. It's no. not. And then, but unfortunately for UConn, man, and Mac, all of a sudden, Bill O'Brien comes back, revamps Max' career, boom, huge year. Exactly. Bill O'B goes and gets a job somewhere else. So we got to figure it out again with Mac and bring another coordinator. Coordinator. No. Yeah, exactly. See Bill, you later. Bill said he's staying forever. Yeah, hopefully Bill just, you know, he's a mass guy. Hopefully he says, I tried the whole head coaching thing. J.J. Watt punched me in the teeth. I would just much rather be an O.C. for Mac Jones and Bill Belichick. And obviously the assumed successor, Gerard Mayo, is there. Oh, they yeah. just extended him. But what, then uh, with the whole idea of, like, Mac and Bill O'Brien figuring it out, and maybe they are unbelievable, when you go through the Patriots' schedule, it is absurd how is it? hard it is. It is so We have hard. it anywhere back there? They play the NFC East and they play the AFC West. And then they play mm, okay. you know, a few other teams that are really good. And it, it really is one of those things where, yeah, we could be seeing Mac Jones kind of bring his career back, and they could still possibly only win seven games. Oh, like yeah. That, that is how, Very real possible. That's how ridiculously tough the schedule is in the AFC this year. And we're not the only ones. Like, shit, the Dolphins have an absurd game, too. Like, it stinks, yeah. Eagles at home, Dolphins at home, Jets, and I believe it's the Cowboys. Yeah, Cowboys on the road. Ooh. Saints, Raiders kind of turns into a must win, but then Bills, Dolphins, Commander, or Ooh. yeah, Commanders, Colts in Germany, bye, and then look how you close the season. 
Giants, Chargers, Steelers, Chiefs, Broncos, Bills, Jets. Mm. Like, are you that's kidding a tough, me? That's Yikes. a tough month in December. End of November. You don't want, December. Like the, the, you don't know what the Saints and Raiders are going to be, but you don't want them to be uh, games that you have to win. No, yeah, definitely not. Must win. I mean, I guess you could make the argument like, hey, if you're going to play the Eagles, you'd want to play them <laughs> yeah. early just because Maybe. Yeah, Maybe. it's the first game, but then also it's the most healthy they'll Yeah, they'll or late be. when they're beat up. Yeah, which yeah. one do you want? It, it, it's, just, it's a shitty – yeah, when both teams – are beat up. Yeah, exactly. it's, it's just a it's a terrible it's a terrible schedule that's why you know you need and this is kind of all this is the silver lining i would Uh-oh. say you need mac to play well because yes. if he doesn't then we are they need mac to win games for him this year oh yeah Absolutely. exactly yeah we can't win with mac we have yeah. to win because of him and there there's a chance that that doesn't happen and then you do figure out like okay mac jones great rookie year but we have a top three pick this year and we're gonna have to take a quarterback because billy is gonna thing. get him right I think Billy O will too. I, I think it will. I still have a lot of faith. I mean, the over under set at seven and a half. I'm absolutely taking over seven and a half just because. I mean, we won seven games with Cam Newton, and that was the worst football team mm-hmm. in the history of the planet that's ever been assembled. Which is, you know <laughs> says something about how good Bill Bill. Belichick is as a head coach. But I, I, I have plenty of faith. A lot of things have to go right, though. And I, you, you know, there's always like three or four plays in every yep. game where it's like, yeah, that's probably where we lost the game. Whether it's I lean to Bill though. When it comes to those, yeah. where it takes one or two plays, Bill has done enough and educated his teams enough to where they usually steal those games. Yeah, and I know that the defense is going to be good because you basically brought back everybody, and then the first three picks of the draft this year were all defense. So you hope that those guys perform well, and Christian Gonzalez is one of the steals of the draft, same with Keon White. But you know that that's going to be good. You know the special teams is going to be good. The only question mark is offense. And obviously when you're in a division – with Josh Allen, Aaron Rodgers, Tua with Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle, you you have to score t- 24, 28 points, or, yeah. or, or you're just not going to win. I'd that, say the division a little scary when you look at the quarterbacks. Is that yeah. guy with the the nose bar still a Hall of Famer? The oh. nose bar, Cole Strange. Yeah, absolutely. He, oh yeah. I mean, Cole Strange's best game was against the Steelers and Cam Hayward. Actually. He killed it. He's still doing well. Yeah, he he played That's very cool. well. You guys see any of the clips of Bryce Young on the internet when they're like, "Oh, Bryce literally disappears behind his lineman he when he's taking the good. snap." He I did looks see that. Good. Looks good, man. He looks good. What do you mean? You think he looks really good? Yeah. You heard it. Frank said said he's out there. He's he's best he's ever seen. Does it worry you when you see like how when he how he looks compared to his offensive line? No, because I know exactly the screenshot you're talking about. Yeah, it's coming from this video. Someone pause it I mean, and screenshot it. Gonna, they're not doing him any favors with his angle either. That's what I mean. He's like, what, eight? Is that eight yards behind his O-lineman? So obviously he looks tiny. With one, he walks into the frame and then he's behind. Uh-huh. He looks so tiny without shoulder pads on. Too. Yeah, that's the thing. When you don't have shoulder pads, it's always a weird look. But just Get rid of the ball. I just have a hard time thinking that. <laughs> they should hire short coaches. <laughs> that would have helped, but I think even next to these coaches, he's probably right up there with them. It's, I, I'm having a hard time thinking that he's just going to absolutely stink if everybody who no. we know, especially Lombardi, I will be. He's kind of the guy that I've deferred to because he didn't like Bryce Young, yeah. and then he watched all the tape and he's like, Bryce Young is the bona fide number one overall pick. He seems just so solid, like everything. Mm-hmm. I, from anyone I've talked to that's been around him and played with him, they're like. Can't shake the dude. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah nothing shakes him. <laughs> nothing derails him. He's always the same, like, laser-focused guy that never is mm-hmm. off his script. And he's just, hey, here we go. I love it. I love what he's doing. I, I mean, Carolina could be very surprising to some people. And that division, yeah. It's, sure. sim- it's similar to the situation with Anthony Richards in the, uh, Richardson in the AFC South. Like, if, if Bryce Young's good, the uh, Panthers could easily win the NFC South. Like, Yeah. I mean, unless I heard fucking Baker's. What about tearing, Baker I heard Tampa? Baker's tearing it up. Yeah, yeah. I did hear that. Right? Good. Who was, was that? Wasn't that BA Bruce Arians? Here's the one thing that. though: they do have Jason. Who all do they have? They have. They didn't lose anybody, did they? No, they have Godwin. They have Mike Evans. They don't have Leonard Fournette, right? No, no but He's they have the there. rookie. They could What's though. His name Rashad White. Rashad yeah, White. Yeah, who's, who's yep. good. Who they think they really got the center back right. Their season, their season was really derailed because of the offensive line in the Eagles. Like literally day one was. And then they all got hurt. What well, a weird! That was this year with Tom, and that, that what a weird year. It feels like it was two years ago, three it, years ago. And they're moving uh, worse yeah, to left so tackle. Right. They got that Cody Mock guy who had no front teeth. North oh, Dakota, yeah, North Dakota. Yep. So I think worse. Worse is a stud. Absolute stud. Yeah, mm-hmm. he is. I, I like him. It feels like if Baker plays the way he did it with the Rams, that this team is going to be really good. Well, and you know he'll Ooh. be comfortable because they brought the Wolf back. John Wolford is their yeah. third string mm-hmm. quarterback. They spent a little from, time from with the Rams. His high school guy, right? No, he's hungry oh, no, like no. the wolf neck brace guy. Yeah. I'm thinking of his – who was the guy that he was, was in – he's like third string guy in Cleveland that Baker – he was like Baker's hero. 
they grew up together to where this guy was the older quarterback in Baker's school system, I guess, and Baker looked up to this dude. He was like his third string quarterback or backup in Cleveland for a minute. Sounds Cleveland like you made that up. I don't know. I may um, have. Yeah, honestly, I'm not sure. A lot of information coming in and out of here, so maybe. I don't know. But then I, I saw I think it was on Hard Knocks, they they profiled it. Bacon this dude. I the only thing I remember from that hard knocks was Brad Paisley showing up mm -hmm. and yeah. saying, Hey, go win one for the gift. He got in the R V, right? He did. Yeah. That was when Bacon got the R V outside yep. for yeah. the quarterback. And then there was that dude with the rocks and his dad. And yeah. his dad Kajus. 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 Yeah, his dad whistled really loud to, so he could find him. You're right. You're, You're right. right. That, yeah, it's the only that, thing. That Brown's hard knocks was funny. Then um <laughs> well, one dude was playing drums, like getting drum lessons, I think, during camp. Or mm. they were like they were really active during training camp, which I don't I don't ever remember myself being or any of my teammates going out and like, <laughs> hey, we got a, we got forty five minutes free. I'm gonna jet out and go look at fish tanks for an hour. Like I don't know, I don't yeah. remember doing that. Is that do that? I didn't. No. Hugh Jackson and Todd Haley almost got in a fist fight in one of the episodes. Yeah, staff meeting. Yep. That that oh my gosh, that was a great season of Hard Knocks because we got to see the one of the early staff meetings. I remember Hugh, you got mad like once when you guys are in this seat. Yeah. Let oh me yeah. Know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's I've seen whole situations where people like diagnose that. I'm like, well, proper leadership and how do you run meetings? Like all of that. Well, and they had the number one overall pick too, so like that was another huge draw. Like mm -hmm. none of the you know rookie quarterbacks are not none of them, but I think most of the rookie quarterbacks can't be on Hard Knocks. Really? This year, because it's also first-year head coaches. Oh, okay. So like, what, are the, will, what are the stipulations to why, when you can't have hard knocks? Can't have a first-year head coach, I if thought. You can't it. have went to the playoffs yeah, previous the playoffs year. Oh, okay. That's it? They could ask you to do it, and you could say, yeah. Yeah, they can force you. They can force you? Like or not you, force you. They can, they, can, they can force you if you if you didn't go to the playoffs and you don't have a first-year head coach. Yeah. They could definitely yeah. make you do it, right? They should have the Packers do it. The Packers yeah. would be perfect this year. That's exactly because the Packers be. never have any access nope. like that. You're right. They, I bet they're trying. And, and they, why not, you know, just gas up Jordan Love and yes. kind of this yeah. new era of the Packers, like LaFleur too, you know, like he seems affable. People like him. Like it, it, it makes a really lot of sense. They can really turn people around. They can make it a positive thing, I think. For yeah. sure. Like it should be the Packers or the Jets. Like oh, they, they really should. Because the, be pa the, the Packers would be awesome just because it's the whole new era. And, you know, that's a ma yep. that's a team who could be really good if Jordan Love is good. And then the Jets obviously would be awesome because is of that, the is that because Rodgers. Is this the four possible teams? Why can't Green Bay go in there? They may have said no. Well, I mean, of course they could say no. I, that's the thing. Like, I, Green Bay would be awesome, I think, because it just seems like such a not a Green Bay thing. Oh, because they're in the playoffs. To have. Uh, is this just a recommendation or where is this from? Oh, those are the rules. That is the right only there. four options that could uh, be on hard. Oh, past have, two seasons. Okay, so they made the playoffs two years. You ago. can't have it if you. They have a first year head coach in place. They have a playoff berth in the past two. Okay, and if they've been on hard knocks in the past ten, so which a lot options? of teams have doubled up. They could have they? Commanders. Yeah, a lot of them. Like when were the Jets on with Rex? Was that over ten years ago? Probably. Yeah, yeah. in two thousand nine. Was it? Yeah, two thousand ten. Yeah, when was Rex gone as a coach in the, the, with the Jets? It should, just, it should just be the Jets. 2013. It, it, it has should to be the Jets. Absolutely. With, you see how jacked Bob Sala is mm -hmm. to yeah. the head coach? They have mm -hmm. some characters, too. Jeff Ulbricht, their D coordinator, is a character. You could show him deadlifting yeah. 850 pounds for 10 in between practice. Commanders. Nate Hackett's new goatee. Yeah. He do, doesn't even look like the same guy. It's like right? a, He's got like a black goatee. It's like, is it long? <laughs> is it kind of long hanging on? He looks like a pirate. He does a little bit. Well, his hair might be black, right? He has a shaved head, doesn't he's, he? Uh, I think he's yeah. bald. He, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. So if we he's don't know. Picking it, he might be. That's what I'm saying. Like his his hair just might be black. It's like a, a jet black. Yeah. yeah. What's wrong? Jet with black. Sweet. Yeah. Awesome. It you're looks saying? sweet. Yes. Yeah. Why it not? does. What do you mean? I think it looks sweet. What I the I picture I saw, I wasn't sure it was Nate Hackett though for a while. Me neither. Also, yeah. Evie, I don't know if you have this. There's been some some slander going in my direction of a monument somewhere of this <laughs> this face of a, a thing that got carved into the side of a mountain somewhere. Yep. Mm -hmm. We need to get some uh we need to get really nailed down and see exactly who this person might be. It's unbelievable. And who they think it looks like somebody on the show. This was added in our group chat. It's on I, mean, I, just, I said I'd ask I don't know. I'm not sure who they think this person exact might be. Exact replica of you. I was well, AJ, can you look up? Let me see. Where am I? Yeah, what are you, what are you well, yeah. I mean, it, it is you. I'm not going to lie. The nose is exactly I'm the not, same. Yeah. I, the, the second I saw it, I thought it was me for a minute. Yeah. I was like, oh, what is that? Some like, picture they took from a long ways away? I mean, who this is? Uh, who is it again? Stonehenge. Nope. No. Stonehenge this doesn't have The back of Mount Rushmore. No, who is this? This is a monument of. It's in South Dakota, though. Someone sent it in early. Who carved it? Oh, it is Crazy Horse or something. I think they said Crazy Horse. Yeah, there it is. Oh, which way should I turn? Uh, no, other, other way. way. No, look like just straight. This what? Yeah, maybe just tilt your chin up a little. Yeah, there it is. I mean, I can't tell which side is which. It's, it's crazy. A, it's a dead ringer. Yeah. 
It really is shocking. Good for you, AJ. Yeah. I appreciate it. I don't know if this yeah. is a family member of mine that, that carved my face into this mountain or what, but I, I do appreciate it. Hawk Mountain. Can you walk on the head up there? I it see looks like it. I would assume so. It looks like it. How do we not know about this? Like, how long has this yeah, been? Yeah, Crazy Horse. He was a Native American. Uh, of the, He was the leader of the Lakota people. Yeah, sorry about it. Are you Native American? I could be. Okay. No, but I, in my in my region, in where I grew up, there's a lot of that. Like where he I used to go watch of, reenactments. He was in the battle of, of Little Bighorn. So, whoa, that was a big one. That was a big one. Did he? Did he? How win? long? When was this carved? Do we know when this monument was done? Uh, carved slash what you use dynamite? How do you do this? Like that looks that detail is no, impressive. No, they use yeah. the best power equipment you can find. If you can see in the lower left there, you see uh, what what they're using. <laughs> I do see What's that. that? that deer? A, that is a deer that they're using to haul <laughs> equipment up and down this uh, this of mountain. Of course, you're right. That's a little John Deere Gator. It looks yep, like that's right. I mean, that must take what years to but do. What this? do you even like on that? It's so big. How in, do you, uh, so that's it. 1948. Uh, what is the, with the fencing up above? I think that's where the brain is. But are they trying to hold those rocks from falling or something? Could be. That'd make more sense. It's a beam of light that comes out of it or something. That's a, That would be so sweet. That'd it went all the way up to space. <laughs> that's a pretty tough spot to carve, too. Like, are you hanging off the side of that deal? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So many people died while they did this. Yeah. 1948. Yeah, 1948. They did it for this guy. But, man, they man, lost a lot of good people. Beautiful mountain. It is very beautiful. That's in South Dakota? So is that where – have you guys – any of you ever been to Mount Rushmore? When no. I was very young. Did you like it? It's at a, I think it's the angle. Something about the angle. Yeah, the it, it really is the nose. I think Ty said it. The yeah. nose and the way the forehead looks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even though it doesn't it. look like his forehead kind of just stops, it's exactly the same. I take Impressive. it as a compliment. You should. I take it as an absolute compliment. Yeah, you should tell your kids that's you. I'm going to tell them. You should hey, go there this weekend. Cut, me, cut this clip for me. I need to send this to my kids. Let them know. Hey, you guys, you guys know this? You want to go on vacation out there next time? Mm -hmm. They'll be like, nope. Yeah, no, the, we don't. The details, unbelievable. That's not you and your kids looking at it right there. Yeah, that is not. Here. Yeah, that is not. Why is that are they you like, on the right? Is this a construction site? Why are they? What are we doing here? This was built in 1948. Right? We gotta maintain. Yeah. Yeah, they still have to make their edits. Is it a national historic like monument? Oh, for sure. Oh, 1948. It's 564 feet. Damn. It's a mountain monument under const under construction. Why? On privately held land in Black Hills it, yeah. in Custer County, South Dakota. Custer County. It will be detected. If you call the mo he actually answers, oh. I didn't know this was a Korzak <laughs> Zilakowski piece. Oh, Korzak did this? No yeah. wonder it's so good. I could, Yeah, I could tell by how the shading was. It was a Korzak piece yeah. for sure. Yep. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm, good. I'm glad we got to the bottom of that, Evie. Thank mm -hmm. you. That was put in our, our little show group chat. Call that area. number. He answers it like Omec and Hedges, uh, Legends of Hidden How's Temple. It What's it sound? Oh, oh. Is that how it goes? Yeah, that's how most rock formations put that, sound. <laughs> put that down. I'll make sure I'll make sure to call later today, Tone. Mm -hmm. What do you want to ask Shams today, Tone? Oh, I, we need to get to the bottom of, of the John Man situation. Are we going to talk about Zion? Yeah, I know you always like to ask him where Zion's at in his nah, recovery. Nah, kind of out on Zion, to be honest. Done with until, it? until he, you know, like plays more than like eight games in a season, I think I'm just going to take a back seat. I'm just going to let him enjoy the bumpus Hines down there in New Orleans and, and just, you know, enjoy his life. Mm -hmm. Where did Shams work before he was where he is now? Was he ever like at a different network? No. He, he just re-upped with Stadium and, and the athletic, the athletic and everything yeah. he does. Run yeah, it back. He's been there for a while yet. Run it back. Uh, the draft lottery is also tomorrow. Oh, that's so, right. So we see who's going to be the first. How many teams see. are available to get that number one pick? So I think it's the same as the NHL, but uh, the top four or five have the highest percentage. I think it's like 14%, uh, 14, yeah. 14, and then the fourth highest is like 12 or 12 and a half. I'm, I'm not sure the it used exact. to be a lot higher. They changed the percentages, right? Because yeah. of, to try to stop tanking. Stop tanking. So this yeah. is when you, like, the owner sends, like, their kid or whoever yeah. Yeah. to the thing. And exactly. You clap if you get the first pick. Bingo. Yeah, okay. there it is. So Pistons there have a chance, Foxy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Pistons tanked all year just to have a 14% chance to get <laughs> Wemby. So we'll see. I hope they get him. I guess the number two overall pick, Scoot Henderson, also yeah. very good. But, yeah, no. Wemby is the only thing that matters here. So yeah. that's a lock. One and two are pretty much already set, you're yes. saying? It sounds like it. Yeah, if, if feels and then it's the Alabama kid yeah. at three. Oh, okay. Yeah, that guy. Nice. Um, but no, nah, they'll they'll probably they'll probably rig it somehow. I mean, I assume it won't be as obvious as the, the NHL. NHL. NHL does it like behind the scenes somewhere else. Hey, we'll tell you the results. Yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. Let's go Bulls. Yeah. So really I yeah. think might go to the Mavs. I, I think the Mavs, I think the Spurs. Spurs is the Spurs one I'm might scared have of. Really Popovich. Good Popovich gonna be around? I think he retired. He's done, right? Wasn't this like his last year? Yeah, I thought he retired. But he didn't do a farewell tour Good like for Coach him. K? No, he didn't do all that. Oh, bullshit. that's weird. Why not? Where is Coach K? Is he uh, still doing he a podcast? He took a job with the NBA. 
Um, Doing what? Like an advisor or something like that. To a team? No, no, no. To like the entire NBA. To the league? I mean, he was the coach for Team USA. I saw so. it last week. Oh, yeah. He's got a couple gold medals, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. he's got a great relationship. With Bob Knight's still out there? Just, like living like on TV or anything? Is he doing yeah. any commentating? Yeah, he calls games on uh, ESPN still. Bob Knight. Yeah. Yeah. You what what, what yeah. do you think? He's like 90 years old. No, no he's not well, He's not out 90. there doing stuff. How would Dickie V? He's still doing games. Well, Dickie V's a different animal. Dickie yeah. V can't be stopped. Coach K was named special advisor to basketball operations last week. For the whole NBA? Yeah. That would probably garner a nice salary. I oh, assume. yeah. Turns out he didn't like being home very much. <laughs> NBA is booming. What? He was sick and tired of that dog. Yeah. John Shire got him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for getting me this thing, prick. John, what was uh, Duke had a good year? Yeah. North no, Carolina, who struggled mightily, right? Yeah. They, didn't they, make were, the they were number one preseason, didn't make the tournament. Uh, didn't make the or didn't go to the NIT, right? Right. No. Duke got knocked out. Duke, very good end of the season, then got knocked out early in the tournament. Yeah. Their yeah. big man is also supposed to be a lottery pick. In, Duke's? In, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. In the draft. How's the old buddy doing? Um, I went and watched him play when Ohio State played Duke. Eric Oden? Uh, a couple years ago, no, they're you know they're number one pick or Philip Philipowski. No, the guy from Duke a couple years ago. I don't. I forget the team he went to now. Even JJ Red Paolo, Paolo. He's in Orlando. Oh, oh, oh Banquero. Banquero. very yes. good. How'd he do? He won Rookie good. of the Year. Yeah. That's why I thought. Okay, good. I thought he was killing it. Yeah, he he was unbelievable. He was fun year, to watch. Actually, yeah. I got to see him play in person one time, and I was like, okay, there's that dude. There's something different about that dude. And I didn't know anything about anyone on either team, mm-hmm. but I was trying to figure out. I just assumed everybody was going to the NBA, but then they're like, no, that kid's. He could easily be a number one pick. Yeah, he had a great year. The only kid that really didn't play was Chet Holmgren. He was out the entire year because he hurt his foot in one of those summer leagues. His dad was filming with a camcorder. Yeah, exactly. Ponytail. Oh, man. Yeah, so there's there's been videos of him. He bulked up a little bit. They're they're thinking that he... Where's he at now? Oklahoma City. Gotcha. That's the worry about Wemby is we need to... These tall, skinny people, we need to... Maybe cut their feet off and put normal people's feet on them. Yes. Why? Because they always hurt their feet. Because yeah. they step on a rock so wrong big. and break every bone in their foot. They mm-hmm. need to pack some muscle on, is what you need to do. Can you know it's so difficult with foot? how long you are. Well, and that's the thing about Wembyana, is yeah. that he actually isn't just like a bean pole. He's got a little muscle to him. Yeah, yeah. he does look good. He, where's he from again? France. France. Which and is France. guaranteed for a long time now. They've been saying this guy is the oh, guy. Oh, yeah. For he yeah. is the guy. And, and well, Giannis been pumping him up for years? Yeah, for like two, three years. And then, yeah, Giannis said on Serge Ibaka's podcast, like, hey, I know he was saying to Serge, I know you want to play for a couple more years, you know, but there's this kid, Victor Wembyana, and he's coming over. And if you're not ready, you better get ready because if he stays healthy, this kid is going to change the NBA. Hmm. That's what Giannis said. And Giannis mm-hmm. is kind of. Not, yeah. How, yeah, like how he, tall is this dude? He's like seven three. Seven, can he bring the ball up and everything? Oh, yeah. Is he doing that? Step, oh, yeah. yeah. Step back threes. Yep. He can dribble. How does any kid ever have a dream of playing in the NBA when you have guys like this out there that are seven sure. three and can play point guard? Good question. Yeah. Like, how could you be like, well, if I get really lucky and I grow to be six five, maybe, mm-hmm. which is not tall for the NBA, and I have unbelievable skills in everything I do. How can you compete like with any of this? Yeah, you can't. Not, you can't. You're right, Ty. You honestly, you can't. <laughs> yeah, like, they're not the same player, but like Chet Holmgren is seven feet, and he can yeah. do all those things too. That's so. what I'm saying. Like, every, there's no like positions anymore. You have to be able to do everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, I even mean, watch Draymond come. Draymond will dribble seventeen thousand miles an hour, leading the break all mm-hmm. the time and dish and everything. Yeah, yeah, maybe, but. It's still impressive. Like back in the day, guys are six ten, whatever. Usually aren't doing that. Well, even like two thousand, like there isn't. You could, probably Giannis is the only one comparable to Shaq. Like there will never be another Shaq because that like seven two big guy that needs the ball in the post. Like they don't really do that on offense in the NBA anymore. Like even Yoke. Yeah, does anyone do that where they hey post him up? Let's get the ball to him and consistently yeah. over and over. And beat and beat and beat for sure. But Luka he still hits Garza a bunch of shots like from the outside. The other. Luka Garza, uh, he's trying to bring back kind of Luka bully Garza. ball. <laughs> yeah, and that is the thing is he's incredibly skilled from the three point line as well. <laughs> yeah. Can knock down eighteen footers. No, Embiid's probably the, but even he'll he like posts up at like foul line extended yeah. and like goes to work there. And he shoots threes. And Jokic also completely different player. He's not just a center. He can, Definitely not. He can operate anywhere on the floor. Like they're really really isn't that kind of old school yeah. big man to your point. So yeah, if you're a big man, hey, learn how to yeah. dribble, learn how to run the point, learn how to do everything, and you have to make threes no matter what position you play. Last. Last. Also, uh, there is one old school big guy, but everyone in the NBA hates him. That's Rudy Gobert. So oh, maybe, you're right. Yeah, he is. The he doesn't have much in an offensive game, though. No. He should. They pay the last great one was probably Tyler Hansbrough. Yeah, he's most likely there. here. Yeah, he's up there. there. We see Troy Vincent Sr. here. We got breaking news, I guess, popped up a tweet a little bit ago, right? Zeke, how long was this? 
Oh, uh, he tweeted like like at forty two, so like eight. Oh, ten so minutes thanks ago. for oh, okay. watching the show. Eight ten minutes at the prospects breakfast before the draft, Anthony exhibited a heartfelt act of kindness, humility, and service. This carried me through the day, and by midnight, it just had to be shared with the club because film cannot measure this depth of character. Wow! So we nailed it. So Troy Vincent couldn't stop thinking about it. Prospects Richardson. breakfast is that? What it was? Yep. Because we've been really trying See, to nail down exactly what this event <laughs> was. Right? People were just fucking throwing eggs and shit yeah. all over the place. <laughs> 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 For real, what are you guys doing at this yeah, breakfast? Throwing uh, rolls. Like Jalen Carter. Rolls. Food fuck. Because I wonder if like, yeah, they start chucking food. Is there a chance that? They thought it was like a restaurant and that they bust your table for you and they just left? Probably. Is that what it is? might have been onto something. They might have had hash browns. They might have been putting ketchup, ketchup packets on the ground and just fucking <laughs> yeah. squirting them I everywhere. That, you might be right, happen. man. Yeah, How especially long did it if take? Will Levis was there. Yeah. He might have just been eating so fucking hard that he just got <laughs> slammed on the table. Yeah. And just eating as fast as possible all the eggs he could, and then they just got everywhere. They could have had guys, like, dumping syrup all over the ground, too. Just a sticky mess everywhere. Why yeah. yeah. would they do anything? Yeah. <laughs> Banana peels on the ground. But they're kids, you know. They're that's young. What, yeah. That's what's that's, that's got millions that's of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. They might have been trying to give someone an awful waffle. Yeah. What, exa- what exactly is that, Nick? Hey, Jay, if you have to ask. You I do have to ask, honestly. Know. I assume it's something terrible. You take it out of your butt cheeks or something. Whoa, make it eat. What? Please, what is please. it? What the hell? I don't he know said what the it awful is. waffle. What you don't your, know either. No, right? I don't. Oh, okay, it's just good. a bad waffle. Doesn't you taste good. You watch Salute Your Shorts with Donkey Lips and Bobby Buttnick? Yeah, Jesus. I remember <laughs> Salute Your Shorts. I don't remember any specifics from this, the program, but yes, I get it. What did you do with an awful waffle, though? You never told me. I still don't know what it is. You got to tell us, Nick. Don't. If it's on Salute Your Shorts, I think we can say that was a Nickelodeon show, right? It was, but that was a different That's Nickelodeon. when they pushed the boundaries. Different era. Different era when All Nickelodeon right. was really pushing the boundaries. That was the Goosebumps era. That yeah, it was. was. Fucking Are best. you afraid of the dark? This wasn't Lumpkin. Oh, this is who was there. I that, that's just who was the draft. So I'm guessing that. Oh, we don't. I don't know if we we don't know who was there really at this breakfast. We can't be killing oh, who, okay. who could have technically oh, okay. possibly <laughs> been in the region. Yeah, there's draft picks eventually, supposedly there. Oh, who knows course. who was Keon there? Keon White and Christian, both of your guys were there, <laughs> oh, dumping you, syrup you, all over the ground. The gar star and right What if these guys there? are honestly getting people are like tweeting and they're getting a bunch of heat? Like, where were you guys? What are you like? You said you stepping on ketchup yeah. packets <laughs> and just squirting syrup all over for no reason. It's possible. Yeah. What if it, footage came out and they were they were just being would, hooligans, be just awesome. knocking, just be, taking bites of stuff and throwing it on the yeah. ground? That would be pretty funny, actually. And Anthony Richards like trying to stop everyone. He's got like egg hanging from his ear. He's all frustrated. This is and then someone just hums an apple at his face. He's not he cold. Catches it, maybe. <laughs> That'd be sweet. I mean, we can't slander these guys. We don't know what. No, we don't know. No. It could easily been a restaurant where they thought it was. You had to. It was where you got to take your tray and throw it away yourself, like a Chipotle. Yeah. yeah. But these guys may have thought, "Hey, I thought these." Someone said, "Hey, do leave your stuff there. We'll get it." Mm-hmm. How we, bad do you feel when you go to those restaurants and like they tell you to leave your shit there? It is weird, isn't right. it? And it's just like, no, no, no we got, we got yeah. it. Like, well, yeah, but it's if the trash is right. I'll just put it right there, right? Yeah, I don't know. Or you probably, if you go to Chipotle, I bet you throw away your baskets, don't you, and your other no. the things you're not oh, supposed to throw away. You throw away your basket. You probably, you probably don't like pay enough attention. No, no, no. no. So, See, so it sounds pool. like you do every You time. leave your, the old classic thing is people that leave the grocery cart, you don't put it in the thing. That's cool. That drives me nuts. I, I, I did that, and then I didn't realize that it was a big deal, and it I've is. done it for the past few years, Tony, okay? It was like So COVID. you should just leave your cart wherever your car was, basically? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, all right, see you later. Can't do it. They say that's the most basic of all operations to tell if someone's a good person or not. Really? Yes. And that's why I've changed my way. Good ways. for you. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I, I, I didn't even know. Change. I had a friend who worked in the business, and they're like, no, it's fine. I get to spend more time outside. I'd rather <laughs> do that than have to just go out and then come back in. I was like, okay, good to know. So from personal experience, you said, hey, they want these things strewn about everywhere. That was my <laughs> that was my, tro- my truth. Was oh, that, that is your truth. They would rather like hang out out there, have a little break, just Why kind of chill. I think cigarettes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. But they smoke more butts out there. Yeah, and they never flick them on the ground. Well, because that's littering. They could get a full head of steam and just send the shopping cart all the way to the end of the, uh, <laughs> the, the, end of the parking lot. Yeah. Lot. yeah. Yep. It's so easy to put it in because you can do that where you, if you see the old thing, the old corral, the cart corral, yep. you could go and you can still. Oh, I mean, I've, I've oh, thrown oh. angled shots from 60 yards Sweet. away before, oh, yes. you know, and it gets yeah. in there, and then you feel so good. Well, I always thought everyone, like, that's the goal. When you go to the grocery store, like, you park right next to the cart corral yes. so you can yes. put your shit away and then yeah. just slam it in there. It's yes. already you <laughs> That's what I do now. That's yeah. exactly it, what I do with the old cart corral. Yes, huh? I park right. If I go to Target or maybe Walmart, sure. I will. I, guess I don't really put, I don't think that far in the head. I always put my cart back, but now I need to park by the old corral. Every yeah. time. That's all I think and about. And sometimes if there's not a parking spot there, I'll fucking just 
la- take a couple laps. Mm-hmm. I'll go laps for 10, 15 minutes <laughs> yep. until it opens up. Play a couple more songs. Seems yep. efficient. Mm-hmm. Seems pretty it efficient. is. Yeah, it is. No, that's the way to do it now. I mean, if you're doing it, <laughs> they any think other you're way. some creeper, pedophile, and security stops. No, sir. I'm just, I'm just waiting for that spot right next to cart ground number one to open up. <laughs> Bingo. I'm exactly. taking that sucker out. So when I get done here, I can just pop this thing in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's genius. But, you, sir, but you wasted 25 minutes circling the drive, the whole. See, I don't mean by place. being far away because then you could. You could run and then fucking jump. Jump, on, yeah. You got to run. Don't wait a tip though. Make sure no, you no, don't no, tip. No. You gotta, yeah, you can lean forward. Yeah, it's fun. Johnny Knoxville and Brad Pitt didn't they do that? He used to throw themselves down. Um, Bradley Pitt did that. Yeah, Brad Pitt put like a gorilla yeah. costume on. He put a mask on and was running around. They were throwing people through shopping. Oh yeah, were they the, the movie same Brad Pitt? What? I think there's only one Brad Pitt. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Brad's not even his real name. It's not. No, it's Bradley. Now William, his real name's Bill Pitt. Yeah, is it really? Yeah. That would've, you should have stuck with that. But he's from know. Missouri. He is from Missouri. Yep. Really? Yeah. Probably, That's Midwest, right? Probably a big Shane Ray guy. You think? Yeah. Shane Ray's back in the league, Conrad. Mm-hmm. He is back in the league. Shane Ray. So who signed him right now? The who Buffalo Bills. Bills. Buffalo Bills signed Shane Ray. He's been out of the league for almost five years. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Twenty nineteen. What pick was he? Ooh, first, first round. round. First rounder. Yep. SEC. Has he been player playing player. other play? If you look at no. it, there's a picture of him. On Instagram, this dude is, he's properly jocked. As properly like to say jocked. around here. Look at this dude's arms. I would sign him too, but he's been out five years. Has he, he's played in Canada before. Where was he, where did he last play football? He was jobbing tight ends uh, off the line up in Canada <laughs> yeah. for sure. I believe that was. The did last he do any XFL or USFL? Ooh, I don't know. The last NFL team he was with was Denver. When was that? 2019, I believe. Oh, my that's gosh. Drafted, so he's been right? out of the league that long. Yeah, he's been out of the league for a while. What's his sto- does he, Do we know anything about his story? Like, what's been going on? No. And what made him come back? This It's hard to get back into it, I feel like. I know. I wonder who – maybe he knew someone in the Bills, you know, it's probably going, I bet it's or? been a process for the last year or so. They're probably someone yeah. kicking the tires. Hey, what are you thinking about? He's, and he's probably working out, feeling good. Maybe yeah. it was Vaughn. I was just going to say. Could have been. Could have been. Perfect place yeah. for him to go. In Denver. Vaughn. Yeah. They know That's a great story. Denver. If he makes the team and he catches on and has a nice role this year and makes plays, how cool would that be? Well, yeah. to Nick's point, if Von Miller, the GM, kind of made this move, hey, Shane. Is Ray, this Vaughn's first move as a GM? Could be. It feels like it's very Vaughn possible. needs it to work out, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he can show him the ropes again. Show him the way to, you know, continue to be an NFLer. What year? Okay. How many years after Vaughn retires do you think he's already gets a GM job? Like, does he have to mm. wait? Or can he go straight from playing? Boom, I'm a GM. Five? Next year. Five years? What did what is like Quessy? Quasi Adolfo oh, Mensa, because yeah. he is a Ooh. he's a former player, right? Did he go right into it? I don't know if he got. I, don't, I think what he's had other want, positions in the front office. Wouldn't you want Vaughn right away? So his connection with players, May, that would help at, at, at least an assistant GM for right? player. The connection with players is big, but GMs it's connections with other GMs and other teams and owners and coaches and scouts that you can work. There's assistant GMs, no people. Yeah. Bots. Yeah, yeah, you would assume he would have to have another yeah, run office job, like for a couple years. But no team. That's more gonna... unlikely. It's more unlikely to have a player go direct from playing to GM than playing to coaching. I would Correct. imagine. As yeah. a head coach. Agreed. And I know Jeff Saturday got hired. How long was John Lynch? John Lynch was a, a few oh, years, right? Yeah, he he did TV. John Lynch. Yeah, he did say. Fox for four he or five years. He was the number right? one guy on Fox. Yeah, he was. Yeah, and then he went to the front office, or do you go right to GM? Like right Mayo? to GM, I believe. Okay, so yeah. there there is. I think he would only left for the GM job. It's the same thing with Mayock. Like, yeah. I think they're not going to leave to go be director of pro personnel. Yeah, no. Unless you really, that's your goal and you're just doing TV to get there. Like Dan Orshlovsky, he's going to eventually be a head coach, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Seems like it, sooner I, rather than later. Said he talked to a couple teams, what was it, two years ago about an OC gig? And then and I teams reached out to him. Last that Every year he's talking, too. right? Yeah. He's yeah. smart. He's smart because he's keeping his options open for ESPN and all of his networking gigs, and he's also letting him know, hey, you know, I might be take off and go be a GM or a coach soon, so – Pay me more money. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's genius. It's like with John Gruden, Monday Night Football for that many years. That's right. Yeah. And then he gets hired. I don't know what he's doing he right now, fired. though. I don't know what's going on right now yeah, with Gruden and all that situation. But we will have Sham Sharania coming up in, in about five minutes, boys. We're going to okay. take a quick break, go to the bathroom, do whatever you need. Shams will be on around 2.15, I'm hearing in my ear now. Okay. So okay. what that okay. means is Shams is dealing with some heavy-duty stuff. I bet Sounds there's some like NBA it. action. Some news. Some stuff happens. Ooh. So Shams yep. will have some unbelievable stuff for Draw. us whenever he comes on at 2.15. We're going to take a quick break. Let's take five, everybody. We'll see you then. Take five. 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 Joining us now is a man who might be the largest celebrity in the history of Earth. And a bunch of motherfuckers don't say, holy shit. 
that's Shaquille O'Neal. Mm. That has been his life for probably the last 30, 35 years. He's handled it perfectly. This man is a mastermind whenever it comes to business. Obviously on the court, he's the most dominant player of all time in the history of basketball. Four-time champion of the world, Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. 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 Hello, is Pac-Man there? Hell yeah. <laughs> What's up? Pac-Man, you know the uh, statue of uh, limitations is up. I can tell the story now. Can I tell it? Yeah, you can tell the story now. Hell yeah, Shaq. Welcome to the show. Thank <laughs> yeah. you, Pac. This is great news. Okay, so remember when uh, Pac-Man had that altercation in the uh, airport? <laughs> He was really sticking up for me. Pat, I just want to say thank you for always being my bodyguard. And you whooped that dude ass because he was disrespecting me. And nobody knows this story, but I, I appreciate you very much. I appreciate you. you. I, I, I've been keeping this secret. I ain't want everybody to know our business. Yeah. Hold on. This is Atlanta Airport chicken in hand. Motherfucker. That fight that we Popeyes. both Popeyes. Yes. That, yes. That was the stick up for Shaq? Yes. Yes. What do you say, Shaq? Guy said something to you? What happened? I don't know. Pat, man, just say, hey, man, you don't talk to Shaq like that. And I just had to get on my plane. And next thing I know, Pac-Man put them paws on me. <laughs> <laughs> You've sold printers. What? Pizza. What? Icy Hot. What? Insurance with a cartoon. Yep. What? Yep. I mean, you're you have a prolific Rolodex of business. When did you know that was going to be the case? Because it's inspiring to all of us. I want to let you know that. I didn't hear what you say. Could you repeat all the all the stuff that I sell for? <laughs> I think there's like 10 more, too. I don't think I listed off all of them. No, no, do, uh, go ahead. One more time. I think it was printers. What? what? Pizza. What? I think there's insurance with a cartoon. What? Now there's Novex Biotech GF9. You are a business savant, though. The shoes, obviously, we've all heard all the stories of, oh, your shoes are too expensive. Then you buy into company and say, fuck it, we're going short. When was that like a focus for you, and how did you know that was a gift? 18 years old, I meet Magic Johnson, and he tells me, it's OK to be famous, but at some point, you want to start learning about business. First thing I bought was the dummy's guide to starting your own business. It intrigued me a little bit, and I said to myself, OK, I want to want to be the only big man that's doing that. But in order to you know, be, be successful in that world, I had to be successful in the other world. So I really had to dominate and really had to win. And are you a supermodel? Because you have the sexiest <laughs> jaw. Hell yeah. That's real, Shaq. He, he, he's on his GF9, but the other stuff, I think. <laughs> you had a quote uh, you said in an interview years ago. You said, like, my thought process begins where normal humans apexes. And I just want to say, did you come up with that on the spot? Do you still say it? Because I actually steal it and use it in real life still sometimes. I always give you credit for it. Another confession is I wasn't really born. I was found on the train. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people think I'm an alien. And a lot of times these thoughts just come to me. I'll just go outside and these thoughts just come to me. I realized that in order to be the best or to be perceived as the best, you have to have forward thinking. So I just, you know, growing up in a drill sergeant environment, my dad wasn't satisfied with good enough. Enough. We had to be damn near perfect. So whenever I score 30 points and, you know, somebody said, oh, he had a dominant game. I said, no, you missed 12 free throws. You should have had 42 points. You should have did this. You should have did that. I was always trying to, you know, better myself. When did you right, know Kobe right, was yeah. a dude? Was it like immediately upon seeing him? You're like, oh, this is a guy? Right away. I knew that uh, he wanted to be great. I knew that he was very passionate about the game. And I knew that if something was done he didn't like, he would voice his opinion. Kind of reminds me of Pac-Man. Pac-Man and I have the same relationship. We haven't always seen eye to eye but the respect is there. Like, hey, Pac-Man, you shouldn't do that. Motherfucker, don't call me in it. You're right. So, you know, Pac-Man's Pac my little brother. I'm his older brother. You know, I think the respect factor is way more important than the I like you, I love you factor. You know, we've had many conversations. I love Pac-Man. He loves me. And I love Kobe. You know, we had a lot of disagreements, but if I had it all over to do again, I'd probably do it the same way because he pushed me and I pushed him and, and the respect was there. You know, people always say, oh, well, you didn't like each other. We didn't like each other. If you go back to the first championship, $15,000 people in the arena, about a hundred people on the floor. I put my hand up. Who's the first person jumping my arm? Look at it. Look it up. You don't have to be all lovey-dovey all the time. You just have to have, have, you know, have respect. The last question here is you get back to your rehab. Connor has it for you. Yeah, Shaq, speaking of that, a lot of times... No, no. I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to the dude in the fucking cowboy hat. He ain't such a dog. <laughs> Tone Diggs. He, he has a gambling yeah, yeah. show every day he's preparing for right now. Tone loves you, too. Shaq, I appreciate uh -huh. that. You guys are on the set, we just talked about the show. You ever say anything just to see if you get earned off of his game? I don't like that question. Back to the other one. Right, cool. Connor is, uh, he's uh, got cool. the other hat. Awesome. No, I, actually, I, actually, you know what? You guys may think Charles and I are the funniest. Ernie Johnson is the funniest guy on the set.
something from Brock. And we man back in the ring. He's stalking Sammy. Listen to this place. Oh, to the kneecap. We man so angry. Probably still play safety, but we did see something today. Yeah, I don't know mm -hmm. if he could still play oh safety just because, you know, I, I happened to catch a pass against him. What? Well, you did? Whoa, it was I, not a mouse. I did. I had to reach over him a little and snag it out of his hand. Do we have a video? <laughs> you just caught a ball on Adam Pac-Man Jones. How, how do you feel, Connor? Pretty good. Uh, looking back on it now, probably should have been the sixth overall pick in the 2006 NFL draft, but you know, that was him and I caught a pass on him. So I'm shaking. I mean, I, I, I can't believe that just happened. Pack a man who has obviously never really played a sport competitively past high school, just caught a ball on you. Your thoughts? Fake moss. Now that it's 1-1, one, one, we'll stop it. Somebody got to win. Hey. Why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck? Oh! AJ, okay. oh, yeah! <laughs> Shut the fuck up! Welcome back to Hour 3 of the Pat McAfee Show. I'm AJ Hawk. Sitting in for Pat today. As he is at home with his nice little baby Mackenzie and his wife Sam. Sports have been talked about for the last couple hours, boys. We have uh, Sham Sharani will be joining us here in a little bit. I don't know, five ten minutes. We'll see what Sham has sure. to do. I know he's maybe he's he's digging into the old John ja Morant situation a little yeah. bit more. Oh, yeah. You think he is? Yeah, oh, he's 100%. working the phones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm thinking he is. Probably is he? thinking yeah. he is. Okay, yeah. really. Really? Yeah. Diggs. yeah. What do you think is gonna happen, Diggs? What, what's gonna? How is this whole thing play out with all your guys' yeah. your fake enthusiasm? Please yeah. tell me. Whoa. I'm thinking something's yeah. gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is this your Canadian accent? Diggs? No. Oh. <laughs> Tim Robinson. Who? We'll, we'll show you his videos. Later. Oh, please. Do. I think you should leave. He's a. Uh, I don't know if I know what you're talking about. He's a very, very funny man. You would enjoy uh, them a lot. What's but his name? Tim, Tim Robinson. Robinson. Oh, Tim Robbins. He's in the movies. Nope. No. No. Son. Tim, Tim Robinson. Robinson. Okay. The admiral. Is. The admiral. You no. wore his mask David on Robinson. Halloween. Not Andy Dufresne. <laughs> what Halloween mask? I don't know who that mask was I wore on Halloween. That was him? Yeah, that mask was wild. Oh, no, cool. it, he's just a comedian, funny guy. Oh, good. That's one of, from yeah. one of his He used skits. to be a writer on SNL. Your face you made out there. He just did a Mad Mel face when he said that to me. Like, yeah, it looked like know. Mad Mel with his, his teeth and everything that you do. We know you study him very close. What were you saying, Tone, about Jaw? I, I guess, so I, I don't know the bylaws of the CBA and the NBA. Mm-hmm. So I don't know exactly. Collective but, bargaining agreement, CBA. For but unless it's know. in there that says like, hey, you can't own one or have one on camera or something like. Oh, well, that'll that does it. There's a section of in the CBA between the NBA and NBA nice. Players Association, which says that players are not permitted to have guns, or deadly weapons whenever a player is traveling on any oh. NBA related business, whether on behalf of the player's team, the NBA or league related entity. So, yeah, this is not against the rules then. So then they can't do He it. was on his free time in the offseason in a car with his buddy. Yeah, but mm -hmm. did the car have like a Grizzlies bumper sticker on it? Because they could Does argue. Where they what? go in the, so I hope, the interior I was hope blue. John's buddy didn't have a Grizzlies bumper sticker on they his might. car. The interior was blue. You kind of look like Grizzlies if he blue. Had like, what if he had like a personalized like stitching or something that had the Memphis logo in the headrest? Yeah. Then Is that a team situation? So you can't have a gun. You could argue. And is it really just a bigger deal because it's John Morant? It's not just every single player. That well, it's, pre it's because of the previous yeah second situation, offense, right? Second offense that is the biggest problem, thing. right? Okay, I, he didn't learn his lesson. Well, and I, like we're saying, I'm saying second offense, but like again, he did not. He, it's second, not against the. It's not against the law. Second questionable decision, I guess we could say, right? Sure. Yeah. In a in a very short period of time. Second, why are you doing this? You don't have to do this decision. Well, obviously, I feel like he's doing it because he's uh, like like anybody else does anything. You're pissed at what? The, why? Hey, no, I disagree that they can tell me to shut up or not do this, so I'm going to do it again. I just think he's young. He doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. Yep. He's 100%. just listening to some banging ass tunes, going mm -hmm. fast in his car, and he's got that thing on him, and he wants to, you know, swing it's it around a little thing. bit. Yeah, I didn't yeah. make the best decisions at 23 either. Nobody did, did they? No. no. Uh, 
I mean, stuff happens. What? What, what do you mean, Con? I was gonna say I was still in college. I was, you know, I, I, people do those <laughs> stupid things all the time. But it's just jaw. Is this come dominating on. the headlines for all the shows this morning? Yeah. I can see through the screen here. It was yeah, Thunderdome. Yeah, I can see Jaw. They have a list of events mm-hmm. going back to March fourth, whenever all this situation. Yeah, happened. it was Tatum uh, fifty one and Jaw. That, that was kind of the two main things. And I also did see from Stephen A. And this is just a quote on Twitter of what he said. Uh, but Stephen A. said he's been hearing from you know people around the league in the league that they think he should get a year suspension. Wow. Jeez, what? Louise. Yep. I, Mike Wilbon is saying he. I saw the clip where well. he said his son isn't going to be. He's not going to let his son wear the shoes. Yep, can't the Josh shoes. shoes. No, mm-hmm. how old his family is his son? does not support those shoes. How old is his son? Uh, I think like twenty eight. Oh, <laughs> no, just, good I'm parenting. Not, I'm I tell not you sure. What, I hope my kids are listening to me when I'm 28. <laughs> yeah. I hope I can dictate their shoe wear, <laughs> their not, shoe choice. I'm not positive how old he is, but you got to assume that there are multiple people out there. There are, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But there's also a lot of people that don't know this even happened, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think, like, my dad watches the NBA. Yeah, he, he might, because he actually follows, he, like, he gets information off Twitter. He doesn't tweet, but he, he knows. He He's on there. It's like everything. It congregates everything in one spot. Yeah. It's like what you do on Twitter. Yeah, I read, that's how I get your news, uh, up-to-date news. Mm-hmm. But I don't think, it, yeah, I don't know. I guess it's a big deal. If you follow the NBA at all, you definitely Maybe we all just need to take a breath. Because the kids, I know a lot of kids, I know a ton of kids, actually, who jaw is their favorite player. That's why this will be mm-hmm. interesting this to see how it plays awesome. out. Yeah, Explosive. I know multiple of my, my buddies' friends and my, my kids' friends. Cool hair. Funny. Um, my kids love jaw. Arming. Arming. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're, but like what you're saying but is they exactly didn't know. why. His first time he got in trouble, but my two older kids were like, what? Is Ja, ja got suspended? What happened, Dad? What's he doing? I was like, I don't know. Something with a gun. I'm not sure. Well, if like, you're under know. like a teen, like you're probably not watching like first take and no. like, you know, Never. Say, like, oh my God, Ja had a gun? Like, Never. I, I can't Jeez. support this guy anymore. Like, <laughs> you don't care. You're seeing <laughs> clips on TikTok of him dunking yeah, and shit like exactly. that. Like, That's oh, what all the kids This see. guy's awesome. Yeah. I, I love watching this guy. The thing that grinds my gears the most about it is you know that's all we're talking about today and we're taking headlines away from stoner jackie aces sure. mm-hmm. making it to the western conference finals of the nhl stanley cup playoffs that's right it's a big deal right tell people so the vegas, the vegas, deal. vegas golden knights best barn in, in the in nhl the yep, best barn. None. Yeah, that's right we've seen they do they make it look like an aquarium on the ice uh-huh. with sharks flying around right we know who sounded the, sound the siren uh, last oh. game. do we know who uh, i think they're gonna go back and deliberate a little bit i do not know who's sounding the siren yet um but i it, l- listen there will be no expenses spared i can guarantee that well oh, what does that mean maybe maybe a carrot top chris angel duo maybe maybe chris angel's on top of carrot top shoulders okay. okay and they morph into one human exactly. using magic correct Oh. They flip him around, like stand up 69, yep. and they come down or he, from like, the rafters. picks up Carrot Top's head and like puts it on his own and like oh, takes his man. off and puts it on Carrot Top's They switch body. heads. Yeah. What if they switch heads? Then the Knights sweep. Then the Knights. They then might, Stoner's got to bring the cup here and we drink out of the cup again. I'm that hoping that that's already in the works if they win. I'm sure it is. It definitely Stoner is. Stoner knows how much But the, that's a big deal, though. Stoner's, Stoner, we thought he was out with that back injury, right? He was uh-huh. done, couldn't walk, and now... Here we go. He's leading his team into the finals. Well, fucking Marshall actually led the team. Yeah, Johnny Marshall with a you know natural hat trick last night in the second Dude. period. Um, natural, natural. Yes, no yeah. empty netter. So uh, all the big dogs are gone, huh? The well, old school names, I should say. I don't know the old school like history hockey. Yeah, guys. maybe. But the Golden Knights were the number one. We have two seed expansion in the teams Conference. right there on the, on the West. So side. are they a big dog? I don't know. Number yeah. one seed usually well, that's a pretty expansion big team, dog. right? They're both somewhat. Uh, yeah. if, if Seattle wins this game seven tonight, AJ Gary Bettman's going to be licking his chops. He's he got all it. his southern teams. He's got his expansion teams in the conference finals battling for the cup. He's going to eat that up. Hashtag grow the game. Hashtag grow the game. Yes, it is right. Game, How many baby. hockey teams are there? Thirty. Do we know? Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Just 32. like really? 32. okay, I didn't know that. How many do you think they want? They're going to eventually keep at fifty. Yeah, thirty-eight. No, they could definitely do two more. In the next couple of years, and not have it watered. I'm down sure they're much. looking, right? I'm sure they're looking. They're they're trying to figure that out. Oh, they're yeah. always looking. If you know the right yeah. opportunity were to present itself, there would be. Uh, I think. Uh, I think Gary would chomp at the bit. I'd say they're looking for another expansion team. Okay, and maybe yeah. somewhere in the Midwest. Yeah. Sweet, right? really? Maybe a city that's got a little sandpaper, a little grit, a little jam. Yeah. Oh, is there anywhere like that around here? I know. Oh, oh let places. me think. A little jam. Little yeah, grit. there are sandpaper. places. Places that don't take no crop. Do they fix their potholes in these places? 
No, they tried to fill them with jam and it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it might. And that kind of adds to the grit. Some the sandpaper, the jam. So for are the NHL players though, because they have this escrow account where they get paid in. I don't, I don't understand completely how it works, but depending on how the ratings are and like if big market teams, how the league makes money, they get checks back. Yeah, hockey this related is good, revenue. Right? It's called. But this isn't good for the players. I'm guessing that they aren't like Boston. There isn't Chicago or the big like markets aren't not there. New York is not in the final still. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Boston, uh, Brad Marchand actually has tweeted this about the Carolina Hurricanes. Right, Nick? That's what this was. Right. Yeah, he's taking a couple shots. What do you say? That like the whole reason they have to do this is because of places like Carolina and well, they Florida should've... because of the fact that they don't they don't really make as much money as a Chicago, a Boston, a Pittsburgh. Listen, there is 20,000 screaming Kaniacs at every game, brother. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, only in the playoffs, there are 20,000 screaming Kaniacs. Really? Uh, that's not true. The problem is there aren't 20,000 screaming Kaniacs across the nation in every city tuning in to watch those games. Oh. Well, they got. It had to be big for the league that they're on ESPN now, right? That had to be gigantic. Yeah, until they got bumped by uh, Sunday Night Baseball and – I heard something happen. Was that last night? It was a 9-1 score, I believe, and they missed the uh, first goal uh, first two. in the Edmonton on Kraken. And not Kraken, I mean Knights. So they stuck with what baseball game? It was a blowout? I yeah, I don't know what game it was, but it was Sunday Night Baseball. It was 9-1, to one, and then they eventually went to the old double box, and you could finally see the goal the first on the right-hand goal side of the screen. Yeah, I heard the first goal happened on the Jesus. double box, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was crop. I mean, Gary Bettman has got to be so upset. Well, yeah, especially when, I mean, Sunday Night Baseball has been fucking Braves Padres for the last eight weeks. So, you know, maybe good. we sh shuffle a few more teams in there. Has A-Rod been doing it? Uh, he, does, he does an alternate broadcast with Michael K. Is that Apple TV? Nice. No, it's on ESPN. Is Apple TV still doing their oh, yeah. thing? Yeah. That was a huge yeah. hit have, last the, year. They have like a Friday Night Showcase game. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who's doing those games? Um, mm. Two guys who, eh, you know, uh, I would say the, com uh. the commentating isn't the best part of it like the the alternate like angles and like the camera shots are they take. is that where they like interview players during the game though they do that in ESPN. that's cool oh they're doing it on espn okay. yeah because that's cool like well, old buddy a couple months ago caught a had made a sweet catch why he's being interviewed answering a question fucking chorble i don't know what was it chorble chorble Ooh. had a good one i do uh, remember a couple happened. guys it was fun like, oh, oh and you can hear him he's on his horse boom, boom makes a catch and then, the he mookie? Starts, then he throws i think it was mookie and yeah. then he throws and he's still talking to the guys like oh it was really cool mookie's actually. cool Baseball's figured it out though. The time thing's good, right? Yeah. Still, everyone's still a fan of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think so. Games are moving Wait, a lot quicker. What we'll about, find what, out here in a month. We forgot the, about old buddy, the crazy the pitcher who had old, had a substance Max on his hand. Scherzer. Yeah, Scherzer. He got ten games. I think so. Right. Is he or back? Ten days. He is, is he back? back? He Has he explained back. it? What happened? He didn't think he did anything wrong. What What was on his hand? Was it anything it on his was hand? Sweat, <laughs> rosin, and a little bit of jam, I believe. Mm -hmm. He was adamant though that oh, he yeah. didn't have oh, but yeah. to get ten games. Though, I think it like, was sweat and rosin. Right? Yeah, for a pitcher, ten games doesn't really mean shit. You just miss two, two stars. Rosin or pine tar though. Rosin. That's when the you bag mix, though. Yeah, when you bag. mix rosin with sweat, like you, you can. David Stinky. Cohen actually did like a pretty sweet oh, little really? demonstration. Like you can hold like the ball out oh. in your palm and like it won't drop. But like, if it, you're sweating, that should be legal. You pick up the rosin bag, right? That's legal. For sure, but they're saying guys will like go into the dugout and, and use like rosin in the dugout. Yeah, uh, buckets of sweat. Get a little bit on your palm or something, mm. so you can put a little on the ball. Mm -hmm. Maybe some blueberry jam. Blueberry yeah. jam. I would help. Reaching yep. into grundles to get sweat. I mean, yeah. Can you do? You just gotta step off the rubber. You gotta step off the mound. Yes. Like if you want to get the rosin bag, you gotta get off to the box. So step off under your belt. <laughs> reach under there. Yeah. Yep. Get you a good swipe. Yeah. Retuck your shirt back in, get back on the mountain. Yeah. They they throw a pitch and do that. that. I don't know if you're going to be able to do that with the new time clock they have on those it's guys. It's going to have to be quick, yeah. Guys going to be pitching with no pants on. They're cutting holes in their pockets. Savannah Bananas are. Are they? Yeah. Cutting holes? I believe so. Wait, here we go. Oh, yeah, there it is. Wait, so the, oh, this is David Cohn. He must have it on his fingers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, he put it on. So there. he did that, like, uh, was this on one of the shows? This is oh, yeah. on Sunday Night Baseball. That's pretty sweet. And so that's what they say he probably had on his palm. Mm -hmm. Couldn't he say, hey, I'm just a sweaty dude. I picked up the rosin bag. That's probably what he was yeah. saying, right? Probably. Like everybody else does in between pitches. Probably. probably the umpire maybe, you know, had had an axe to grind with him. We don't know. There's a chance. Man, Matt David Matt Cohn. David Cohn. Yeah. He, could, he could sling that rock. Yeah, Coney was an absolute stud. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yankees. Yankee legend, Met legend, Royals legend. Yeah, he's pitched for everybody. Mm-hmm. Now, Max Scherzer, though, that dude is an absolute madman. He's madman. Yes, he, oh, yeah. He's very fun to watch. Very mm -hmm. fun. Two yeah. colored, different eyes. Yep. Yeah, that's that's always it's always been an interesting thing to me. Yeah, I, don't I know animals that have that. But I don't know many humans. Dogs. Yeah, you know, know many humans that have no, that? Nope. No. He's the only one I know. Did he go to college somewhere? Do we know? Yes. I don't know his backstory. 
Yes, I can't remember where he went to. Can you imagine uh, that dude throwing gas in college at college players? Those metal bats. Yeah, no, thank you. Just he draw. Oh, it's like Steve former Strasburg, former Tigers legend. Yeah, big time yeah. legend. Yep. What about Verlander, how's he rolling? No, uh, not, he's still hurt. He get hurt. Yeah, they, they're on the Mets together, and they're not doing great together. Oh yeah, because the new owner came in and mm-hmm. brought them all in, right? Steve yeah. Cohen. Yep. Yeah, another Cohen. Well, Cohen. Uh, you, David you, Cohen, C O N E, I believe. Yes, you get it. You know, we might – let's put that five-hour energy phone line up there. What's the number there, Tiggs, for people that want to call in if we do get to the number – if we do get to the phone calls eventually? I believe it's one eight three three four three da dome da dome right? one eight three three four three two three six six three. correct? Uh, yeah. I think I can yeah. read that well, right on that nine, or He did it. Da dome Da dome Da dome See, I don't know if Shams is, is coming on or not. I, I think he was originally going to be – Oh, we like, just connected. Good. We're going to have Shams here in a second. Yeah, he's yeah. You just let me know, Z, whenever uh, he is ready. We're excited for Shams, but it's also a weird time for the NBA. It's a weird time for John Morant. I mean, there's all kind of stuff going on. We mm-hmm. could possibly have a Lakers-Celtics yeah. finals. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And that's exactly what so the So many NBA people wants. will be busted in their pants. Oh. oh, yeah. With the networks and at front offices. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, Rob Palenka, he's crafted this whole Lakers squad, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. He's and- getting a bunch of credit. With he LeBron, should. yeah, it, he is getting a lot of credit. I still think there is a chance that it's not Lakers Celtics and that it's Nuggets Heat. I think that's a there's a massive chance that happens as well. The Celtics aren't losing to the Heat. The, yeah, right now, and I hate this shit more than anything, but they did this. Uh, someone did a uh, percentage on chances to make the NBA Finals. And they had the Celtics at 97% chance and the Heat <laughs> at 3% good. chance. Well, it's great news for you. It's just ridiculous. You love that, right? What the fuck are we talking about? Well, we're gonna, let's ask a guy that absolutely knows what he's talking about, guys. Without further ado, let's bring him in. I know he's been waiting for a little bit. He has tons of news. I'm sure he is trying to break. Mr. Shams Sharania. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, Shams? Hey. AJ the host. That's AJ right. the host. We're here for that. We're That's here for right. That. We're I, here for that. Hey, I appreciate you, Shams. Your background looks sweet, too. I don't know if you're like at a top golf or what you're doing, but what's <laughs> going on? What's uh I know we had to bump you back a little bit. You got all kind of news happening. Is there uh is there stuff going on behind the scenes that we don't know about? And what's happening with John Morant? A, a, a lot of meetings going on, uh, AJ. Right now, it's actually Combine Week. So you guys in the NFL oh. have Combine. We have the NBA Draft Combine Week. I'm actually in Chicago, undisclosed location, undisclosed meeting, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. lunch that I just had. So oh. maybe you'll you'll have to just stay tuned later Looks this like week. North. We might break that news on, on PMS, you know, later okay. this week. You never know what can happen. But, yeah, I mean, the John Morant storyline for sure is the biggest one around the league because I, I can't – I don't think there's ever been an example of this where you have – one of the faces of the league, arguably Kevin Durant a year ago said, this is the most marketable, this is the face of the NBA. A player like this getting caught up in this situation where you're flashing a gun uh, two times in three months, got suspended for eight games the first time, met with Adam Silver. And in that meeting, I'm told Adam Silver essentially told John Morant, we can't have this happen. And John Morant was very convincing that he had learned from it. And even people around him were like, he knows how much he's put himself through. How, how, he, how he's jeopardized the Nike deal, the NBA deal. He will be better. And then two months later, the same thing happens. Mm-hmm. And this is all, I mean, it's a pattern of behavior, right? And it's mm-hmm. not like this video got leaked. It's not like someone caught him. This is him and his group are publicly displaying this. And so these are all signs that, you know, the, the league, there's concern around the Grizzlies, AJ, that they're going to come down hard um, on John Morant and that this is, this is going to be potentially a serious suspension. So is it up to the Grizzlies or is it up to the NBA and, and Adam Silver? And who, who does the punishment come from? It, it, it's going to eventually come from Adam Silver. The Grizzlies initially have already suspended him, as I reported. They suspended him essentially indefinitely, right? So, like, there's, they're not playing right now. There's nothing to suspend him from as far as games. But all team activities, he's been suspended uh, for this offseason as of right now. And the rest will be up to the league. Um, and so it'll be Adam Silver. They're going to go through their own investigation, their own review process. Last time it took uh, several days, about a week plus for this investigation. So uh, I would expect a similar investigation. They have to talk to Morant. They're going to have to talk to people around him um, and really get a sense of this situation. But this is not one like it was in Denver. So when he had this initial incident in Denver where he got suspended eight games, he was intoxicated at a nightclub. There was Denver police involved. Um, mm-hmm. and, and he was and he was flashing a gun at the club at, at a strip oh, club. Oh, he was okay. In so in the so, club, in the club, he was flashing a gun. We weren't sure if it was in the club he flashed it or in the car later or what. Well, no, th- 
in 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 Denver in March, he yeah. flashed it at a nightclub. So that's illegal. Uh, we were wondering if he broke the law. That's technically is that illegal there? Because this what he did in the car now, this new one, that's not technically illegal. We don't think. We're just trying to figure that out. So I don't think he he didn't break any laws in Denver. The Denver police cleared him of all the okay. the investigation. They actually had an investigation into John Morant. They investigated him. He was cleared of anything. Even the other day, I mean, if you look at the video, it looks like it's happening in broad daylight. Like, yeah. this is not something that's happening at night. There's no alcohol that you see anywhere near that video. Um, I don't think he broke any laws the first time in Denver. I don't think he broke any laws this time. But when you think about the laws of just morality and how you want to behave, when you, you we, we're, we all, AJ, me, you, everyone, we're all responsible for our own, own actions. And so yeah. when you're him and you just did, did something very similar two months ago, you, you put the N, your NBA team, your sponsorships, everything at jeopardy, and you do the same thing again, that's why it's going to – you're going to see a more stringent penalty the second second go around. Is the NBA – I know the NFL is huge on if you're like a previous offender. Like if, you're, if you have a helmet-to-helmet contact, yeah, your first fine might be 25 grand. They might bump it up to 75 the next time. Is, that, is the NBA big on that? Because I know – I would assume the NBA looks and said, hey, we already suspended you for something very similar, and here you are doing this again. Are they going to try to bring the hammer down on this guy? I think the biggest thing is that we we got your word that you would you would you understood the gravity of this that this would not happen again that you understood the position that you put yourself your family your team and you'd be better and the same thing happened again and I think that's the re, that that's the thing it's like you got one strike now this is going to be strike two and it's a situation where the league's not going to have a choice if 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 the investigation shows that that was a firearm in his hand that it was actually over the weekend which it seemed to be if everything confirms that you would assume a harsher penalty than just eight games Austin Connor yeah Shams uh you just said the laws of morality who the hell decides what the laws of morality are <laughs> I think this ambulance I think this I, I think, Coming I think to get the you. police and this ambulance uh-oh they're after me actually oh, no. maybe I'm not following oh, the laws no. of morality Take off. you can start running yeah. <laughs> um no I mean I, I think when you look at at it from a position of, you know, you, you responsibility, right? Adam Silver, the statement that he put out, um, I mean, you just can't have, uh, I mean, a gun, especially at a nightclub and then the way he was brandishing in the car. I mean, I think there's, there is a level of responsibility, um, you know, that, that he has as a max player for the Grizzlies, as an endorser, signature shoe at Nike, uh, Powerade as well. Um, there's a level of responsibility that comes with that. Todd Schmidt. Yeah, Shams, uh, shifting gears a little bit away from this, I'm sure uh, we'll get back to it, but there have been, like, five very high-profile coaches who have been fired in the last, like, three weeks or so. Is any of this surprising that some of these guys are getting shit-canned early, and do you think that, like, everyone who has been fired, are we just kind of doing, like, uh, a mix-and-match plug-and-play here? Will all these guys be coaching just a different team next year? There's going to be some musical chairs, no question. Um, I think a lot of it is going to be, you know, when you think about uh, uh, Detroit, Milwaukee, Phoenix, what? Toronto, they're, what? They're, what? they're all they're all going after kind of the same types of guys. Detroit, maybe you'll see them go somewhere else, but I do think coaches like Monty Williams, Mike Budenholzer, what? Nurse, those are all going to be guys that are in play. But I could see getting an interview in in Phoenix, Nick Nurse. I could see being in play in Milwaukee. Ooh. Monty Williams, I could see being in play in Milwaukee. So you're going to have these guys JJ Redick. where you're going to see – J.J. Redick wants to coach. He did interview for Toronto, um, but I have not heard of uh, any progress from you think J.J. Redick. I'm sure he, you think there's a good chance that somebody hires him straight off the, you know, out of ESPN? I mean, there's always a chance, A.J. Now, yeah. all he's got to do is put himself in position to get interviews, and he's doing that right now. I, I do think there's a lot of – players that are fans of J.J. Redick uh, as a leader, as a person. Hmm. Um, but th- there's no question, there's going to be some musical chairs. Phoenix firing their head coach over the weekend. That's gonna That becomes the most desirable job potentially on the market because you have two guys under contract for multiple years um, moving forward. They're locked in. It's an attractive market. Uh, this new ownership, Matt Ishbia, he is eating three years, $21 million hmm. on Monty Williams' contract. And now he's going to go pay another coach significant money. So he's not messing around. He's already in. He's trying to win a championship the next three to five years with Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. I know you guys were just in Phoenix. You guys should have told me this was coming, yeah. you know? 
I was waiting on you guys to text me. Yeah, I mean, you could have never seen it coming, Shams, with the KD and Devin (laughs) Booker. But uh, is Doc Rivers going to get shit canned? Because it seems like it's heading that direction, especially after James Harden said that their relationship is just okay. I I think they're going to reevaluate for sure. I I think there will be meetings this week to decide and come up with the future direction of offseason plans for the Sixers. But listen, I, I think there are a lot of things you look at with, with Philadelphia um, this postseason. And one of them, they never really could get that pick and roll game going with Joel Embiid and James Harden. You saw the pocket pass, the pick and roll. That kind of went away as the series went along. Mm-hmm. Boston conceded the corners. We saw P.J. Tucker get open in the corners. The shooters got open in the corners. James Harden, it's game seven. He was making drives, and he was finding the shooters in the corners. What they weren't conceding was that pick and roll and that pocket pass between Joel Embiid and James Harden. And I think that is something you can look at. Were the right adjustments made at the end of the day to combat those issues? Uh, that's something that Philadelphia is going to have to go through. Oh, Tone Diggs. Shams, is the NBA drooling over the potential matchup of Celtics-Lakers in the final? I mean, I think everyone is probably drooling over that, right? I mean, it's two, two biggest markets. I know Boston Connor is. Hell yeah. You know, or, or, may, or, or, or maybe he's not. I don't know. But oh, I, know. I, know he, I, know, I know deep down Boston Connor wants to, like, say, you know, that we beat the Lakers. I beat oh, the Lakers. Absolutely. So. No doubt he, about he, it. He probably, I mean, who wouldn't want that matchup? But I think it is interesting. This is a rematch of the bubble finals. Mm-hmm. Who's, who else is excited? I'm excited. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, I don't know about the bubble matchup, uh, but you saw the Lakers for sure. Do you think, <laughs> uh, at least around the league and from the people you talk to, does this – kind of solidify how legitimate the bubble was because there's always that debate was it like a real championship or not do you think this kind of yeah solidifies it as something especially three years later that it's the same matchups Boston Connor I was in the bubble so I might be a little biased I personally think it was high level basketball that was down there Um, guys were competing everyone had the same same threshold like everyone was on the same footing same ground so there's really no excuses um, but to me, all these te- – I mean, look, think about it. All these teams, the cores, they're all the same. Denver, Nicole Yoko, Jamal Murray, uh, Michael Porter Jr., the only guy they added, Aaron Gordon. Lakers, LeBron, AD, they got a bunch of role players, supporting cast around those two guys, just like in the bubble. Boston, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart. Yes, they've added a few pieces here and there. And then Miami, Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo. So all the core pieces are there. Yeah. Everything else has changed. So we'll, we'll have to see if the Lakers can win it all. You know, if they don't win it all – Maybe it comes, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Ooh. Oh, we will see. Sean, I was getting back to John Morant quickly. Um, what's the timeline look like? And if you had to, you know, be a pundit and try to, you know, guess what could happen, what, like how do they handle this? How long is he suspended? Is it possible we're hearing rumors of all kind of 50 games, the full season, all of this? Like, it, is everything up in the air right now? I think everything is up in the air. And, and honestly, there really doesn't have to be a timeline. It's not like there's no games for Memphis – until September, um, the, the NBA could take as long as they want th- throughout this offseason. So, um, but I, I, w- I would assume because of how, how high profile this is, you know, it, it'll be expedited just a little bit. But there's really no time. Is Nike going to drop him? Summer. Is Nike going to keep him? Like that's a big question. I have, I have not heard back yet from Nike on their plans for job ja, with John ja Morant. Um, they already had to drop. They already incident, dropped Kyrie. So like you, you lose Kyrie and Ja, that's a big deal for them, isn't it? For sure. I mean, they've invested a lot of money, a lot of equity into John Morant. They gave him his own signature shoe this year. It's very rare when a player launches a signature shoe midseason. That's what John Morant did. Mm. Um, and, and it came right around the time where he had the incident in March. So uh, for John Morant, I think I think there will be some level of a suspension. He's already been suspended, so I'm not breaking news there. But I think there will be some suspension. He already got eight games the first time. It's happened again. So – you know, ruling would only show that it would be more significant than that. Boston Connor? Yeah, Sean, stay, uh, stay safe over there. Those uh, yeah, sirens are just yeah. continuing to go, yeah. so you're definitely in Chicago. But uh, <laughs> Oakland A's got uh, him. Uh, officially, I believe, got the land in Vegas for yep. their uh, baseball stadium. Are we going to see a Vegas basketball team announcement possibly soon, kind of adding to the expansion? And if they do add that team, do you think that they'll try and add another maybe in Seattle or somewhere else? BC, I don't want to shatter your hopes and your dreams. Um, I don't expect it to be soon for the NBA. I do think oh, no. it'll be soon-ish. You know, could it be three, four, five years away potentially? Um, I, I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. A couple years maybe. But I, I don't think it's like, you know, 
I'm, I'm going to be tweeting something. I, I don't think I'll be tweeting something out in the next little while. Damn it. Shams, you think uh, you think Ishba would go after uh, Izzo, try to bring him into the NBA? Whoa. Why not? There's, there's MSU Whoa. connections, right? Evie, go green. That's not going to happen, AJ. It sounds Sorry. like it is. No, let the man speak, Foxy. Why not? Yeah, come on, let him speak. Uh, I do not expect that to be uh, a pursuit for Why not? the let's Suns. Go. What? Um, I, I think they're looking more toward an NBA coach who's experienced. Oh. A couple guys. Oh, this is not Ty good Ty Lue. Well, no, I mean. T- Ty Lu, he's under contract with the Clippers. You know, they could discuss an extension with him and the Clippers. I think that's something that a lot of people around the league expect. There to be extension conversation. If they can't reach an agreement on a deal, does he become available for Phoenix? Um, I think they're going to wait and see what happens there. Nick Nurse, another guy I would keep an eye on in, in Phoenix. They're still trying to compile a list, probably six, seven deep. But um, I, I do not expect Tom Izzo as of right now, to be among the candidates. Are there going to be any big shakeups, Sean's, with teams? Because I saw something with the Lakers going after Chris Paul and then obviously oh. with the Clippers. With Warriors, Paul. too. With Warriors, the Warriors. Yeah. yeah, with Draymond. Is Sorry. he going to still be there? Are there going to be some, you know, moving and shaking around the NBA this offseason as far as players go? There always is. There always is. I think, you know, for the, for the, for the sake of the Warriors, as of right now, they want to keep Draymond Green, Stephen Curry, and Clay Thompson. Uh, Draymond Green has a player option, $27 million. Uh, but I'm told the, the Warriors want to give him a new deal, a multi-year deal, whether he opts in and extends, whether he opts out and does a new contract in July. They want to keep him, and it's interesting. When the season started, the conversation was, is this Draymond Green's last year with the Warriors? Yep. He had the punch on Jordan Poole. Everyone was saying the dynasty's over. They're going to break it up. But they want, and Stephen Curry wants this thing to keep going. And if Steph Curry wants this thing to keep going, it's probably going to keep going. As far as the Lakers, I, I mean, they just made it to the conference finals. They made all these trades during the season. I would assume they would want to bring this team back, see how this team does this season. Um, obviously, there's another round to go, maybe two rounds to go, see how this team does. But they clearly have something good here going. That's a sweet jacket you have, by the way, but Ty Schmidt has something for you, Shams. Shams, you expecting any type of fireworks from the draft lottery? Um, any chance that it's fixed? Uh, <laughs> are people going to bitch about it whenever oh. the lottery does shake out? Mm. And uh, is this like the – I mean, everyone has known that Wembayana is going to go number one for, it seems like, almost like two years now. Um, after that, like, our teams even – that excited i mean it seems like we know like who the top three guys are and then after that it's kind of a crap shoot no i mean i think teams are definitely excited because not you have victor women yama who like you said will be the number one pick but then scoot henderson the thompson twins brandon miller uh, you have guys uh, in this draft class that could be star players for chris sure and i think they're guys that are uh, chris murray um <laughs> tyler hendricks there are guys here that could be factors for for, for NBA teams. But I do think whoever gets the number one, one overall pick, you know why it's so big? It, it, it heightens your team value. It raises your team value. It, it raises the stakes for you as an organization if you get the number one overall pick because this is a potential generational player. We'll see what he, you know, if he can stay healthy and all those other questions, question marks that exist as they do with every player. But if he can come in and be what, what, what everyone expects, that has a landmark changing move for your organization. So... You're going to see a lot of fallout from this combine, uh, from this draft lottery tomorrow, the combine as a whole. There are going to be some upset teams that don't get number one. Houston, San Antonio, Detroit, Charlotte, all teams that were essentially down the stretch playing for number one. We'll see who gets it. Connor? Yeah, if Houston gets it, Chalms, do you expect uh, San Antonio or a team that's pissed to just tell everybody what happened with him, AU Doka, so that everyone gets pissed at Houston? Yeah, what happened? (laughs) <laughs> I feel like I came on this show and told you guys what happened. At least most of it. Well, no, we have to pull well, it up. That's the thing. Archives. That's, oh. It's the most archives. of it. Pull it up from the archives. It's the most of it part you just said. No one's really said what all of it has been. That's true. That's true. Maybe one day. Do you know? Ma- Sh- maybe one do day. a lot of people know, Shams? I, I don't know how a lot of people could know if it hasn't really yes. leaked that much. Maybe one day in Indianapolis, you know, mm. we'll, we'll, we'll have to play pickleball or two-on-two for the information. Fair you know? enough. Thunderball. Yeah. We'll, see, we'll see what happens. Um, but – no, I mean, I, I, I think, I think you're, you're going to see a situation where whoever gets the number one overall pick, there are going to be some crazy trade offers that are going to be made for that number mm. one pick this year. And I, I don't foresee it being traded, but it will be interesting to see how many teams call the team that get the number one pick and just oh. throw star players, yep. future picks, et cetera, at them. Shams, I don't know if we, you, we've had you on since um, 
you know, these head coaches talking about you. What, Steve Kerr, when he's, he didn't even mention you in a presser saying you're you're uh, consulting on the roster management or something over there? Yeah, he called you is Shams. That norm, is that this was... normal? Is that a normal thing to happen, Shams? And that's a compliment. The coaches are talking about you. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think in that instance, I'm sure Steve Kerr was a little upset that his lineup got out there. Uh, so, listen, Steve Kerr can say whatever he wants about me. I'm here to take it. I'm just here to do my job. He's just, yeah, yeah, now yeah, you got to worry job. about those people. He's looking for the rat, though, Sean. Yeah. He's looking for yeah. the rat in the locker room, right? Listen, all I know, all I know, AJ, I've got, I've got, I've got people everywhere. Sean so. <laughs> okay. does have people everywhere. That's a great Shams. way to end it, Sean. I appreciate you so much, man. Thanks for your time. Enjoy uh, your secretive location and that sweet jacket and clean T-shirt you have on, and we will talk to you later, Sean. Thank you. Sean Sharani, everybody. Yeah, Sean Sharani! Ooh, yeah, I forgot. Um, right at the very end, I remember you know, Steve Kerr. Yeah, yeah. Calling Shams like a, what does he say? He's a roster guru or yeah. he knows everything about yeah, the roster. Right. Like, I don't even it know. It was right, wasn't it? Yeah, he was like, I don't know why I keep anything a secret when there's people like Shams out there who are loving lunch. He said Shams. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. And loving lunch. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know if he said loving lunch. I yeah. might have, but yeah, he called them Shams. It was bullshit. Oh, I didn't see that. I didn't. I just read it. I didn't hear it or watch it. Could you imagine what would happen if you, while you're playing for the Packers, oh some some lineup got out. What would Big Mike McCarthy say? Oh, he would, like, yeah, if, especially when it comes to a lineup. Like, yeah, yeah, he's not going to be uh, – or, like, what if you told something about another player? Well, you know, who everyone playing on that guy playing, he actually just got hurt on Saturday morning. He's not going to be in the lineup tomorrow. Yes, like, exactly. if you did something like that. Well, and if whew. even for the NBA, if it was something like that. Like, if Gary Payton was hurt, and it's like, hey, Gary Payton's going to be active tonight. Yeah. Like, okay, that's one thing. For, to tell to tell the world that he's going to start yeah. and that they're yeah. making a change to their right. lineup. It's and a the NBA is so small too, to where it's there's only what twelve players on a team, it's fifteen at most. Twelve active. Yeah. However many coaches they have, yeah, like yeah. there's not. The they don't travel like when they go on a plane, team plane. There's not a ton of people in football. There's a million people involved. True. So many front office. It's a lot harder to find who the rat might be or who might be leaking this info in basketball. I'd imagine it's pretty easy. Don't oh you think? yeah. I mean, there's front office, but there's only. Like, if it's a roster thing of this guy's playing or he's not playing, there's only a few people you know that know that info. Mm -hmm. It's probably a player that leaks it to an agent. Agent leaks it to Shams. Yeah. That's what it is. That would make a For lot sure. more sense. That's what everything sure. is. Agents talk. And it's not even leaking. It's just business. It's how they do it. But, yeah, and agents talk. Players represent the players. The agents are going to, yeah, that's how it happens. Mm -hmm. Shams probably, is always going to find the cheese. He said he's got mm -hmm. people everywhere. That's right. And I believe it. How do you get your people everywhere? How do you get them to trust you? I don't understand how it works, to be completely honest. Especially because he's pretty... Like young in the inside, oh, very young. That's so, how he came. Like, how did he get his foot in the door? Just hands, lunch, hands. Right. Yep. You yep. think lunch? Mm -hmm. Invite him to lunch. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Jesus Christ, this guy fucking loves lunch so much. He's going to be a great. Insider. Can you explain exactly what why Shams loves lunch and why we talk about it so much? Someone scrolled down to his Twitter from like ten years ago when so he, he was like a high schooler. It, he, yeah. he was in high school, just tweeting like, "Can't wait for lunch." Every day at like eleven o'clock. I do. That was his it. only tweet of the day. Love lunch. Pump for lunch today. Did he get a bunch of uh, a bunch of traction? A bunch of interaction? When I, he think, was, I think. Yeah, I think about, a lot oh, of people did. Yeah. Yeah. Lunch yeah. time. Lunch time. Like you, you, did he get hacked? Is this a bot or did he just no, loves no, lunch? No, it's him. Just what had lunch. Mm. Oh, and it's not every single day. He skips days sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, you're right. Two well, more probably, periods till lunch. You're you're looking at the menu in high school, and you know you you're have right. those days where it's oh. like I cannot fucking wait for lunch oh. today. I loved foot long day. Elementary school, I, I would bet look, you they did. would give you a printed print out. <laughs> 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 they give you a printed out sheet of your lunch for oh, like oh, yeah. two weeks, yes. and I would, I would oh, yeah, circle yeah, foot long hot dog day. Ty, uh -huh. that was a good day. Yeah, yep. I love eating the foot long hot. <laughs> yeah, Did that. you eat grilled chicken? Hell yeah. yeah. You're a terrible person. <laughs> Did you eat grilled chicken every day when you were young, too? No, I ate terrible growing up. I, I drank sure. 10 Mountain Dews, and I lived yes. on Pepsi, Mountain Dew, and Pizza Hut. Just just impossible to believe that, but, but okay. it's 100% true, because like, my mom didn't cook very much. Um, so, yeah, two older brothers, yeah, and we just ate just... garbage. Did you eat like shit in college or not? No, I learned, senior year in high school, I read Bill Phillips, the founder of EAS's book, and started eating healthy. healthy. Yeah, yeah, science. Yeah, yes, the supplement company. Yeah, yeah. So you've had grilled chicken and rice at forever but I think since you were eighteen. Be because I was eating so terrible, and that's just that was just eating to me. But then I read it. I'm like, man, this is probably if I want to like operate at a higher level, I can't be doing this. And so I started eating healthy. Right. What was your go-to at Pizza Hut? I, I'm all cheese pizza. I'm very plain. People, people hate me. I'm not a foodie. I don't like. I like pepper. I like spices. You like to go in person. I put pepper on everything. Did you like to go in person to those sweet? Oh my food? gosh, yeah. my brother. We would go to Pizza Hut pizza lunch buffet. buffet. Yes. I, during school, because we could drive out. Leave, yep. You know, boom. I would eat five thousand breadsticks dipped into marinara, and yep. I would get 
the thin crust cheese pizza. I would get the, th the pan tossed th cheese pizza, Ooh. and I would drink fifteen pep fountain Pepsi's with those big red cups they used to have. Yep, that's like some. You were doing it right. That was life. Yeah. Were you so pumped when Brady Quinn got that EAS endorsement deal? And he was like, <laughs> "No, I'm done." <laughs> he was Brady had a deal where he was jumping up like from a lake, and he like popped up and was throwing a ball. It was a pretty sweet commercial. Uh, yeah, I was pumped because I got some. I was never actually a big protein shake guy. Still, I'm still I'm not. Never enjoyed the taste. Never really got into it. Well, I thought you just shred up ground chicken and mix it with water. And oh, yeah, like, I do that still, yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that would be so gross. That's what you do. Would. If you just blended up food, sucked it down through a straw, which yeah. people do that, right? Yeah, that's oh, what yeah. you, didn't you ask for Christmas? If just they, a magic if bullet. If they have to. <laughs> magic bullet can't do it, isn't good enough. Vitamix, you need those big expensive, like $1,200 ones. So mm -hmm. you do do it. Like digs. What? How much protein do you consume per day? Uh, 38 grams. On the that dog. feels like it's not enough. Got to get in your my, macros in my, right. <laughs> it might be enough. I don't know. What are you supposed to do? One gram per pound of body weight? So, yeah. You ever that's heard about that? right. If you're trying to make gains. Conman, you're still working out, aren't you? I, I love the Hawk House, yeah. Yeah, aren't you still in a, you're like a part of a program? Uh, No, I'm not part of a program. But I mean, you're doing a program. Like, you have your own plan. Like, that. you're, yes. doing, you're yeah, doing yeah. stuff. I have a nice little schedule. Nice. Kind of worked out here. And, yeah, I love it in there. It's awesome. What about Zeke? Zeke's crushing it. Uh, you I got those meal plans still? No, the gout really took those out. Oh, the gout came back? The gout came back heavy. What makes gout come back? Uh, a lot of red sodium. beer, sodium? steak. What? King's Everything disease. that's good in life. Oh, but no. Anything a king yeah. eats. Yeah. How, do we, how do we combat that so to where you still can have those nice finer things every once in a while? Lose weight. Is that what it is? No. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Yeah. I think, I think, <laughs> probably, I think it does. Have, probably help. What does gout do? Like, what? Does it hurt? Oh, my God. Feels my, like your foot goes out of foot. commission. And your feet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it was my, my left foot got attacked last, and I got couldn't attacked. walk. I believe it's a buildup of, like, calcium or something in your foot, so it feels like you have, like, I believe it's stepping. Ass, like uh, a, acid, acid, I believe, mm -hmm. or, like, oh, some okay. kind of, like, uh, and it's goes lactic into your acid. muscles. It's based off what you're eating? Yeah. It, like, okay. it's hard to break down. It's the same thing as a kidney stone. Oh, but in your foot. But those are terrible. Gone. Those are very terrible. Exactly. Yeah. Do you have gout, Ty? No, I had several kidney stones, though. Just because? Apparently, they, they're connected. Salt. Like you really? can have. Mm -hmm. you, those uh, are, um, what are the ones you piss out? You try to pee out. You can. Kidney stones. You can get Hopefully. Those kidneys. Yeah, they told me I'd tough. be able to uh, pee mine out. Turns out they were way too big, so I got no. very sick, and they had to go in and, and blast them. You get really sick. It's not just painful. You get super sick too. Oh yeah, no. Like I, I mean. It's it, like I heard if you it, haven't guys well guys claim this. There's no way to test it, but they claim if you pee out a kidney stone, it's like having a baby. Yeah, allegedly they claim that, that. that's the story that like goes a baby around. coming around. I mean, the honestly, shaft. the worst part is uh, getting the catheter put in after. Wait, were you awake for a catheter being put in? Do they uh, do that? No, but I was awake when they took it out. See, and they, they don't they, do they, catheter for normal surgery, do they? Uh, like they're not playing around with my Johnson putting a catheter in there when they knock me out. No, nah, I don't think. I know so. they're putting a tube down my throat. That I learned that after my first couple of surgeries. I'm like, what are you talking about? They really don't. I'm like, yes, they have to breathe for you, bud. Yeah. And you're knocked out. But yep. they're not catheter. I don't hope no. I've had a catheter. No, I don't think so. So like, they just ripped it out of your pee hole? No, he told like I was supposed to take it out on my own, and, and I was couldn't do it. I was just like, I I am not mentally tough enough me. to do this. I don't I'm sorry, I, I got to go in. And then I saw how long it was. I was oh. like. Yeah, I would never be able to do that. He's like, yeah, a lot of people can't. <laughs> what the I was fuck? Like, yeah, I, I can see why. It's how is it like a, a tube within a tube? Like goes in and then I don't know. Uh, senior year, of, thank yeah, you. Senior year what? of high school, you started eating well. Did you know yeah. that you were gonna, or you, maybe you didn't know? Did you know like you wanted to go to the NFL? Like, hey, if I no, change my nutrition, NFL. I wanted to play. In, I wanted to, my whole goal, my whole life was to play for my high school football team because those yeah. guys were the. That's the, the pinnacle yeah, of football. Paul Paul. Yes. And then the very end of high school, going into my senior year, I was like, I might be able to get a scholarship from Ohio State. So I was like, go play at Ohio State. I never thought more than three minutes ahead. When did you know? Be weird, like, be was weird. there, like, freshman what? year when you were playing? To, the, to go to the NFL? Yeah, did you? No. I never thought of the NFL until I was about to fly out to go to Vegas after my junior season. I turned January 6th is my birthday. Nothing yep. to do with whatever happened over oh, there. Yeah, sure. sure. Okay. That was my there, birthday. I turned, yeah. turned 21 my junior year and was about to fly to Vegas with General Bob and Mangold mm -hmm. and my buddies, my brother, one of my brothers. And like the SID or whatever was like, hey, do you want to um, put out a statement that you're coming back for your senior year? I was like, what, what do you know? I was never an option. I was leaving. <laughs> I had never thought about leaving before. Yeah. And so I was like, no. Thanks, though. Like, I didn't need to feel like I need to say something. <laughs> yeah, about yeah, it. yeah, sure. So then I was like, oh, okay. And then you left. And then I went and went to Vegas and then played my senior year. And that, like, that was one of the moments where it was like, oh, fuck, people expect me Where to go it felt there. like it could be a reality. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
I guess. Because all... I was like, wait, could I have left? Could I have left after this year? I thought of that. It made me think of that. I didn't want to. After, I knew I, after they told me. That, yes. After okay, they said okay. that. Were you an All American your sophomore and your junior no, year, though? No, just junior. I don't think. Yeah, just my junior, I believe. Two time. So I guess it would be junior, senior. I don't mm-hmm. think it was sophomore, senior. See, that's crazy how it was then. Because oh, could you now imagine? It's so different. Because yeah. now, now that's all they think about. It's what you think about when you're like a freshman in high school. Which place gives me the best platform, mm-hmm. and the best opportunity to get to the NFL? Well, even look at like the Bosa's. Like Nick Bosa, yeah. the year before he was going to the draft, was like, you know what? I probably just shouldn't play because I'm going to be a top hmm. five pick next. Well, year. he had a core surgery too. Yes, exactly. Yeah, but yeah, and so. their dad played. Like, yeah, they were they, they were professionals when they showed up on campus. I think. Yeah. Like those dudes knew, and they're such freaks. But, yeah, I guess it's everyone – I don't know. I, I think any time it, – it would be really tough being a young kid, being highly recruited with all that. Even if you don't, like, take on that pressure or whatever, just thinking, like – I think it should be if you're playing in your high school team, it's awesome. Like, you know when you're a young kid and you see your high school guys, you, like, stand there and watch the high school team walk out and they're wearing metal spikes and you can hear their oh, spikes. Yeah. Click, click, like, click, I click. Got, I give you, like, goosebumps thinking about those dudes. I know all those guys that came went through Centerville High School before me are like the biggest celebrities I've ever known mm-hmm. because they I just hear stories about them and watch them and then whatever. And so I feel like wherever you're playing, that should be like the pinnacle. Yeah. It should be like, yes, this is awesome. I'm going to do whatever I can to continue to play here and make plays here. And then hopefully towards the end, if I get an opportunity to play somewhere else at another level, then maybe I can. But also like no, that's a such a meathead just – like I said, I never thought about anything – Five seconds down the road, and I'm very glad I actually was that way. Yeah, well, now there's NIL because now it's like Ooh, kids are now you gotta get an agent in high school. Exactly, it's not just like, hey, you know, you should hopefully focus in on this game. It's like, hey, if you don't play well, you're probably gonna lose a couple can million imagine, dollars. Yeah, can over you imagine saying season. that to a kid? Oh boy, that's tough. And they have like, it was always where you could have like hangers on people that were like basically on the payroll in yeah. college. But now it's almost like a everybody. If a guy's a good player. He's got a crew with him. There's a, there's like a crew of people around him. Well, and you kind of wonder maybe there's a thought that there's less pressure when you get to college because you've already dealt with that in high school, right? Yeah, you've it's not nothing's new. It's yes. not like oh all of a sudden wow look at this like because yeah when I got to college, it is a bit eye opening when you talk to the media and do all of this stuff and you realize the stage you're on because well, in high school you do but it's no, it doesn't feel that. Big. Yeah, but if you're going to Ohio State, that first game you're playing, you're playing in front of like a hundred thousand yeah, people. Yeah. Like I assume that's a pretty big fucking. It's pretty big. Oh, deal. Well, yeah. and just the in team competition. Sure, yeah. versus well, your high school team obviously is like hey guess what everyone is just as good yeah. as me as i was in high school for my senior year oh year yeah team. i came in my my freshman year in college was the last year they did freshman camp they don't do freshman camp anymore luckily we had a class of like 25 freshmen like san antonio holmes troy smith i mean just unbelievable studs yeah. top to bottom and we practiced for like five days before the rest of the mm-hmm. team got there in pads too by the way mm-hmm. but we didn't have you don't have enough players to go 11 on 11 mm-hmm. so we'd be doing drills where we're playing linebacker, and then we'd rotate. I got to give a look as a running back, like things like that. Yeah, sure. And we just pounded each other and ran sweet, though, for a week straight. Spend time though with your freshman class. Five that was days before everyone else. It was it. awesome, yeah. but then we were already so beat up and dead by the time the, the vets showed up. You'll, and that was back in the day too. There's no rules. You can do as many practices. You can be in pads as much as you want. All of it. You'll never say this, um, but I assume. You were probably the best player of those freshmen, but aside from that, were there yeah. like did Santonio San Holmes do anything where it was like, holy shit. Yeah, every day. Yeah. Yeah. Tone redshirted though. Uh but like Troy Smith. Troy, Troy came Smith, in. We yeah. had Troy and, and Justin Zwick, same class, both mm-hmm. the same age. Maurice Corrette was in the class as well. Yeah. And so But yeah. he was already there, right? Yep. He came up in the spring. I remember coming to watch him play spring ball a few times and just seeing him as a 17, 18 year old high school senior just <laughs> yeah. killing dudes at spring ball. Yeah. Like he's he's a specimen. But like Zwick and Troy Smith came in, they were freshmen. Both of them, right off the bat, I was like, oh, these guys, ball comes out of these guys' hands a little different than what I'm used to. Like, <laughs> yeah. just what they could do was so special. So I was kind of in awe of all of that, I think. So they were all, everyone felt really, really good. They felt Like you okay. knew, like, okay, we got a pretty sweet freshman class here. Yeah, yeah, and I didn't have any expectations of, like, they would ask, oh, do you want a red, or media said, do you think you're red shirt? I was like, I don't know. Whatever the coach tells me to do, I'm going to run fast. I yeah. guess, yeah. whatever <laughs> yeah. I do. They're yeah. gonna, I know I'm on kickoff team and kickoff return and all the special teams. I'll run as fast as I can. But Bob, our first game ever, Bob made the first tackle on kickoff. It was awesome. We, no way. We're running down. Bob goes and makes a sweet tackle like on the eight-yard line of the dude and jumps up with a crazy celebration. The place went crazy. It was awesome. That's Really unreal. cool start like, to all of it. Yeah, we knew. I knew Bob was a monster from day one. Well, yeah. Just I'm- watch him walk. See that, like – 
he had long hair back in the day mm -hmm. too. Oh yeah, when he was in high school, and so he was an absolute specimen. Could run like a four four too. So. Absurd. That's the general baby. And that and, and now look like I wonder if they, you said they don't do freshman no. stuff anymore. Is that because like half the team is transfers now? Or I half mean, the, it, I, well, it stopped right after. I don't know why. Honestly, I bet the coaches hated it. The coaches had to come in a full week early and yeah. work with this whole freshman. And it was because you didn't have. That was going into our senior year, I believe. Yeah, Schlegs came on after our freshman year. <laughs> We host him on his visit from the Air Force Academy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Unreal. We've had we've had to recreate that picture a few times on the Buckeye Cruise. For oh, you don't say. <laughs> yeah. No way. <laughs> yeah, you don't. Do say. the photo. Do the you photo, dude. Because there's a homage made a shirt with that picture on it. So we'll yeah take pictures of us wearing a shirt and the other person wearing a shirt doing that. So yeah, we didn't know that 20 years ago that that was going to be still still living. That was going to be a thing. Yeah. Now Buckeye well, guess, hero. How old are you now, Ty? 32. Touch you? out. You're 28. 28. Diggs? 35. Are you? Mm -hmm. You guys are all very young. Who's the youngest guy here, Mitt? Yeah. Yep. Yes, Mitt is the youngest guy here. Mitt, what are you? Mitt is uh, 24. Mitt went snowboarding this weekend. Oh, yeah, he did. He did. Just just killing it. What, how did well, it go? He got Do we know he's hurt? Yeah, he, he was shredding gnar, but allegedly his sister was dominating him up and down the mountain. Do we have the Mitt cam? Oh, is that available? Sorry to spring this on you. I know you guys made me aware of this Mitt cam. He's man. on the phone right now. I'm yeah. not sure what he's doing. What's he saying, Ty? Oh, actually, stop fucking putting the camera on me, okay? I'm getting you bored. I'm getting my bindings right now. He is bad. He's got to be pissed. Yeah, yeah. Good run, good run. Where'd he go? What'd you do this weekend? Man, you we have had a bunch games? of games, a bunch of lacrosse games, a uh, bunch of basketball games, and then got to get the, the moms and everybody together and went to dinner Sunday night yesterday. Nice. Oh, you nice. any fishing? You a big fishing guy? No. You got that pond, though, in your back. Uh... Well, it's my, my in-laws, my sister-in-law, her pond. So it's right in front. I know. Believe me, I need I need some equipment. I don't have any fishing equipment right now. Well, okay. Pat actually sent this to me, and I'd oh. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it. Um, a Colorado angler broke the world record, caught a seventy three pound lake trout on the what? first day of fishing season out there. I mean, just <laughs> e every fisherman seventy three pound trout. Are you kidding me? Seventy three pound picture trout. Of this guy? No I do fucking not have way. A picture, lake but trout. Believe me lake when trout. I tell Yeah, lake trout. So not like fly fish and stream trout. No, uh, no, 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 uh, no, no, lake. No, no, What's a lake no, no. trout look like compared to a like a Bigger? rainbow trout I catch in a stream? Like Massive. Fly fishing. I mean, Huge. 73 pounds, that, is that a sturgeon? Pounds. That thing's gigantic. There's got to be a photo. First day of the there season. Is. First day. If there's not a photo, I don't believe this guy. I need to see the photo. Or gal. So was he out in a boat? What was the lure? What kind of lure? That's a good question. Well, here we go. Here we go. Oh, they got a boat dog as well. Oh, he's got to love a boat dog. Did they cut them open to make sure there's no metal balls inside? Uh, that's a good question. A lot of that going around right now. How much do those guys get? They get jail time for that? Ten, Ten days. days. Ten days. Jeez, Holy how fat that thing shit. is. Look at that. That is every angler's dream right there. That, <laughs> that's got to be pregnant, right? That looks like a tuna. No, that's just a big son of a bitch. you got to be kidding did me. Did they take him or did they put him... I Put him back. Now that one you're taking home. No, nope. no, nope. respect the fish. No way. No way. Go eat that guy. No way. Do not let that thing go, guys. Don't let that catch thing and go. Catch and release. What guys. are we doing? If they catch let this go, I might be fake. No way. Nah. They, they were catch and release. Respect that needs to be fish. on your wall. Yeah, exactly. They were soaking him up, letting him get his last gulp of water before they slammed his head down onto the <laughs> okay. boat and then went and stuffed him. <laughs> okay, good. Yep. I was gonna say if they if they let that go, I was gonna call into question whether they caught that. That wouldn't be that real. funny if that was on video. That wouldn't be. <laughs> no, it wouldn't hey, be. Get your last little. Drink a little pal. Yeah. It wouldn't be funny them. at all, but that is, ev I mean, on the first day of the season, too. But guess what? Kidding me? G good. Oh, my gosh. Look at that son of a bitch. Something's, is that thing, was that around a nuclear power plant? Like, what is happening? Why is no, the belly so it, distended? I think it ate, like, a 73-pound boulder, actually. <laughs> oh, this thing had that to. would make sense. <laughs> yeah. Chewing rocks. Yep. No, these guys made this thing swallow a damn kettlebell. That's why it weighs Look how big pounds. this guy's hands are. That's how you know he is a world-class angler. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. So this is in Colorado. Yep. What lake? Is oh, wow. Lake? He's got Bill's Black Rifle Coffee Company. Dude. Wait, hold oh, okay. on. I see you, Bill. What? I was going to say, yeah, wait. How did this guy get Bill's jacket? But Oh, yeah. Can you one. imagine? I mean, you'd have to just almost retire from angling after yeah, that. Yeah, how long did but it then, take him to reel it in? What about, like, you're, you get home and your kids and your significant others like, oh, what you, oh look at this. I caught this 73-pounder. And everyone's like, yeah, great. I've been starving all day. Oh, no, we put him back. That's what They'd I mean. They'd be pissed. They'd be so mad you didn't bring them home. Well, well guess so, what? You're no, stuffing that thing. You're not eating it. So no, you, eh, you teach the family. You take a from picture. Birth. They, give, they build you a replica. You respect now. the fish. You put the fish back. Why? No way. Respect I, the fish. I'm taking that thing to shore. Caught and I'm released. showing everybody. Caught and release. Scott yeah. Enlow. Respect the fish. Oh, it's Sun Hunter. Okay. So is he the goat? 
But was no. this? Were, did they go out expecting that? Hey, whatever we catch, we're going to release. Probably. Yeah. I don't want to go fishing if that's the, the case. Well, you're not a true angler then. You're clearly. Right. I'm a catch. I like to catch. I don't like to like. I like to catch fish. If I'm going out there, you got to catch something within the first twenty minutes. There's I think. more fish in the sea though, you know. But that's a, that's not the sea. That's a lake or a river. I think. Well, this yeah. guy's probably thinking like it doesn't matter because I'm bringing my family home piping hot Long John Silvers after the day ends anyway. Mm-hmm. So whatever I catch is not going to be what we're eating Some tonight. Delicious hush puppy. Remember yeah. the little crunchies that are around the, around the chicken fingers? Oh, yeah, like, so you know, all the crunchy stuff around it. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Khan doesn't know about it. I actually don't. I've never eaten at Long John's. Do they not have it up there in the coastal elitist? I uh, know they have real seafood. Oh, Jimmy's. Long John's. Is no, uh, they real don't have seafood. Jimmy's actually, but that is a Baltimore company. Scumbags, great food, but they do have. You know, legal seafood, a lot of mom and pop shops, so it's a little different. But I've heard Long John's is amazing. I've been there in a while. You they still have as many around. It, they are you? tough to find. You finally They're usually like a two-by-two two with like A&W. A&W. Yeah. yeah, right, A&W root beer thing, which another thing I can't find. Well, either. yeah, Where they love footlong hot dogs. So They have footlongs there? Oh, yeah. Oh, I haven't had a footlong since elementary school probably. Now you get it, Connor. What's that? You don't like when we care, compare Long John's to your stuff? Don't compare fucking Fazolini's to my stuff. Okay? Oh, Fazolini's is oh, so it's good. different. Yeah, yeah. Fazolini's. Fazolini's. Oh, yeah, there's Long John's. Look at that. Look at that coleslaw. I am a fan of coleslaw. Mm-hmm. Are those? That's chicken, right? I don't want fish no, fillets that's, like that. That's, no, that's fish. fish. Gross. And that's scrimp, which you don't like. That's like scrimp. That. You had some scrimp like that last week when I walked I did. in. You had I some did. fried scrimp. Mm-hmm. From Long John's, correct? No, I no. wish. It was from TJ Fridays. That's right. Friday's a solid spot. That looks pretty good. I might have to find a Long John's on the way home. Yeah, get... Extra hush puppies. Extra? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Tomorrow's going to be a big show, guys. You know that? Huge. Huge show. Tuesday, May 16th. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. already May 16th. So many Kids guests. are almost out of school. We to- so many guests. Pretty nuts. Can't wait for for all the great guests, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, these next fun. two weeks as well, conference finals, and then NFL oh, and NBA. So what's tonight? What, what games do we have tonight? Only one game tonight. It is game the Kraken versus the Stars in game Dallas. Game seven, though, right? Game yeah. seven. So we have a game seven. Any sport, a game seven is always fun. Yeah, okay. and, and that's the only one. And uh, being a West Coast team, usually the games are later. This one starts at 8. 8 o'clock tonight. Uh, on ESPN? On T- T- Oh, I want to see TNT. TNT, that's where Biz and the boys are, right? Yeah, Correct. Because there is no basketball tonight, which is another reason they're talking about John Moran so much. But then tomorrow is when the conference finals start with the Nuggets and Lakers in Denver. Okay. Oh, before we end, can we at least? Uh-oh. I mean, you guys, you sons of bitches. What man. happened? What? You guys don't even respect the Dwayne Johnson Rocky Cup that was oh, decided oh, yeah, yesterday. Right. Thank, you, Thank you. That's a good point. Thank you. That's a good point. The tell, the people, back up. tell the people what we have Two teams played over. yesterday. One team won. They won the Rocky Cup. It was awesome. What team won? The Rocky Cup, first off, that's very disrespectful there how is. you have brought this up, but it was the XFL had their championship game, right? Mm-hmm. Bob Stoops finally won the big one. Yep. Oh, good. Stoops' team won. Yeah, Stoops' team won. Got it done. And this team, he, he coaches what team? He coaches Renegade. the Arlington, the Arlington Renegades. Renegades. That's right. Ty got pretty upset that I okay. even had to ask that question. Yeah. Arlington Renegades. Okay. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, his left arm. So cool. Is the biggest arm I've seen. Is that a quad? Like, look, at his, look at his arm. Yeah. It's massive. How much do you think that watch was? That's a cool fucking Two million. Looks like an IWC. Yeah. Eight million. Uh, so probably. Hold on. Is Max Crosby playing for the Renegades? This Where? Oh, see, is the Condor? Right there. Right in the middle. Oh, left. yeah. Wow. Is that him? That does look like a Condor. What the hell? <laughs> How'd they get him? <laughs> what are we doing? No wonder the Renegades won. This game was played in San Antonio, correct? Yeah, the Alamo, At the Alamo Dome. Dome. Okay, yeah. I've played a game there. They knocked off the D.C. defenders who were 10-1. Yeah, good team. Oh, no. Yeah, Led this was, by. This was an upset of the century. Yeah. Overall, this is a successful season. Louis oh, yeah. Perez, uh, quarterback stud, he actually gave a unbelievable halftime speech, I believe. Did I think they show he, it? I think he would love it. Yep, they showed it. It was awesome. He got the boys so jacked up. Were they down? Was it like a... I don't know if they were down. Al Pacino type, you know? Yeah, every inch. Pump up speech, yeah. Yep. I would put it up there. Yeah, I mean, they're going to make a fucking movie about the Renegades, <laughs> so they'll probably have that speech. I thought Netflix was already following these guys, like they the whole be. league. Weren't they making another, like, the uh, oh, yeah? PGA Tour thing? They're following Ooh, I didn't XFL. know they were doing that. They should. Honestly, if they're not, they should be making, like, you might be docuseries thinking, stuff. You might be thinking of the Netflix show that's coming out with Mahomes, Kirk Cousins, and Marcus Mariota. Oh, what's that called? Quarterbacks. Ooh. Yeah, something like that. Actually, it's like QB one, but it's not. It's and it's pro quarterback. Pro, correct. Yeah, and they fought. They, they fought, fought him all this season. Whole season. And Mahomes is one of them. So was the were the crews with him like a lot all the time? And we're know. gonna yeah. see like a full recap of all the season. Is yep. it Peyton? How many episodes? Yeah, yeah. Omaha. Omaha. Production. It's gonna be sweet. It. We'll probably yeah. see him at home. It's like hard knocks, but for exactly. individual players. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And they were able to fall. So they probably have him mic'd up for a lot of the games, right? Probably all the games. If I had How'd to guess. they get okayed through the teams? They asked the head coaches. 
Yeah, and the head coach was, was cool it. with it. Peyton was on and talked about it, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So who, name the quarterbacks one more time. Mahomes, Mariota, Kirk Cousins. So kind of like three. Ooh. One guy who won it all, one guy who ended up losing his job, and then you yeah. know one guy who had one of the better seasons. Is that what they career. were going for to try to give us different – hey, this is – Every, everyone's NFL experience were, is not the same. That could be a great show. They were show close us. with Jalen Hurts, too. And he, at the last second, said he didn't want to I'm do surprised it. old yeah. Patty Mahomes agreed to do that. You think they paid him? They had to. Must have. What, how did Peyton sell it? Like, hey, I wish my kids, when they grew up, had something to show, like what it was like. And okay, and I like get that. it. And then I guess he went to Andy, and Andy was like, Peyton, would you have done this when you were a quarterback? Yeah. What no, he no, 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 <laughs> but he's like, but no. But now that I'm done, I would have liked to have this done. Mm-hmm. But in the moment, no. Yeah. Yeah, I heard Jeter say that. I think Jeter, his big, uh, when he was getting, when he was finishing up that last year he had, he said, I want something to show my kids. Like when I do have kids, like this is what I was, this is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. I get that. That would be weird to be Derek Jeter, play 20 some years in the majors, be the, the face of everything, and then you're done. And then he has his kids, and his kids are like, Dad, what do you used to do? Yeah. You just hang out here at the Dad, house all day. Dad, you just sit around all yeah. day and do nothing. I mean, yeah, real life. That's cool. I guess you have something to show him. I'll watch that. When's it come out? Oh, I think yeah. this summer. I, okay. I'm pr- soon, I think. I bet Kirk has some good good one liners. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I also am very interested to see how Mariota, yeah. uh, how he handled it, because Mariota's kind of quiet, right? We don't yeah. really hear much from him ever, and now he's doing a show where you—it's an odd choice, isn't exactly, it? Exactly. Yeah, because that's how that whole golf thing that Netflix when they were following the golfers, some golfers, I'm like, some guys just don't talk very much. Yes, they yeah. don't say a whole lot. Mm-hmm. They're not yeah. going to expand on like Scotty Scheffler. He's not going to give you extra info. He's a great dude. Seems awesome. Almost won yesterday though. Mm-hmm. Almost. Too bad I mean, fucking Jason Day was on. Jason Day killed it. I, it. I watched him hit that. Sh- he had a chip shot on 18. He hit it to like two feet, mm-hmm. foot and a half. Then he mm-hmm. just had to tap that birdie in and, and get the win. And that's what he said afterwards. He was like, I would have never been here if I wouldn't have been on episode 87 of the Hawkcast. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> With that being said, we're going to wrap this sucker up, guys. <laughs> and we got PGA, I appreciate Jason Day for PGA Championship on. this week. This yes, week. Well. Rochester. Yes. Rochester, New York. Okay. Oak Hill. Be a, uh, aren't they usually a pretty spirited crowd when they go to that, yeah. in that region? They're rowdy. They get after a bit rowdy. All right, I already picked uh, John Rom. Okay. Yeah. Guys, who'd you pick? That was a bold, that's, hold on, John Rom's a bold pick. Yeah, I already picked him. Why would you? Jeez. All yeah. right. Uh, you know who you got, Scotty? You're extra bold? I'm, I'm going to go with Rory McIlroy. Okay. Oh. Ty? Hideki Matsuyama. Ooh, good yeah, pick. He won the Memorial a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you Wednesday. Okay, that sounds good. Yep. Tony, Tell me Wednesday. I'll be in the attic. I haven't Tell handicapped yet. I don't know. Oh, yeah, you're still, you got to put all that stuff together. Yeah. All right, boys, appreciate it. Everyone behind the glass, thank you guys. Everyone tuned in, watched, listened, wherever you see this, thank you very much. I'm still sitting here holding it down for Pat. He and Sam are still dominating back home with Mackenzie, their baby, doing great things. I know he'll be back here eventually in the, in the short term. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention this. Um, maybe I'm not supposed to. You Uh-oh. just left a half-sucked lozenge on Pat's on Pat's desk? I would never take something out of my mouth that it wasn't eaten. And <laughs> well, put on desk. unfortunately, there was one. There was a, uh, a um, you mean like one of um, Hall, like a Hall's drop? Bingo. Yes. You think I would ta- first off Half take sucked. one out and put it down? I think if this, I didn't finish, if I ever didn't finish one of these, wh- who am I? Why would I not? This is what one? I think. Well, I think me. you might have put. Maybe we go to break, right? Okay. Yeah. We go to the bathroom. We come back. You pop one in your mouth. Oh. All of a sudden, countdown clock start or not the countdown. Clock, I want to be a professional. Not come on air start. with something oh, in my God, mouth. Like Mouthful. Bingo. <laughs> and then you take it out, and then you might have forgotten about that it. That is definitely possible. It didn't happen, but that is a possibility. Well, I think it did happen. Unfortunately, that, I could see how that could happen to somebody. It didn't happen in this case, but I can see where you think that. Or okay. Why you think that. So where, where were you eating those lozenges last week? I've had a couple, yeah. Oh, so is you. Okay. Mm, that's not how it works. No, no okay, I, I, I think it is, but mm. who do you think would do it then if it wasn't? I don't know. Me? I don't know what's going on around here when I leave. <laughs> okay. What ha- Did you hammer down here? I don't know. Maybe no. Goomp snuck nope. back in the country. Well, I, th- I think if Goomp was here. He'd eat the whole lozenge. Yeah, he'd just <laughs> chomp on it if he, you know, he had to I take just it don't, I don't mind. have the stomach. I got to wait. It takes me like three or four hours to eat one of these lozenges. Okay, so it was you then. All, no, all you're no. saying is supporting the fact what, that you yeah, just where is where is yourself. That you would never throw it away. Pat threw it out. No. Yeah. It's not mine. It's not mine. <laughs> Check the cameras. Okay, that's what we'll do. I definitely can see how that could happen to somebody, though. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up. We will get to the bottom of that. Yeah, we will. I mean, we have. Uh, no, we definitely we, have not. Okay, so uh, you when, when you chew on them, it takes you three to four hours. So the show is not that long. So if you did pop one in your mouth and you just said you were eating them last week, then you didn't you finish it because the there wasn't a four-hour show. So yeah. 
Well, just just connecting dots here, Hawker. Okay. Agree to disagree. Okay. Fine. We'll agree to disagree. On okay. This. It was probably yours. That's why you did it. I actually Whoever smelt it, dealt it. I actually don't really like the lozenges. I don't understand I what they don't. do for people. What do you mean? It gives you like ten seconds of relief, and then you got to chew on another one. Yeah. So what's the they point? Get you hooked. Then That's you got. Then you got to do one every fifteen minutes. Well, this has been riveting lozenges. Then your talk. mouth gets dry, it. and then they they're not they don't even taste good anymore. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna take off, Con. You can stay here and try to get to the bottom of this lozenge situation if you need to. No, no, no I already did. Thank okay. you though. All right. It was not me. But I maybe. Would I would be a professional and I would remove something, but I would throw it away or I would finish it. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I can understand but I appreciate that. you bringing it up. We shouldn't have half-eaten <laughs> things sitting here all over the desk. Yeah. This desk is immaculate right now. It does look good, but I'm not going to add to it. I'm not going to put any trash because then Anthony Richardson will have to come and throw it away. And throw it away. I don't yeah. want him to have to throw my trash away. Fair. Look at that. that That's said, actually who picked it up. Full circle. Yeah, he, he did come he in here. He was here earlier. Yeah. He, he heard. He felt it. Yeah. He felt that someone left some trash here. Hey, fuck, mm-hmm. there's a mess. And I can smell it's amazing it. how we tie things together, <laughs> how things wrap up. Full circle. Appreciate you guys, even you, Con. Ty, Diggs, obviously. Everybody behind the glass. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow. Let's take a quick five. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.